Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. Today, we are going to be showcasing two different Yakuza games, Yakuza 3 and Yakuza 5. Before we get into the games, though, just a few quick reminders. GDQX will be live from TwitchCon October 20th to 22nd. The event will take place on the Games Done Quick stage, as well as streamed live on our Twitch channel. You can use exclamation GDQX in Twitch chat to find out more information and check out the schedule there. Also, Awesome Games Done Quick 2024 will be live in person January 14th through 21st in Pittsburgh, PA. You can use exclamation AGDQ in Twitch chat for more information. You can also uh, go check out gamesdonequick.com on Twitter to let us know what you're hoping to see on the games list, and you can go to gamesdonequick.com for more information on all of that. With all that said, we're going to be starting with Yakuza 3. I will hand it over to the runner and commentary and let them introduce themselves. Hello, so I'm uh, Rebel Dragon. I've got Froob with me. Froob is a... Uh... It's going to be around for a while. Classic fruit fashion when it comes to Yakuza. I can never escape. It's all I know. No, no, no. You can't. You you can never escape. <laughs> all right. So, are we ready to? Yep. Uh, Whenever you're ready, ready, do you want to go? give a quick countdown? All right. Cool. So time starts. So yep. Yeah, so time starts when I press uh, easy. So I will go in three, two, one, go. All right, so this is Yakuza 3. This is the remastered version that they released on PS4, PC, and Xbox One and such. I'm playing it on my PS5 because I'm a fancy boy who um, brought a PS5. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the start of Yakuza 3 has a bunch of cuts. Scenes, um, setting up a ton of story stuff that we'll get into at some, at some point. But the only important stuff is uh, this game pretty much picks up from the end of where Yakuza 2 um, ended, and uh, it starts off by writing a character out of the entire series until... <laughs> until, like, until January. The latest game. <laughs> <laughs> until January, when she suddenly comes back. Hello, Sayama. All right, so... Um, you meant to go check some of the tombstones here, but you can just check this one. And then go, now we're done here now. You, there, there's, there's like text for all of them, but that, you just need to go to the closest one and then and then leave. And then, yeah, once this cutscene fades out and I skip the cinematic after it, uh, so I'm gone until January. This Not like, January yeah. in-game. Yeah, makes sense. All right, cool. So, <laughs> this is a little kind of goodbye trip for uh, Kiryu before he leaves to go live in Okinawa with Haruka. So we're going to go say goodbye to Yuya, but before we go say goodbye to other people, we've got to do everyone's favourite part of the Axe speed speedrun. It's the fight tutorials. They are um, particularly spicy in free. This, this... Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah they're, actually pretty, they're actually okay in three for the most part. Like, it's one of the better ones that gives you some of the easier tasks to do in terms of getting them done, but the blocking one in this game is terrible, especially on easy mode. Uh, Shoutouts to when Lost Judgment went, yeah, you can skip all the uh, things now. Yeah, Shoutouts to Yak as a fool. That was, the, that was the godsend. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you can just ignore them in that game as well. Right, so the first one here is we have to punch these guys. The idea is you want to get a couple hits, like I did there. Then you want to basically lock a guy in a corner here. Not doing what I did there where I knocked him out, but yep. Yeah. And I'll stand up now and you can grab him and do two hits. And then a full combo. Grab this guy, full combo. And the next the next tutorial is uh, we got to hit people with, with weapons, so we're going to grab a bin. Smack these guys, hopefully get some double hits. Cool, we got one there. And just smack this guy a few times. Now it's build up a heat bar. Ah, uh, thank you, Yex, yeah, sorry. That guy blocked me. Oh no, they're stuck on the other side of the, the pole. Oh, got a heat bar. And now what we have to do is we have to do heat moves. So ideally we're going to do one heat move on each of the guys to make sure they're all one hit point. And then we can end this tutorial pretty... Pretty... Pretty quickly. I don't know if that was the right guy. I just grabbed whoever was next to me and hit him. And... There we go. That wasn't too bad. 
Yeah, it should be mentioned, because uh, a lot of people dislike Yak's freeze combat. One of the things Yak as a free really wants you to do is bound enemies, which means bounce them off walls. That's something that builds up heat a lot faster, which is what Rebel was doing in that tutorial. Yeah, yeah. And ideally, you want to hit multiple guys at the same time, because that not only builds up heat faster, it also builds you more heat, because obviously enemies are bouncing into each other and off the of walls. There is like a limit to it. Um, I think it's like five or six hits between the walls before they fall to the ground. So you're trying to make sure that you get enough damage in while also doing that. Right, so we're saying bye to Kazuki and talk to guy here. Now we're Ditch Haruka, which can talk to her. You can even walk to the door and talk to her. I think talking to her is like a tiny, tiny amount faster than walking towards the door. I think it's like half a second to a second or something yeah, like it's, that. Yeah, it's, it's very, very small. Alright, so now, um, throughout this entire run, I'm, I'm going to be holding the camera down as much as possible. Um, because when they ported this game and basically remastered it, they upped the loading times, which means that um, NPCs spawn in a lot faster and a lot more. Uh, you, you get to see in one of the sections how many of them spawn in if we let them. Uh, where we have to watch a cutscene in camera outro, where, where we're not allowed to pan the camera down. So yeah, basically, you have to, like, you walk around this entire game with, with like, your camera facing the floor half the time. Just to make sure that you don't run into NPCs. Okay. Now here's the best part. You just gotta wait for one of these guys to decide to hit you. Yeah. That's one. This is as, That's as one. usual, just the painful part. <laughs> oh, that got whiffed me! No! Hit me, please! Okay. Some guy decided to hit me again. Thank you. Right, so... Now we have to do the fighting stance, which is like this game is kind of lock on. I'm going to try and bait the enemies around the bike, so then they don't get caught and I can make sure that they're all here with me. Now I have to do the quick step, which is going to continuously quick step. Um, into the corner. And then I want this guy with the red trousers for this bit, because he has the most HP, so you want to make sure that you do some damage to him first. So then, um... So then when you start hitting people with the sign, uh, he, he dies. I'm going to play a little bit weird here because I've knocked some guys around. Now I'm going to pick up this sign. And start swinging the sign around. Pick up the bike. Uh, where's the guy? Walk very slowly around the bike because I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> he is being a particular pain today. Yep. And then, because this guy decided to get scared, I'm just going to throw him a couple of times on the ground. And he will. It should be. Yeah, it should be mentioned one big thing with Yak is freeze combat, and this is weird. You can only hit them on the ground with a like your stomp attack. You yes. can't like combo into them like you can with like every other game, because uh, Yakuza Three is like the first mainline Yakuza game on PS3. It's not the first one that was Kenzan, which was uh, Japan only. But for some reason, this game just doesn't like to hit enemies on the floor, and Yakuza Four does. So it's yeah. much nicer in that regards to dealing with enemies. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been caught here, but you can get caught by a fight spawn right there. I don't know if you've ever been yep. snagged by that. That one's horrible. Because <laughs> yep. your camera's facing the other way. So, um... Yeah, most most of the time you come out of a fight and the camera faces the way it was in the fight, but not with that one, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. I'll talk more about fight spawns when we get to, uh, like, chapter 3 and 4, when they become a lot more, like, relevant to how much they can destroy your life. But um, before we get to that, we have to fight Majima, and this is... Uh, the first boss of this game, and it's basically a fully upgraded Majima, but with only one HP bar. So he doesn't really take any of your, like, cheese that we try and go for, so we have to do things in particular ways to try and do him fast. He's kind of annoying. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab him, punch him twice, and he'll break away from me, and then laugh at me. So I'm going to get... He gives you a free combo on him. I'm going to throw him again. I'm going to try to push him, then I'm going to turn around and then do a backwards kick. He got me there, so... Oh, okay. So, something I'm trying to do throughout this entire fight is I'm trying to avoid a... Um, a thing called Fill the Heat. 
by continuously stunning Majima over and over and over again. And a quirk of some of the bosses in this game is that, like, when they're on the ground, if you whiff a couple of light attacks and then do your, um, and then do a heavy attack, they won't get, they, 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 they won't block the, um, heavy attack. I'm mistiming my stuff here, so I'm having to throw in to make sure I don't get the wrong thing. This is going horribly right now because I'm missing all my hits. It's fine. I just, I just, it should be said, the timing on these combos, they're exceedingly precise. Yeah, so trying to make sure you get it. I just took the field of heat there because I wasn't getting anywhere. I'll just knock him out with the field of heat. But yeah, so yeah. chapter one in Yakuza 3 is surprisingly one of the hardest chapters in the entire game. Because it gives you the two by tutorials, which are very difficult to do. And then you have to fight basically a, a fully upgraded Majima right at the start. And you've got like nothing. So it's um, one of those things where, like, getting a good chapter one is incredibly annoying. And then luckily the next bit is not as, not as, not as annoying. We, we just got some cutscenes. Um, right, so now we're going into another major part of the gameplay within, um, within Yakuza 3. And that's uh, dealing with the kids out of the orphanage. So because this is, like, the first game where we really get kind of that, uh, there's... There's a lot of stuff with like building relationships with like the different kids and through some of the antics throughout the game. Um, shout outs to Tai Chi. We'll meet Tai Chi a number of times. We we do like our tai boy. Chi tai Chi's always in the house. And we get the baseball boys and baseball girls as well. That's also a wonderful line. Right, so that entire cutscene conversation is, is is about how Azumi feels like she doesn't have a family, but Kira's like, no, no, we have a family. All right, and then during all that, we get given like some warning about like out about about the land that the orphanage is on is in is in danger or something. So Kuru is like, I'm gonna go see the big yakuza man to uh, to uh, try and sort out my issues. So we we're gonna go into the Okinawa city, but before we go and deal with anyone, we need to go. Make a quick detour into the Ebisu Pawn um, and buy some baseball bats. So baseball bats became a thing in Yakuza 3 and 4 like a couple of years ago. I think, wasn't it free? A couple of years ago? At some point, last few years? Yeah, was it? Is it 2021? It may have been 2021. The year of the baseball bat? It was definitely a year of the baseball bat. So I'm going <laughs> to oh, empty out my... Yeah, yeah. I'm going to empty out my inventory a little bit by selling the two standmans I've got. And I'm gonna buy some baseball bats. Buy four. Or if you're wondering, it's a bit of a dumb rule, but we don't allow the selling of the Ukyo Bell because technically it's DLC. Yeah. Even though it's fifty yen. Uh, yeah. Money is exceedingly tight in this run, so it would make a tiny difference. Yeah, it would make a tiny amount of difference. But we can just ignore it in our inventory, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, we don't have to worry about using it. And then I just shove it in the item box when we when we get a chance. All right, so this is Rakia. We meet Rakia in that cutscene. He takes a shirt off for us because he has to. So we're gonna grab him, take him over, take him over to this corner with the uh, red signs, and we're gonna kick him with the red signs. So basically, the red signs do additional damage to him while 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 we're kicking him into the corner. Yeah, that was some good damage right there. Thanks for the that was an this, incredibly this good fight. Fly. Yeah, that was a that really, was a really good, really way, good yeah. fight. Yeah, you actually got like almost full use of both of those signs. That was really nice. Yeah, that's, that was an incredible fight. So yeah, so... Yeah. So the signs blow up and do additional damage to him, or they hit into him and do additional damage. Um... You, you can do the same thing with, like, any item that's on the ground in this game. Uh, and it's the same for a lot of Yakuza games, especially some of the older engine ones. If you hit enemies into items or items into enemies, it deals damage to them if they're getting hit. So there's a lot of cases where, like, we try and trap enemies in corners and things to try and, like, do additional damage through, like, things that aren't us punching them. Um, luckily, there isn't as much of... 
having to do that with this game anymore because the runs become a lot more we weapon based, which does deal with um, a lot of the uh, enemy AI issues you normally get in a lot of combat games where they like to block or other things. Like the meme of this game is people call it block blockies are three, but we don't have to run into it too often because we do do things that bypass enemy guard a lot of the time. Oh, yeah, so this is Nakahara. Um, Nakahara has one of has like one part of the deed to the land that Kiryu's orphanage is on, and something, something. Then, then our friends. Right. So that cutscene there tells us about another. I think that's when Tamiya appears in in this in in the game story. Mentions something about like the military expansion bill, which will expand on later walk walking backwards there rather than walking past haraka saves like half a second so yeah picking up that free crisp point <laughs> point five seconds right there right so this is shiro shiro's having trouble at school so we're gonna have a nice conversation with shiro and try and sort out his um his uh his uh, problem with his school stuff but he won't give us any information so we're gonna go and say hi to our boy tai chi because much like every information broker that they've ever had in the in the Yakuza series, Tai Chi knows everything. Anything and everything, <laughs> Tai Chi knows. Like he understands, he's got it. Tai Chi's a knock. Yeah. He falls under pressure. And that pressure is just asking him what happened. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean to be fair, if Kiryu walked up to you and said, Yeah, yeah, what's happening? I think you I think anyone would be like, Okay. I can't <laughs> I can't lie to you. Mr. Curious here. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you phone the teacher. The teacher goes, "There is no bullying in my, in my class," and you're like, "No, I must verify this information." Another funny thing is when you go in and out of the orphanage, Kiryu's shoes just magically disappear and reappear. Uh, I find it very funny, and I can never unsee it now. I'm, I I I always look for the big shoes to just also disappear and reappear. Yeah, we run these games. A lot. We pay attention to silly things in cutscenes and gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So essentially, um, because the teacher won't listen to us, we're, we're going to go and uh, we're going to go to the golf course and uh, speak to like the superintendent, whatever they're called in Japanese schools. Basically, the teacher, the like uh, person that lights on the board of the school or or, or um or uh whatever they're called and uh we and and we get to play golf um unlike other games in the axis series where you get to skip the mini games uh we actually have to play this mini game it, it's it's a required thing for the story so uh we, we we do get to see some golf and uh golf is actually surprisingly difficult <laughs> it's it's yep very rng as well which you wouldn't think so yes yes yeah. Yeah, and there's a bunch of stuff you have to pay attention to as well, because because like you want good shots, but you don't want shots that are too good. Because like um, the closest comparison I've got is is Wii Sports Resort. If you get a too good of a shot and it goes in the hole, it shows a replay of the shot. So you need good shots, but not too good shots, because otherwise you get replays. Yeah. So that's not great wind. <laughs> that's a lovely bit of wind right there. <laughs> oh my word! Right, so, so the wind is randomized every time. The nice thing is, uh, Akasaka always goes first, so you can tell what you're dealing with. Yes. Uh, if you see a red arrow, that's bad. <laughs> that's very bad. Yeah. I'm just gonna whack this one. I hope to God it's in the bunker. That's fine. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fine. I can deal with that. We call this a setup shot. Mm. Yep. And um. Putting is actually genuinely one of the hardest things you've ever got to do in this game. I genuinely can't read the green. I, I don't know why. Even Akasaka, look, even even he can't. Yeah, and something which this game loves to do is you, you, you get the perfect putt you've ever seen in your life, and the game will just pop the ball out of the hole for you, and you're like, no, that's not allowed. Like, I, I got the shot. <laughs> like, that's, that's not okay. All right, yeah, so as again, he goes first, you just have to skip through his, like, stuff. This hole's kind of annoying. You don't want to hit it too hard because it's only a par three. So you need to make sure it's, like, that's a really good shot. Uh, so you have to make sure that isn't, like, too... 
That's fine. That's fine. I'd rather overshoot it than it go in and out of the hole, because that's more annoying. And if I do that, hmm. that was too weak. <laughs> It should also be mentioned, uh, we know exactly what Akasaka is going to do. His AI is programmed to do the exact same thing every time. Yes. So par this one, capitulate on the last one. But we don't need to beat Akasaka in this minigame. He's just going to act like a really sore winner if he does win. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, he, 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 he really rubs it in and you're like, no. Hmm. Alright, cool. That's a terrible shot, but I'll do a bit. One. That was fine. So he always takes two parts to do this hole. Um, two or three, so there you go. He always gets a bogey. Hmm. Wow. Thank you, game. Hmm. Mm. Alright. Luckily you don't have to win, so if, if you had to win goal, it would be so much harder. Like, <laughs> imagine having to win that. The, the worst reset awful. point ever. <laughs> that would actually be very awful. That would be so bad. You have to do Majima, and then you have to win golf in afterwards. <laughs> Alright, so now we're... having to go fast at it. I know, right? <laughs> now, now uh, we're friends with Akasaka now. All the kids are coming home from school. Taichi said he's in the house. Our, our favorite boy. Daichi in the house. Daichi. Alright. Then Shira comes back and he's beat up, but then uh, Kicho also shows up with the bullying and calls the guy an old fart and then runs off. So, you know, general, um, general, like, child behavior right there. Alright. So, in, uh, we can call that the end of episode one. Right, in terms of the dealing with the children arc. Episode 2 is coming up, where um, Ayako, who's one of the older children here, loses some money. And we have to figure out who um, who has the money, essentially. So we're, we're going to talk to Ayako. And then we're basically going to call like a family meet, m m can't talk, meeting to work out. Right, you have to talk to Ayako here again, or, um, or um, she won't go to the meeting. And we do get to appreciate the amazing walk cycles the kids have in this game as well. They they really do swing their arms. Uh, Riona here, her hitbox for talking to her is outside of the room, so you can just teleport inside. Right, so the next thing I'm going to go pick up are Izumi and Eri. Then Taichi is over in a corner sulking, and we tell him to man up and go to the meeting. Oh, he's over here. I've forgotten Taichi on multiple occasions after being like, yo, Taichi, I love you. And then I forget to talk to him here. And I'm like, why is the cutscene not starting? Oh, yeah, it's because I haven't spoken to Taichi. <laughs> and then we're going to grab these three from the beach. Something which I do find funny is like a little like thing. I'm pretty sure that like the orphanage like owns the land to this beach as well, which is just very funny how much land this orphanage actually has. Yeah, I don't know how Kira and Haruka got it, but yeah, like yeah, like, I don't know what happened. All right, well, let's be honest, Daigo money. <laughs> yeah, 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 Daigo money. It's definitely Daigo money. He got out of the credit card for them. <laughs> right, so we're going to go talk to Haruka, tell Haruka to go to the meeting, and essentially, what's going to happen is Kiryu. The 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 easiest way to explain this is that Kiryu is going to throw suspicion onto all of the kids and be like, "Well, somebody here stole money." And then, in like two minutes' time after this, it's gonna be like, all right, it was my bad, my mistake. I didn't, I didn't read the room correctly. Because we're gonna go back around here, and we find, and we find Eri putting putting something into Ayako's bag. Right, through these. I think I need to unplug and replug my mouse in. It's being real funny. I was scrolling through my notes. So I'm like, oh no, it we went up, not down. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, no. Alright. 
thought Eri had the money. Alright, so we're gonna go talk to Eri, because she ran off. Luckily, she's only on the beach. So... She do feel guilty for taking the money. And her and Arco have a little, like, makeup thing. And this one, Kiri goes, I got this, don't worry. I'll tell everyone that it was my B. And uh, that Ayako lost the money and, and Eri found it. And something else that I can't unsee, I, I don't know if you've ever made this comparison through. Kiri use, um... Here you shadow when you're walking around looks very much like the title screen of the original Persona 4. <laughs> of just the running animation. Yeah, it does actually. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. As long as we don't jump into any TVs, I think we're good. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't put it past the Axis series to suddenly decide to go like, yeah, we can go inside TVs now. <laughs> Uh, the problem is with Yakuza, instead of people like jumping in TVs, Kira would just throw the TV at them. <laughs> yeah, you would. Alright, so we try and go help Haraka in the kitchen, then Taichi's like, uh, there's a weird guy out, out on the beach outside. So we're gonna go check, check out, and then we actually get to do more... We get to do more uh, gameplay stuff. So we're gonna go down to the beach, there is no one here. Also, the fishing rod is over there for if you want to play the fishing min uh, the fishing mini game. Come back over here, and Rakia has come to say hello to us. So basically, Rakia came comes over to ask us for help with um with uh finding his uh, boss's daughter Saki, or I think yeah, adopted daughter. All right, so I'm gonna skip through some cutscenes. Right. And now, and now we're going to go take a taxi. So, we have another incredibly awful fight spawn location upcoming. So, we're going to go taxi over to the west side of the street, which is not too far up a walk, but it is a little bit faster to go take the taxi. Oh, there's not a fight spawn in the corner. Let's go. Right, so now fight spawns are becoming a, li a little bit more prevalent. I'll, I'll explain a little bit about them. So, with this game, fight spawns are basically static enemies. That when they see you, either from their sight or from you walking too close to them, they'll either run at you, start combat, or they'll like run into you, or they'll touch you, or whatever. And if you see one, you can pretty much try. You can try and avoid it, but like you have to run away from them until they stop moving. Then you have to try and find another route around them to not get hit by their hitbox of starting the fight. If you do get caught by a fight spawn, you lose about 30 to 35 seconds just from the fight spawn itself, not even considering what enemies are in the fight spawn. Because it can be like a bunch of enemies that you can knock out in one combo, or it could be like six enemies with like th with like two HP bars each. So it's completely random on that front. So getting a run completely free of fight spawns is actually pretty annoying. It's not as bad as um, as uh, as uh, Yakuza 5. Yakuza 5 is the worst one for fight spawns. But in this game, um, there's yeah, very little you can do to avoid some of them, depending on where they are. So, uh, when I walk around the cities, when I pump the camera up and down, you'll see the NPCs will despawn. That guy in the brownish suit is, what, is a fire spawn, so I'm going to go by him. Yeah, he said, hey, and ran at me. Um, so, yeah, I pump the camera up and down because NPCs' feet will, like, disappear. But fight spawns and and talkable NPCs won't. So if you know what all the talkable NPCs are, you can tell where fight spawns are. So this fight here, I'm gonna try and knock both these guys into the wall. Kick that guy, go back over here. They didn't go into a sign like I wanted, but that's fine. That guy, and this guy has like two bits left. Cool, that's fine. That wasn't too bad. Um, ideally, the first two guys I hit fly into the sign that that was like by the shop, and that and like the sign does damage to them. All right, so hopefully there's not one around here. There, there can be a fight spawn right by that black car, and it is a nightmare to avoid sometimes. Because the fight spawn locations yeah, the in this game, it has game, a chance to respawn in a second. It does have a chance to respawn, 
So, um, the, the issue with most of the locations, that, uh, that guy in the blue shirt, I'm pretty sure is a fight spawn. It depends on the road you're, like, the, the part of the map you're on for a lot of them. Because there's a lot of places where you don't have a lot of space. And that's what you need to avoid them. And if you and you just if you ever see if you ever hear me go oh god throughout this run, it's because a fight spawn is either in a bad location or I have to like do some weird movement to get around them. All right, so this is uh, this is Kamiyama. He's telling us about his lovely we weapon shops. <laughs> it's it, it's a van. It's literally a van <laughs> with swords on the wall. It's a van with swords on the wall and a dude in sunglasses just chilling. I kind, I kind of respect it, high key. Not gonna lie. All right, so this is Tamashiro's office. We actually get to play a bit now. So this is the Tamashiro office set piece. It starts off with just taking out a few guys. You do it in one combo. Now you want to go over here. Ideally, you knock the enemies towards this locker. And you can punch it a couple times before the cutscene. You, you can actually destroy it before the cutscene plays, which is very funny. I don't know if you've ever done that before. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you can destroy the locker before the cutscene plays if you knock a guy over to it. Or like a guy walks over to it and then you hit them both at the same time. Couple of combos here. Alright. Now... Luckily, all the QTs in this section are just the X button, so I can just mash them. Luckily, there's not too many instances of us, of us having to do QTs in this game, and if we do, they're normally just the X button. There's only one instance where it's anything else. So, yeah, a guy comes at us with a sword here. We're just going to dodge him. So, the camera coming out of this QT is actually pretty random. It's actually quite good, though. It can actually be facing the other direction, which is rather annoying. Going to run around with all the enemies. So this is something which is very funny about Yakuza 3. 90% of the time, you actually don't have to fight any of the enemies. So we just run around them. Uh, so... Okay. That worked out way better than I thought it would. I hit that chair into him. Chair collided with like three people. That was a nice chair. <laughs> yeah, that was a very nice chair. That was a good fight. Oh, no, no, then I put it back on. Uh, put it back on its feet there as well to make sure that it was all okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it's time chair. Can still be used. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, I'm just gonna quickly buy a few abilities. I'm gonna buy a bunch of le level ups in tech. Uh, we actually don't need too many level ups in this game. Uh, we only grab a few levels and things because um, weapons out damage a lot of our physical attacks. So I'm gonna throw time chair into this corner. Grab a bat, smack him and do this move which is called Flurry of Blows, and just smack him a bunch of times. Yeah, the Flurry only works on baseball bats that we own because it uses the circle button to attack, and obviously if you pick up an enemy weapon, circle throws the weapon away. Yep. Also, this is ideally the best corner you can get Tamashiro in because he stays in this corner. Yeah, that, not all the time, but most. Yeah, the, there's there's a couple of versions of this strat. You don't have to grab him at the start and throw him. I like to do that to make sure he's in this corner. Right, he's in second phase now, which means he can do his QTE. Okay. And if you get the QTE, just take the pit to the garden, fail it. Stand up. Oh, okay. Then guess I get to feel the heat as well. <laughs> I get the triple. I get the heat move. I get the QTE, and I get to feel the heat. I get all three. <laughs> three things you don't want. Yeah. You can when he goes into his like second phase where he gets the brass knuckles out. You can get a free combo off, but then he gets a whole bunch of hyper armor, and it just gets yeah. really annoying. Timing gets a lot tighter. Yeah. Okay. The bounce like. What I was doing to him at the end there, where I, where I was hitting him and stunning him and such, we used to do that for the entire fight. The fight used to actually be incredibly technical in terms of us having to like continuously stun him over and over and over again, abusing the AI exploit of 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 whiffing two lights into into a heavy, which uh, got outdone by just bat damage. And something else I did as well is I made sure that the last bat I used got destroyed. 
so like the bat broke so then it leaves your hands so you don't have to try and like put it away before you um punch him again because that does waste a little bit of time and makes the timing even tighter for just knocking him all right so now we're in chapter four chapter four is actually a surprisingly scary chapter um despite there being like no combat until the very end and the only combat scenario is incredibly easy so chapter four is a chapter where we're basically going to do a bunch of preparation stuff for not only the rest of the run but for like going to camarocho and such so we're gonna so this is when locker keys are available on on the map and locker keys if you pick them up you can open the locker that they uh, are for and then you get items we're gonna grab guns uh guns a sword a blackjack amulet and a bunch of stuff from it and um yeah we we, we basically need everything we grab for the rest of the game so the first thing we do need to do though is we do need to chase a little dog that's going to appear in this cutscene so a dog kind of finds its way onto the orphanage ground and azumi goes i kind of like this dog it reminds me of an old dog we used to have so uh, now we've got to go get the dog. Mm. And uh, the dog, if you don't do the kind of the, 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 the trick that we do to do it fast, can actually take you quite a while if you don't like do the, do the thing that we're going to, I don't even know why the thing we do even works, to be honest. Like it just lags weirdly. Right, so it's because the item we asked for doesn't exist. Yeah. Alright, so this is a weapon master guy. We're just gonna say, yeah, sure, we'll learn from him. We we are never gonna speak to him again. He he, he just disappears. Alright, so rather than going directly to where the dog is, there's actually a locker key that we need to pick up in this top corner. Um, because we never go past this top corner again, essentially, that has a fight spawn right there. So I'm going to run away from him for a second. Hopefully, I don't get marred by NPCs. Cool. I'm going to run around him. So, if you see a fight spawn, that's pretty much the only way you can avoid them in this game. Um, in later Yakuza games, and in some of the spin-off, you actually get items and ways of uh, despawning them. Without having to just run away from them. That was also another amazingly annoying fight spawn location. I have to be very careful what running out of here. Cool, he didn't see me. Um, and there could be one down this thing here. Nope. Right, so those three guys running around, I say running, walking about, is actually a sub story. Um, if you hit them, it activates the cutscene and then they appear elsewhere on on the map. And they're very easy to hit on the second cutscene as well. And you don't want to do either of them essentially, they just lose time. If you get a fight spawn down that little place where the dog is, it's also very annoying to avoid them. Right, so this is uh, kind of the first chase section. The game doesn't tutorialize these until you're in camera Ocho, but this is the first one where we're going to run after dog. So by holding the right trigger, you um, sprint in this game. Uh, in the Lady Yakuza games, they made it so you like sprint automatically. Um, and you had to do other things in, in like chases. So in Yakuza 4, you have to jump over and over and over again to reset your speed in... In like five, you have to make sure your combat is all done correctly. In three, it's pretty much hold right trigger for the most part and just tackle whenever you can when you have the option to. All right, so we're going to try and make friends with this dog. So, uh, and dogs like bones. So we're going to go see a bit, see if we can get some bones. Right. Don't forget this locker key. I've forgotten this one before. Every single locker key that I'm picking up about this, I've forgotten at some point. Same. And this one's always been in the wrong. This one's important. Yeah, that one's very important. <laughs> it's the shotgun one. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna talk to this guy and go and go. Do you have any bones? He goes absolutely not. We go. Oh, okay. But we're gonna make doubly sure. We're gonna go back in and ask him again. And obviously, he says the same thing again. So. Now we're gonna go back to Azumi and Mikio and go. I'm sorry, they didn't have any bones. But we're gonna say they definitely want bones again. And that um, because we spoke to the clerk twice, it pretty much just skips us having to go and ask another clerk about whether they have bones or not. 
Yeah, it's hard to overstate how much time this saves because it's actually ridiculous. Yes. Like you're supposed to technically go to both shops, but you skip that. And obviously asking for an item that doesn't exist because all the other free items exist in the game makes things go faster because you obviously can't get it. Yep. Now for this, we have to just reset the map. Uh, I'm not going to play Mahjong. Uh, I'll be real. I have no idea how to play Mahjong. Hello. <laughs> I can help. Please. Play Mahjong. Please. <laughs> I don't know how to play Mahjong. We'll We'll just coach you through it, don't worry. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, cool. Only had like 20, 30 minutes on today, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that guy in the brown is actually a high spawn. There we go, I've got around him. Um, if it looks like I'm like over like overdoing going around a fight spawn, uh their hitboxes for their activation their activation trigger is actually a lot bigger than they are. So you have to be very careful with, with them, especially if you're trying to keep your optimal lines. Yeah, they are absolutely huge. In fact, today is just problematic fight spawn day. Yeah. Come yeah. to think of it. Yeah, hopefully you don't get the corner in five. <sighs> I have been having some bad luck lately. Yeah. All right, so uh, Mitsuo here is uh, trying to talk to Riona, but uh, R Rikia decides that he doesn't have the drip to uh, do it, so... So we're going to go buy Mitsuo some more clothing. Uh, I actually forgot the next lock key on the last couple of runs I've done. It's this little one here, which is a bat locker key. It isn't as important, but it is pretty important. The next one is also super important as well. The next one actually skips a quite a bit as well. So in an older version of this route, when I first learned this, we used to do a couple of sub stories to get 200k money. Uh, if, yeah, if we just pick up this lock key, that's 200k money right there. It's nearly 300k. <laughs> it's just there for us. Alright, we're going to buy the American. We're going to buy the sunglasses. We're going to buy the sunglasses. Okay. Alright, cool. We've obtained drip for our boy. Alright, so the lock key I picked up on that sign there is called the Shadow Blade. Um, I remember um, we we put it in the route like a year a year or so ago, a couple of years ago, and um, uh, so we used to do the sub story where the guy is trying to jump off the bridge, and then the one where a guy asks us to like pay like to like pay his loan or something, and he just dumps two hundred k money on us, and we just go yeah sure and take it for ourselves and finish the game. No, it's, even, it's even better. Uh, he went to go buy a tuna, uh, specifically a big tuna fish from a restaurant, and the restaurant had already sold the fish on. The restaurant was like, hey, go take this, go buy back with fish. You can totally go catch the tuna yourself, pocket the money, and then extra money from afterwards. But we just took that 200, uh, that 200,000 and then turned that into illegal gambling. Yes. As you do. Yes. <laughs> but instead, but in... Instead of stealing guys' money now, we, we just grab a sword and sell it. Because <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember Tap saying, Tapioca, when, like, he, he was like, oh, um... He was like, oh, uh... Uh, I tried to find a use for the Shadow Blade, but I could never find one. And then someone went, why don't you just sell it? And he went, oh, yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. How much does it sell for? who that was. I can't I feel remember. Like that was, like, Kuro. It, it, I, I just can't remember. It's just like, I, I remember that conversation of just, why don't you sell it? It sells like 120k. It's like, oh. oh. No, no, it's like 290. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah it's like 290. <laughs> and we're like, oh. We're like, oh. That skips a lot. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, because I, I remember at the time I was trying to do the really dumb thing of trying to get the SWAT armor routed back in to try and sell for like 80,000. And it's just like, oh, just go get that. It's nice and easy. Yeah, it's and it's like it's so like it's just on the sign, like outside the coffee shop that we walk by to buy Mitsuo's clothes. Like it's it's one of those moments where it's like sometimes the obvious answer is not obvious just to like <laughs> the problem. Yeah, this is why it's always worth having an extra pair of eyes on the speedrun. Oh yeah, uh, this is a very funny cutscene trigger. Uh, I'm nowhere near Mitsuo, obviously, <laughs> but the cutscene trigger is on the other side of the street as well. Alright, 
So, yeah, that entire cutscene bit was about Misuo trying to ask Riona out on a date. Huh. So we brought him the drip so he could look cool cooler. Alright, now we get baseball. So, uh... Koji wants to play some baseball. And we have to go and play a baseball mini game. Uh, every single Yakuza game pretty much has a baseball mini game. Um, but if they're part of the run, you can normally just quit out of them depending on what they are. In this one, we do have to play it. Um, so, um, yeah, we're going to run over to the beach and we're going to basically take <laughs> take the bat away from the like a child that it was just given to. So they're going to walk over to this random kid here. This is Akira. And Koji's like, yo, you want to play? With their amazing running animations, that's, it's still funny. Bounce to Tai Chi in this next scene. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's just vibing, dude. I love how slowly their heads turn around when they like run the other way. Like it feels like an entire like like <laughs> spring animation has to play. Like they definitely like got it better. At, like this engine better with the subsequent like games they made in it. But this game you can like tell right. So this is the baseball mini game. We have to hit um ten. 10, 10 shots. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be trying to hit them at the ground because um, because there's a cutscene that plays whenever you hit the ball, depending on uh, like how you hit it. And the fastest cutscenes are the ones where it travels the least distance and hits the ground the fastest. Otherwise, it plays a really long cutscene of all the kids running around, falling over, and the ball flying whatever direction you hit it. So I kind of pick a downward direction on my stick and I try and hold it there for 10 shots and then you want to try and hit the ball around the time when it's next to you to get not only a fast hit but like one that goes directly downward there's a few ways of doing this a few people like to bunt it like try and like hit it at like like a, a complete missed time but I really suck at doing that so I just do this instead where like you just whack it to walk towards the ground it's one of those things that, again, it's hard to overstate how much time this saves because literally by doing this the way the Rebel's doing it, you are saving literally between like 45 seconds to 50 seconds. Yeah. It's a lot. Yep. There's a lot of like small things in this game that are just like that. <laughs> Only two shots left. You. Oh, and if you miss a shot, you have to it replace the ball. You have to hit all 10. So you can't just like stand here and wait for 10 shots to be thrown at you. No, you have to hit 10. Yeah, it would have been like a perfect bathroom break, but no. Nope. No, yeah, yeah, have to hit 10. All right, so they're going to continue playing some uh, baseball. And, and like we need to go sort out our stuff for traveling to Camarocho. Rocho. Uh, so we're going to walk back up to the orphanage, and in the time it takes for Kiryu to walk back up here, um, yeah, problems at the beach because of course that new kid collapsed because um he has a uh, has a uh, some medical issue stuff. So the parent gets very annoyed, calls over the teacher, every, she get very angry, and then yeah, we just. Have a nice cutscene between uh, Kira and Kochi here. And then find out that this kid's also getting bullied by the same kid that Shiro is, and now she's mad at the teacher. And we, we get to say bye bye to Akira as well, because he does say bye to us. Alright. So. Now we get to say, yeah, it's time to go. Finally get to put on Kiryu's iconic suit and go to Kamurocho again. Right, so I'm going to do a little bit of weird looking movement here. Basically, there's a big cutscene that's going to play if you get too close to the beach. Uh, a couple of people from a sub-story um, in Yakuza 2 where they're, where they're like on top of the building having an argument. Or like a... Thing, or like on the beach having like having a holiday. But you just don't need to see the cutscene. Good old Akimoto and his girlfriend, wife, sister. Don't ask. Yeah, alright. It, it goes places over the games. Yep. And I'm now partaking in, in going to the market, which is um, 
one of the scariest parts of this entire game. So basically, fight, fight spawns can spawn inside this like little area here. Like that guy in the grey suit there. That was just outside. And you have like no nowhere to go to avoid them. You just get caught every time. There can also be a fight spawn inside the supermarket. I like that's also one that's happened to me before. The Guardian of the Fish. Yep. Cool. Go around that guy. Hit this little cut area. Hopefully that's not quite right here. Ooh. This dude. Try not to get hit by a car. There's a guy in purple there. All right. We got out of chapter four without a fight spawn. Nice. That is. That is quite an achievement. <laughs> chapter four is one of the worst places for fight spawns. Hi. Even though I've still got a little bit of chapter four left, there's not really any chance you can get like bodied by a fight spawn. Unless you get one in like the plaza at the end by the by the store you're by. All right, so this is Mac. Mac tells us about revelations. Um, unlike in Yakuza Four, you actually have to watch this one. So we actually get to watch one of the revelation cutscenes, which is they're 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 like one of the reasons why everyone loves these games because of how silly and goofy they are. Alright, we're just going to watch this nice lady on a bike. And do some QTs, which takes some photos of what she's doing. Yeah. Gets me every time. I legitimately have that in my notes as funny granny on bike, like, with, like, the QTE inputs. And there, you just say she does a magical flip and lands, and then Kiryu writes a blog post um, on his uh, cellular device. Well, two people walking into each other behind him there. I didn't see. And then he gets this move where he jumps over people and kicks them in the back, which is exactly what anyone would have taken from watching that occur. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just, it's just beautiful. Bye. All right. Taji tells us to come back to the orphanage, but we don't actually have to go there at all. All right. There's actually another locker key we need to pick up here. That's Mac telling us about some other stuff. All right. So now we're going to go cash in all of our locker keys because. We need everything from them before we go to Camarocho. Oh, that guy was just in my way. Alright. So we're going to grab the Expulsion 12, which is an incredibly powerful shotgun. We're going to grab the Shadow Blade, which sells for a ton of money. We're going to grab a double action revolver. We're going to grab a blackjack amulet. And a bat. And I'm going to buy a double finisher. And equip uh, that there and that. Oh my god. Sometimes the controls in this game get a little bit wacky. When you like exit cutscenes or like the camera changes on you. Um, it does a little bit of what um, some PC ports do when they didn't. When like they don't have controller support and then they do. Where like sometimes your inputs just go kind of wild. This game does that to me a lot of the time. All right, now we're actually out of chapter four without a fight spawn. We did it. Let's go. All right. Right. So the first place we go whenever we go back to Camarocho in any in most Yakuza games is uh, is uh, we're gonna go to Stardust because where else would we go, right? <laughs> like, where else do we? Where else would we go? <laughs> It's like we have a friend that has an entire network system yeah. for information. Instead, let's go see our host friends. Yeah, yeah, let's just go see the host boys. All right. So the host boys are being hassled by this guy, Has Has Hasebe here, or however you say his name. And essentially, he's trying to buy Stardust for a lot of money, but Kazuki and Yu-Yu are just like, absolutely not. So uh, in true Yasuki, we definitely never sell Stardust. Definitely. 
They definitely walk into the situation and go, right, time to punch some people. Uh, Hasebe here actually has a ton of different forms and such. I'm just going to grab a gun and shoot him. Uh, I'd like to place the reminder that Kiryu doesn't kill anyone. And we just got the rest of them. And double finisher gives us access to like the second attack that I'm doing at the end where he hits him down to the ground. Oh, mention that the uh, the gun strap does not work on any difficulty higher than easy. Yeah. Uh, bosses in this game, uh, when you're over easy, just don't really take damage from weapons and especially guns. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, guns are only, like, mainly useful on easy. Bat bats become the strat on, like, any other difficulty for a lot of for a lot of fights. I will say, though, from my understanding, because I know Metz has explained a bunch of stuff about Legends being this game, a lot of the boss fights in Legend, like, the strats they have for them are actually pretty good with having to punch people because yes. there's a lot of abusable things with punching people in this game, and, like, with... Like, there's, like, AI differences and lock-on differences and stuff, depending on what difficulty you're on in this game. So, like, there's, like, the like the different difficulties are actually kind of completely different in what you need to do and what you need to know in a lot of instances. Yeah. I think the Legend run of this, I might be wrong, because it's been a while since I spoke to Mentor about this one, but I think the Legend run of this is one of those that we do actually recommend Tiger Rock Yes. For. Yes. It's just absurd. But the, the gut punch combo that we use doesn't always work uh, for Legend. You, it's not an in, it's not a true infinite like it is on any other difficulty. Yes, which is why you do the you could do the turnaround into kick as, instead, and that works better. Because that's where I got the idea to do that from on Majima 1, which was from Metzer when he told me about what he does on Legend and, uh, and I watched it. And I was like, ah, oh, that makes him a lot easier because he has yeah. more range than your fist does. Yeah, Metzer has done some amazing work for the Legend runs, for yeah. the, uh, especially the PS3 era Yakuza's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that man kind of went hard on all these games. Yeah. All right, so I'm actually making a quick detour to the shop down here for a locker key. Uh, there's, like, no better chance to grab it than now because there's, like, no fight spawns because the game's trying to funnel you to, like, the next kind of thing. But because they didn't want to leave you out of options of buying items and such, they leave a shop open for you. So we can just come down here, grab the item and go. Because we don't have to worry about anything. And we're not actually at that at that particular part of the map at all. By the time we need to open up the locker key. The, lo the locker keys that we need. Because we only grabbed two in camera roger. So it's just useful to grab it now. That guy always freaks me out. He's not a fight He's not a fight spawn, but he, he runs at you every time. <laughs> he runs at you and you're like, please don't. Alright, so this is the men in black. We're... We're going to grab a bat and I'm just going to swing it. Let's try not to get this guy with one of my shotgun shots. Do that guy. So, this is the mysterious foreigner. He's called Richardson. But we're going to... Okay, thank you. Put the gun away, please, Kiryu. Oh, okay. Thank you, Richardson, for... Yeah, it... He is aggressive. Like, even on easy, he is ridiculously aggressive. This yeah. fight is actually very nasty. Yeah, so. Like, like not just speedrun wise, but casually as well. It's just a very nasty fight. And then you have a lot of the. Oh, no. As well. he, I'm going to get the build heat on this guy because the guy hit me with this freaking yeah. traffic cone. <laughs> I yeah. the traffic code I was done. I was like, I had him in the corner as well. I had him. <laughs> right on cue, the ads. Because <laughs> they can also, as you've obviously seen, they can pick up all the weapons in here, which even include the bikes. That's supposed to be curious thing, please. Yeah, so ideally that bat, I, the, 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 the like bat swing I did at the start, um, very, it's very inconsistent, but essentially what can happen is they can all walk into you and get hit by the bat and like get knocked out. That's the ideal situation. Whether it works out or not is um, completely up in the air. So because of how enemy AI works and them being like not as aggressive as they are on other difficulties. All right, so this is a chase tutorial. Uh, Kiryu goes, oh dude, there's another man in black here and decides to chase after this guy. 
should be pretty obvious to everybody who, you know, pays attention as to who this is. Yep, so <laughs> we can't finish this chase till a certain point, so we're gonna hit him a couple of times and then go through it as normal. Uh, I will say, uh, any NPC you see in this, uh, don't run into them because Kiri will clank mm -hmm. off them it, as if they are like a wall. You can avoid jumping over this car, you don't need to. And they, that's, the end of the, that's the end of the tutorial. Oh, I missed that as well. Alright, cool. And then Kiri goes, oh wait, it's you. Guy you met. I mean, I guess you were on a flight, but you literally met him today, Kiri. <laughs> I know, you literally met him like this day. Alright, so the game tells us to go over there. We're going to just kind of ignore it and go a different way. Because uh, because uh, we want to open up the weapon shop for way later in the game for Chapter 9. And doing it in Chapter 9 is not fast at all because you can't do it then because we have to drag Date over here. His character we're going to meet in a minute. And you can't open the weapon shop. He open up the weapon shop, yeah. but he will watch you buy illegal guns. He will watch you buy 13 <laughs> illegal firearms. Static. Sell an illegal shotgun, <laughs> and then equip three guns onto like onto like like onto yourself, and be totally fine with it. So we're gonna sell the expandable staff and the shadow blade. And as you can see, we actually have some money now, and we actually need basically every yen of it. This game didn't used to spend as much money as it does now, but it spends so much yen now. Like we have rooted so much money spending into this that it kind of became a problem at one point. Yeah. yeah, I remember when everyone was trying to find like a good route to get the money for the gambling. Yeah. And then someone was like, hey, why don't we get more money to reload guns? Oh. <laughs> it's like, oh no. Right then. Oh, we, need, we need another 150k? Oh god. <laughs> and like, money in this game in general, even when you're playing casually, isn't always the easiest thing to get unless you are like actively doing the gambling stuff, like, and like actively money farm farming. So. Yeah. I think the only other option for like getting quick money would be the HLA. Yeah, it would have to be. Which we don't want to do because it's so very slow. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so I brought a couple of upgrades there. I brought a level in soul and a level in heat. The level in soul is legitimately just to have a little bit more heat for like one part of the run. And by and um and because we're buying more than like like a couple of things really 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 quickly, leaving the menu and going back into it is just a tiny weeny bit faster than just waiting a second. You don't need to buy anything else in that level because it like stops you from moving the cursor for like a little bit when it's buying a level in something. All right, this is Kashiwagi. Uh, yeah, cool. That is uh. All we're gonna see of him. Uh, we basically go there because he wants because he wants to basically compare notes because uh, by this point in the game Daigo's been shot. What? Again? Again? <laughs> has Nakahara been shot by this point? Yes. Yes. Yes, he has. Yeah, because they get shot around the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so basically we we're like comparing notes on like who shot Daigo and Nakahara essentially. Oh, um, oh, um, oh, um, oh, because Kira has blood in him, the police are going to try and chase him down. That's just all this section is. We've got to avoid the policeman. Um, the section is kind of annoying because NPCs are everywhere and they spawn in quite a lot and they pop in everywhere, especially around this corner here. The the despawn trick that we have for obviously like civilians and that doesn't work in this bit, even though we can flick the camera behind us, unfortunately, yep. because as you can see, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of NPCs, and anything in these like chase sections is basically a brick wall, so you don't want to hit anything, and <laughs> you can't hit anything. And because Kiryu doesn't harm people like policemen, you can't hit any of them. And if you get touched by any of them, you get put into like a QTE thing where like uh, you have to mash X to get away from them. Yeah, once you get to this bit, you are pretty fine at this point. Yeah, yeah, you do have to jump over this set of bins because of that police guy there. If you're trying to avoid it, you obviously just walk straight into his arms and go for a big hug, but you don't do that, that's slow. 
All right, so this is Date. If you play the other Yakuza games, Date is very important. In this game, uh, we, he takes us to a very mysterious location at this point. But his uh, running speed and walking speed is slower than ours, so uh, we're going to try and push him. And Date pushes are pretty specific and annoying, so... The thing is with Date pushes yeah. is you need to push him, but you can't push him too far off of his, like, path. If he goes too far off of his pathing, he resets himself to his correct path. Or he continues running in, in like any direction or walking in any direction. So if you see me like reposition myself, it's because I've seen that I've pushed him too far off of his path. And yeah, this... and if any policemen do see you, because the reason why he walks is because he's like act, act natural cure you, the police are by. If any policemen walk into you, they go, hey, you got blood on you, and then like Data goes, it's fine, I'm also here. And they go, ah yes, hello ex, ex detective Data, <laughs> please Probably proceed. Wondering probably wondering why Kiryu just doesn't take his jacket off. I think we've all been wondering that for like the 20 years this game's been out. Yeah, he could just take the jacket off. It's not on the shirt, and even if it is on the shirt, it blends in very well. Yeah, that's why Deadpool <laughs> wears red, dude. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's hard to overstate how precise this is. Like, it's it's actually very hard, because your, your movement is surprisingly... It's surprisingly light in this game. Yeah, you can pretty much, yeah, because of how this game's movement is, I don't know what this game's like on PS3, because I've not actually got that much experience with it. With Date, don't get caught by the car, thank you. Honestly, don't remember. It's been so long since I played the PS3 version. So, yeah, if there's too many NPCs, Date's pathing will go around them. But um, if there's too many, um, which can happen, like there, that he, he can run behind the car. And you have to try and push him out from behind the car to get him to move to where he needs to go again. Which is very annoying. He's getting pushed around by everyone today. Yeah. You might also be wondering, um, like, obviously we panned the camera down to get rid of uh, civilians. You might be wondering why it's not working on some corners. It works in front of you. It doesn't work to the side and if you go backwards. Yeah, it only works in front of you. you yeah, so this mysterious location that he was taking us to, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's Serena. Uh, because where do you go after after you've been to Stardust in Camarocho as Kiryu? You go to Serena afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> where else would you go? Where else would you go? There's exactly. there's there, there there is only two options. At this point, the game forgot that it has to introduce all the villains of the video game yes. as well, so it's going to do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I didn't mention this before, but the cutscenes like this, where it has the autoplay thing at the, like on on the side, they're voice cutscenes. So you can't do what we usually do to skip cutscenes, which is hold R1 and X. You have to mash through these. So it's like the only point of like required mashing is that. But any other regular cutscene like this, you're just holding R1 and X. <laughs> Alright, we now have a hideout, which is very useful. I don't think I've ever needed to ever open any of those menus in any of these games during runs. Outside of maybe needing an item box. You're supposed to go into the hideout and wait there to let your HP regen, but it takes so long that it's just go outside, go to the Akushimaru and eat beef. Just, <laughs> just eat beef. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Rikia was meant to come with us, but we we, we just kind of ditched him in Okinawa, so he decides to come to Kamarojo on like his own back. And that entire conversation is, I don't know where I am. Please help me, Kiryu-san. And basically, we have to press the bottom option in all of these conversations. When, when uh, we're thinking about the location of um, of uh, where he could be, because otherwise the game makes you go to where you selected. I know you can see when I don't pan the camera down. Look at all these people. <laughs> so many people. It makes it so hard to see whether or not there's a fight spawn in the middle of them. You have to be so careful. Yep. And it's that install. If you press any of the other ones, you need to go to the area and check it. So you need to make sure you're pressing the right things. Nice thing is it's easy to remember because it's always the bottom one. For yes, things. you'd have to remember anything specific for that, which is nice. As you can see, I'm pumping because there's a couple of fight spawns here that are very annoying. Uh, luckily, there's none here. So uh, something else which is funny, you going into the shop kind of has a long animation because you have to like slow down 
if a fight spawn is chasing you as like you're going into a shop, it can stop you from entering a shop to put you in a fight spawn. It's caught me so many times. Yeah, yeah, I've had that particular one catch me a couple of times as well. Alright, so uh if I remember correctly, the conversation we're about to have is uh from our perspective remastered only content, which is in the original game but not in like Japanese but not like translated if I remember correctly. But this conversation is essentially this like a like about um this guy being like, You're in this picture from this random newspaper. I think my dad took it. Could you ask the the magazine company about it, please? And Curie's like, yeah, sure, I can do that for you. Yeah, this is one of, like, 32, I think, sub-stories that were removed for the original Western PS3 Yakuza 3 and were then brought back, obviously, in the remaster. Yeah. And this guy is actually the Hirata of Peace Finance from the very, very start of Yakuza 1 slash Kami 1. We don't like him in the speedrun. <laughs> just, I was just making sure my stuff was all in the right order. Because I was like, did I actually do it in the right order? I did, because I've been getting it wrong all week. I get to this point and I'm always... Yeah, I'm always like, do I have enough baseball bat hits left for this bit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i to make sure I have one yeah. for can. <laughs> yeah, I have like... I I I have two left with uh, my route from here. Which one? One gets here. Oh, you're kidding me, Rukia. Yeah, <laughs> That's also something kind of funky about the remasters is grab range for your opponents uh, and in some cases your AI partners because you can be quite far away from them, they'll make the grab animation and you just teleport to them. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, um, Rakir actually did a bit of damage to him so the heat move from hitting him into the tree just, just got him for me anyway. So, which was the old strat for this fight anyway, grab him and throw him into the tree. I missed that strap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can actually just stand in place, get a bat out, and do one flurry of blows and takes all of them out. And I got it the other day and I was like, yes. This is real yak as a three speed running right now. <laughs> I was like, yes. Just requires everybody to move together and also Ricky or not to do any shenanigans. Yep. Alright. So we're going after Kanda. Yep. Yep, we're going into this hotel, because that's where we told that he was. Um, we won't give much more context than that. We, we just know he's in the hotel. We won't give context to the fact that he's running around in just a towel. Either. Yeah. Also, Ricky has been here <laughs> He does. I don't know why. He's like just a little twirl for us. <laughs> so, with this bit here, I'm trying to just... Hit guys into walls and hit them between each other. Yeah, there's like one enemy, uh, Uchida there, who has like a much higher HP bar than the others. They'll have like one HP bar, but Uchida, Uchida has like just a bit more annoyance to him. Yeah. And something else you're trying to avoid as well, you don't want to hit the fire extinguisher because you need it in a minute. And yes. it's a little bit faster to grab that one than it is to grab the other one on this floor. All right. So we're going to go up to floor six. I'm going to go the way down here. You can actually interact with all of these rooms and see other funny cutscenes of Kiryu interrupting many, many people. But we know where Kanda is in all of them, so we just go to the room that he's at. I was thinking the other day, thank goodness this isn't randomized. Oh my god, would it would be awful. This game would be even more annoying sometimes. Right, uh, yeah, Fire Extinguisher should be busted. You'll, 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 you'll see that in Yakuza 5. Uh, Fire Extinguisher is also pretty good in this game as well. Oh well, yeah, I'm going to be doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Huh. Oh no. Alright, he's in this room here. Yeah. Uh, what's nice about this is by interacting with this door, the game automatically drops your Fire, fire Extinguisher for you. It doesn't drop it by your feet though. Uh, it's kind of over here by this table for some reason. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty confident the fire extinguisher strap was by Kuro. Yes. This one I'm pretty confident was. Yes. Yes. Mensa did have the another thing you could do here, which I've tried a number of times but never managed to get it fully. But instead of using a bat on the like the fight before this one. Is this door here, sorry. Is this uh you can use a bat um 
Uh, you can use a bat on her Sebe and then have some gunshots for the sofa guys here. But I never managed to get it anywhere near the level of consistency that I wanted. Yeah. Over the fire at Sunga Show. All right, here's the counter strat. I'm going to try and do it. This is a hard strat. Nice. So, the important I can't thing... Under, I can't understate how hard that fight is. Yeah. Like, it look, it probably looks to you all a lot like just, oh, oh you just used your shotgun a bunch of times. You have to be using that shotgun literally instantly after that heat attack ends, or you will go into a very long... Like, not even feel the heat, because uh, Kanda has multiple cutscenes, but you'll go into, like, a 20-second long cutscene. Like, it, it's actually a lot harder than it looks. You can't bounce Kanda the wrong way, otherwise Kanda will just stand up with hyper armor and you won't be able to knock him down again. It, it's exceedingly precise. A lot of the things in this game actually are, like, surprisingly, but that was very well done. Yeah, I even messed up a little bit because he did get hit by a wall and I was like, oh god, now I have to, like, improvise this. So I had to do the extra yeah. shot on him without a heat move and pray it worked. And luckily it did. <laughs> luckily it did. Oh my god, that was one of the fights I was worried about in terms of doing it fast, because <laughs> you, you you make one mistake and that's it. Oh yeah, uh, by the way, yeah. if you don't split the bill here, Rikia runs you dry. Like <laughs> yeah. It's the end of the run, you just lose all your money. Mm. Rikia <laughs> runs you dry. This man eats so much sushi if you don't split the bill. Mm. Alright, now I'm not going to go on one of my famous ad adventures with um, Rikia now. All right, I've avoided my famous adventure with Rakia. Everyone has clicked um, continue hanging out with Rakia there at some point and gone on a grand adventure. Yeah. Because um, whenever I'm doing menus in this game as well, it does look like they're pretty easy. They're not. They do like to drop it, but if you're going too fast and you're trying to go too fast. Right. We're going to make a quick detour into this little alleyway here because at this door at the back, there is a... Um, there is Kamiyama, and this man does many things in this game, but one thing he does do for us right now, which we need, is he reloads our guns. So we're going to reload the expulsion. We are going to reload the shotgun. We're going to reload the revolver. You can actually re you you can repair bats here as well, and me and Metsa actually did play about with repairing some bats and seeing what we could do with them. Because you have enough money to repair like one or two of them. And we could never really find anything where it was worth like doing it. Oh, the tax, <laughs> forget the taxi list in this game is criminally like small. <laughs> After playing Lost Judgment, where you have uh, so many options, this game just makes me cry sometimes. Cause I'm like, where do I have to go? I gotta walk there? Oh my God. The, the worst part is, and uh, Tap pointed this out to me the other day, it's the same taxi list as OG 1 and 2, but despite the fact there's only two options, the options are reversed. <laughs> I hate that. Oh, Why? No. <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> That's so annoying. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this is like the entire tutorial cutscene part for the, um, this is the HLA, right? The, the Hitman thing. Or whatever it is. Yep, that's them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here's, here's our boys. Uh, these are a bunch of missions that you can go on to do stuff. We don't need to anything to do it. We just have to sit through this cutscene. It shows us a nice, lovely view of a lot of these, um, a uh, lot of the cells. All right. And then we get to go talk to Date and Serena again, because in like every act as a game, you always go back to Serena at least four or five times. And Kiryu never wonders why the bad guys always know where he is. They're like, <laughs> we found you again. He's like, how, like, how did you know? You, 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 you always come here, mate. It's not, it's, it's not hard. 
All right, so I'm also watching out for fight spawns here because down this like stretch can be very annoying. Um, if you see some fight spawns down that little thing that I took, you actually need to walk back and go around the long way, which loses you so much time. Because one annoying thing about fight spawns as well is sometimes avoiding them, you do actually just lose time as well from avoiding them in a lot of instances. So, like, <laughs> ideally, the perfect three run, you just get none in your way. Or you get them in your way, but in a way where you, where you can avoid them without having to go off your path. Because movement at this point in running this game is pretty tight in a lot of instances. With um, going through everything. Alright, that's the end of that chapter. Uh, that was chapter 6, right? Yes. Do you want to take a break now then? Or? Yes, we can do our break now thing. Just let me skip through these cutscenes and then I can yeah. pause. But yeah, we can do that Absolutely. when I'm out of this cutscene, then, then I can just pause. And there we go. So if you want to do a uh, do 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 a thing, I can sit here for a second. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so during these longer runs, we like to take breaks so just just so everybody can get up, stretch, get some water, anything like that. Uh, real quick before we go to the break. Uh, Games Done Quick is hiring. If you are a business developer or have experience in recruiting sponsorships and would like to work for GDQ, you can go to gamesdonequick.job dot com slash jobs to apply. With all that said, uh, we're going to take a quick break, everybody, and we'll be back with the rest of Yakuza 3. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Picks. Today, we are showcasing Yakuza 3 and Yakuza 5, and we are in the middle of a Yakuza 3 speed run. I'll hand it right back over, and whenever you're ready, you can uh, get right back into it. Cool, we'll just get back into it now. All right. And in this chapter, we we we've now got to go say hi to Majima. So we're gonna run up to Purgatory, which if you played Yakuza, oh god, there's a guy in a purple. That was a high spawn right there. Um, if you played a lot of the other Yakuza's, you go to Purgatory quite a lot in a lot of the games, uh, for various different reasons. Some of the games you spend a lot of time in Purgatory. Accessing this game's again criminally small taxi list. Right, so so during this game's like kind of story part is is like when the this area is still in like development for what is it, Camaro Joe Hills? Yep. Yeah, the building isn't even up yet. There's like nothing <laughs> here because it gets uh, <laughs> blown up. We'll call it. <laughs> Which is weird because there is some stuff there in two. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now this is Marshima pushing. Luckily, there's no NPCs here, but Marshima does walk very slowly. So we want to nip him in the back a few times. Um, I'm spinning around because uh, you can, like, walk in front of him and end up pushing him backwards. So you don't want to, like, do that. These are pretty poor pushes right now because I'm not getting my positioning right. But this is the important one to use by this door because he's in a nice enclosed area, so you can, like, really get in like that. Alright, we have now done all the pushing of NPCs. Alright, and now Kiryu gets dragged into this arena by Majima because for obvious reasons Majima wants to punch him before they actually have a conversation. In true Yakuza fashion. So uh, yeah, we're going to rip our shirts off and punch Majima. So I want to get rid of a bit of his HP bar before I get my gun out because... Um, you did, can't do enough damage with the firearm without doing a little bit of HP damage from first, but you need to like... Oh, well, thank you! I've never seen Majima do like a string of attacks and actually like work in my favour. But could he actually hit yeah. me? Oh my god, Majima, can you just... I've seen him being this aggressive in a long time. I know, right? He's being very aggressive right now. Okay, good. I've only got him a couple more times now. God, that should be enough. And just uh, got the shotgun, shoot him. The action. Shoot him. The action. Shoot him. The action. Shoot him. The action. And then. Really? The last hit? 
<laughs> Thank you, oh. Majima. Ah, uh, because the beginning of that went kind of poorly. I didn't have enough damage. <laughs> I can't believe you got the one. <laughs> you did the one HP wonder on me. It's like the, the magic pixel. You magic pixeled me. All right. That's one of this game's uh, comically short chap chapters, we'll call it. All right. So for both Majima fights, both of them went pretty poorly there. <laughs> both chapter ones and chapter sevens. That's fine there. All right, so here's the florist. The florist is a very important character in a lot of the Axa games. Um, this time he's back in purgatory being like, I have my amazing information network. I'll give you some information, Kiryu. Here you go. And during the observation, we see that the that the Chinese Mafia is uh, invading. So now we're going to phone Rakia and be like, what's happening? And Rakia, it being Rakia, he gets into a fight and gets kidnapped. So we got to go save him. God. We, we, we love Rakia, but he just doesn't listen to us, does he? Nope. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go and try to save him. Which leads us to this game's uh, city set piece in Camarocha. Every game has like a big set piece in inner city. And this is this game's one, so we're gonna run around here. Nishida here goes, hey, wait up. While, while you're going to save your friend, do not worry, the Colosseum's open. And you're like, okay, cool. I want that there and that. Now we're going to use the iron box. Now this is actually surprisingly important. Because you want to make sure the expulsion is in the item box because you need to sell it later. And this is a requirement. It didn't used to be a requirement, but it is now. <laughs> yeah, we used to just delete it before. <laughs> yeah. Everything we put in there, we may need to sell, which is why we do it that way now than what we used to do before, which is just ditching it all. All right, so I'm going to go save Rakia. All right, so okay, thank you. This first fight, we're just going to kick these guys a few times. A few times. Get off these, mate. <laughs> okay, I whip like every hit on him, of course. <laughs> All right. The series does have good hitboxes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I don't know if you've seen me do this through, but I don't do the double gun strat. I do a little bit different. I have not, no. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, the very, very old way is you just take one gun through here, then punch the guy we're going to come up against. Uh, there's another way where you take two guns through, and then um, and then uh, and then uh, shoot the guy twice. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one gun, then I'm going to smack him, smack smack what we know as the purple shirt guy with a baseball bat, and hopefully it all works out. I'm trying to figure out which one of these is the uh, the captain of the squad, the officer. <laughs> you'll, you'll never guess. And now the hardest part of this is hitting him with that. And both hits miss, because of course they did. So the whole idea is you hit him with the bat and then he goes to next phase very easily. But I guess we're just going to have to revert to old strats, which is hit him a few times, he'll, he'll retaliate, and then you just smack him in the back. I guess we didn't mention, um, if you saw the previous uh, GDQ Yakuza Hotfix Weekend we had, where Yakuza 4 also used baseball bats, 
With Yakuza 4, when you attack the enemy, you actually lock onto the enemy. But in Yakuza 3 with their baseball bats, you don't. You don't. <laughs> you go in the direction. Yeah, so you have to, and because there's so many enemies there, Easy's lock on is actually very lenient with what it locks onto. So if you just press it, like, without any care, it will lock onto random things that you don't want. All right. So uh, I actually brought a HP increase because it increases your heat bar specifically, so you don't have to hit any enemies it, like here before using the bike on that big guy. That's the only reason why you buy it. It saves like a tiny amount of time. All right, because I used both both bat swings on that first double shirt, I'm not going to have any for the second one. But that's fine; it doesn't matter too much. We're going to shoot this guy a few times, and then we're going to throw the guns into the arena. Because the guns, as long as they don't despawn, will stay in the arena. Uh, they can despawn, which is very annoying. It has happened to me many a time. Oh, we haven't actually mentioned yet. When we're shooting enemies, we're not actually locking onto them. Um... We had a uh, wonderful random Twitch shadow come into one of Fruit's streams and say, you do realize if you don't hold the lock on, you shoot faster. And we were like, nah, that's not, okay. no, that's not it. And then it was. <laughs> we call it gun strat to try and save our embarrassment. Yes, yes. Because, and it's not a tiny time save either. It saves like 45 to 50 seconds across the entire game of us using guns. It's ridiculous. It really is. <laughs> yeah, because like, um, we always used to get like random like fire shots and things, and we can never work out what it was. And then the answer was just don't lock onto stuff. Just <laughs> don't hold R one. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's 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 that it's easy. Triangle. That's all you have to do. <laughs> yeah, because when we all played this, we're all like, when I first played this, I was always under 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 the impression to shoot a gun, you had the whole you had to lock onto the enemy. And that's just not the case at all. All right, you'd have to deal with that big guy. You can just go behind him and then hit the fence. Uh, again, in Yaxa 3 fashion, all these enemies do not need to be knocked out. They can just kick you sometimes. It's not really any, not really much of a problem. One nice thing about this game is that your HP is never a problem. Because in a lot of other Yakuza games, your, your HP value is very, very sacred and you can die very easily in a lot of them. In this game, it's not too bad. Yeah. Especially from this point onwards, if you do die, then everything has gone horribly wrong for you. Oh, I actually had both those guys with the swords like do a double combo on me the other day. They actually both did the same animations and they all hit me. And I was like, <laughs> I was in awe. I was like, what the hell is happening right now? Alright, we're going to throw this gun in just to make sure it doesn't despawn on us. Yeah. So this is the red shirt guy. He's very different from the purple shirt guy. He, he has a sword. I'm gonna shoot him with shotgun or put it that way just so I don't get. Because I've had it before where I've tried to um, sh do the heat action and, and, and I get the shotgun shot. It's surprisingly yeah. easy for that to happen in this game. Yeah, you have to be like moving toward them to do the field of heat. Like, you actually have to be moving. It's weird. Oh, yeah, so this is an entire boss fight with like actual phases and different weapons and things. Oh, uh, yeah, we're just gonna allow all of that and shoot him. Salutes to you. <laughs> like, he just completely <laughs> gets destroyed. Alright, I'm gonna make a quick save. This is actually a really nasty fight. Normally, yes. we make very easy work of it again because of the fact that guns work on easy. Yep. I remember back in the day before guns, that was a uh, actually nasty fight because the uh, yeah. even on easy, the gut punch doesn't fully work there. Even like before we had the shotgun strike, you had to you had to punch him at the start. Yep. Like you had to punch him and then shoot him, which is annoyingly hard. All right. So we're coming into chapter nine, which is called The Plot, and it's one of my favorite chapters just because it is legitimately just, oh, we're nearly at the end of the game. Here's all the plot. <laughs> Unfortunately, for those of us who spear on this game, there's a little bit of a nasty aspect to this chapter. Yeah, chapter nine is um, the run killer. 
Good luck. Thank you. All right, I'm going to quickly empty my uh, bag of all my stuff I don't need because I no longer need these. Right, so we picked up the blackjack amulets earlier in the run, and they are used in this section here. So what they do is they give you five free, free blackjack hands in the blackjack min mini game. So we're going to try and play blackjack and get all the tokens we need to buy 20 platinum plates. Yeah, the amulets will guarantee you get a blackjack, but it doesn't guarantee you'll get a win. Yes. That's the issue. Or well, one of the issues. You obviously want high rate and not low rate. Yes. Uh, you... That's a mistake I've made before. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, why don't I get as much money? Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, why can't I buy my guns? <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to count these. That's one. That's two. Three. Four. Five. All right. All right, we're past the first bit that couldn't kill your run. Now we got the second part. One. So now we really want to see high stakes Two. in the next five. And also yes. the dealer not to blackjack. Yeah, or on the high stakes, because he can... Ah, Are you? We did it. Ooh. We did it, almost boys. Almost optimal turn as well. Almost, almost. All right, there we go. Yeah. All right, so yeah. to uh, to give him an example, that has approximately a 33% chance to kill your speedrun at this point of the game. <laughs> So, Unfortunately, all the save points are way too far away to be able to make a safe. Uh, for a marathon, obviously, we have safety saves. Yeah. But for, for normal PB attempts, you get one shot and you're done. Yes, this, like... I, I can't even... I'm just, like... I can't even say how many runs of mine have died to Blackjack. Just not working. Yeah. Like, we, like, we've all been there. It's, and the worst part is, it's an hour and a half into this, and it's this, this run's only about two hours long. Yep. Like, High stakes can basically appear anytime between turn six onwards. And we've also had it where high stakes hasn't turned up until like turn 11. Uh, I did a live marathon run once where I forgot beforehand. I accidentally overwrote my safety save after the blackjack, and my blackjack was round 11, and I had to win it legit. Yeah. Just a little scary. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it, it looks so simple what we're doing. But it's not. It's so not fair. <laughs> it's not fair because because another thing with it as well is is, yeah. is like if you get high stakes on the sixth hand, you can't use an item on that hand. You just automatically play an all or nothing round essentially. If you click yeah. it, you can't use an item. It automatically spends two k for you to do an all or nothing hand. Yeah, there's there's so many different like variations of how that can like just go wrong. Again, the dealer getting blackjack on high stakes is bad because then it's a draw and you don't get the extra chips. Yep. Yep. We've we've all had to win blackjack legit after the uh like before at some point. Yep. And also don't forget to get the platinum plates once you're done. <laughs> yeah, we've definitely done that. Yeah, before. Everyone's done that as well. <laughs> you just walk out with nothing and you're like, wait. You get the euphoria of like, oh, you actually did it. You managed to do the gambling. And then it's like, wait. My money. Yeah, where's my money gone, guys? Where's my guns? <laughs> where's my money? All right. So now we got to go back to Serena because that's where Date is hanging out for us. And you might be confused when we said money was really tight in this run. The fact we've got over three million now, it's still exceedingly tight. Yes. Yeah. All right, cool. We've now got Date with us. So, we mentioned before about Date not liking us, uh, like we can't open the weapon shop when we have Date with us. Oh uh, yeah, we're, we're going to visit that same illegal weapon shop with him following us, and he enters the shop with us. And we're just going to buy weapons in front of him, and he goes, yeah, sure, that's fine. Like, he's not a detective in this game, he's a journalist. No, he's a journalist, so... What was he the journalist in for? I might be getting my He's a journalist in this game, I'm pretty sure. That's why he oh, wants... Yeah, 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 because that's why he comes to the, the, yeah, the diet door. That's why he wants to go with you. And then he's back to being a detective in... Uh, in yeah, like, he does it for like a day and he's like, I'm, I'm done. 
I, I'm out. I'm going back to the police. All right, there he is. He just stands there and waits for us. Bring up quickly sell the expulsion. I've forgotten to sell the expulsion many times before. The expulsion is actually a required sell now. It didn't used to be. It is. And we're going to buy uh, 13 of these. There is one actual silver lining of money being as tight as it is now. So after we buy those guns, we need 30k yen to get back to um, Okinawa after this section. Um, I have 59, which means that I can't accidentally go back to Kamarocho again or between the two cities because I don't have enough money. But I have enough yeah. money to Tarika take all the taxis I need. The first time. Yeah, I was going to say, she like splashed out on our plane ticket, dude. Yeah, most of the time when you taxi between cities in these games, it's like 600 yen. But here it's like, no, you pay up the 30,000. Yeah. <laughs> did I put my guns? I did, didn't I? You did. Yeah, you did. I just do shit and I just forget. <laughs> all right. Okay, right. So now this is where all the plot comes in. All right, so this is telling us everything about what's happening. The man who shot Daigo, the CIA, uh, the purpose of the military franchise. It's all a bait. It's, it's all a bait. It's, it's <laughs> completely nothing to do with anything. Basically, Tamiya this wants is... to, like, bait out the, um, wants to, like, bait out the, the, like, true mastermind behind this secret organization, and that's why everything's happening. Yeah, this, this is literally, like, 30 minutes of what? Alright, and now... So at this point, you pretty... Apart from, like, one bit coming up, you you pretty much know what pace you're going to be on for the run. That guy is annoying. He's, like, one of the only, like, two enemies in this bit that can, like, actually stun yeah, you. Yeah, because... Yeah. A stun gun. yeah, because he take. Well, yeah, that guy's a stun gun, and there's a guy that takes three hits to knock out even with a pistol. <laughs> yup. Alright, we're in chapter 10 now. Yeah, at this point, you pretty much know what pace you're on, apart from one really nasty thing that happens in this chapter. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so once you're past chapter 10, you're like, you like know what you're getting. Because after chapter 10, this this game's really consistent, basically, by the end of chapter 10, yeah. which is really nice. Unless you do make a mistake in the play, which is easy to do. You do need a math PhD for the finale. You do, you do. You you legitimately need to be able to do mental math very, very fast for the finale in this game. Luckily, like, I have all the math written down. Shout out to Tap for that one. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Tap for just working out the precise number of bullets that we need. Oh, our 30,000 yen, and as you can see, I'm under 30,000, which means I can't accidentally travel between the cities. Which is beautiful that this route works out like that. Because it used to be you could kill your run in Chapter 12 by accidentally going to the other city. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then you run out of money and you're like, oh no, that's not fair. <laughs> you, know, you have to like, run to the weapon shop, sell a pistol and then like come back. Actually, I don't think we mentioned either. Uh, one of the other nice things about the remaster, you can see on the mini-map, uh, those question marks are sub-story markers. Yes. Uh, they weren't in the original version of OG3. And in fact, these substory markers weren't in the original version of the remaster in Japan. Uh, they got added, I believe, by Sega in the West and then patched into the Japanese version, if I remember rightly. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really useful. Yeah, because like yeah, because like you get the substory finder at some point in this game, but it's when nearly all the substories are done or when they're all done and you're like, why do I have <laughs> yeah. this? You're like, why do I have this? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yes, I'm going to specifically go through an NG Plus to, to use the uh, sub-story finder for everything. Now, we haven't seen the kids in a whole minute, so why don't we spend 20 minutes to sort out the rest of their problems? Yeah, yeah we'll try out the rest of their problems first. But So, first things first, Tai Chi and Mizuru are going to go to the beach and play fight. Haruka's like, you've got to tell Tai Chi to go to the shop. And Kiryu's like, yeah, house. sure. Tai Chi's no longer in the house, and that's a problem. You're about to see why it's a problem. I want to see if I can do the whoosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you hold, if you hold uh, text skip R one X, uh, it should do it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. If I remember what tab told me about that properly. <laughs> there it is. The whoosh. 
If you if you do what Proof said there, you can cause Mizuho to just start in the air and fly backwards. It loses a tiny bit of time, <laughs> but it is very funny. <laughs> There we go. So uh, Tai Chi like faints while they're play fighting because he's not in the house, and that's a problem. He, he does need to be in yeah. the house. <laughs> and the doctor mentioned something about him having asthma or something, and how that will like affect the rest of his life. And he has a bit of a depression arc about like I'm not going to be able to do wrestling anymore. And I will keep you rampant smoking oh, is hurting Tai Chi. <laughs> Kiryu's chain smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Every single protagonist in the Axis series must be able to enjoy a cigarette. That's just how it works, right? <laughs> it's like that one cutscene in Yakuza 4 where it has an unskippable animation where you have to watch Akiyama take a smoke for like 15 to 20 seconds. It's um, like, alright. Yeah, you have to. That's just how it works. Alright, so you have to take a few steps in the city to um, activate a message, but you can actually just walk into... It didn't activate the thing at the right time. Did I get it? I think I got it. Hopefully I got it, because I did everything right. I think so. I think I just I saw it pop twice. Yeah. Anyway, this is the, uh, this is the evil bit. No. Okay, that's really weird. Oh, I'm, did I, I did talk to them, right? Oh, no, I didn't, did, I did talk to them. That was really weird, I'm gonna have to go back to see it again. That's really odd. <laughs> It didn't give me the text message. It usually does. You just take like two or three steps. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Ricky are not sending me a message <laughs> at the right time. Oh, why? Game? This wasn't the bit we were referencing either, by the way. It's this next bit. <laughs> That's supposed to be the easy bit. You take like two steps and it gives it to you. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, you were RNG manipulating Ricky Musk. All right, yeah. So this is a um a fight. We can call it. Can we call this a fight? <laughs> You'll know how wrestling is definitely <clears throat> fake in real life. About that. Thank you, Rakia. All right, so we have to do what so the uh, game says at the bottom corner. This is a lot harder than you would think it would be. Like, genuinely. You want to make sure you get that drop kick whilst Ricky is standing up, because you will not connect otherwise. And this is the dumbest one. This is just the worst. You are supposed to get knocked down on purpose, which is that combo there. You probably saw, obviously, Ricky did the throw uh, to Rebel earlier, and you're probably thinking, oh, just let him do that. That one doesn't count. Yeah, throws it don't count to be as getting a specific combo. Yeah, throws don't count as being knocked down. I've seen every runner of Yakuza Free, including myself, just lose like forty-five seconds to a minute in this bit because Ricky refuses to punch you in that bit. Yep. So yep. So basically, you get past Blackjack, which can kill your run, and then you fight Ricky Mask, who can also kill your run. <laughs> Then we have to do yep, more walking around, <laughs> and then we have to do more walking around a city, which can also kill your run. Yep. At this point, you know what your run is looking like for the end game. Yes. Yes. Despite as long as you do everything correctly, at this at this point, we know. Yes. Despite my PV losing nearly a minute of to avoiding all the fight spawns I had. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I, I, I should have just taken one of them. You know what I mean? Where like it's like yeah, I need to go there. <laughs> but sometimes, like, I avoided all of them, and then I lost a minute, and I was like, I should have just taken one of them. I would have lost less time, and they all would have reshuffled if I took one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for those who don't know, uh, with fight spawns in Yakuza games, uh, for the most part, with the older games, uh, the only way that the fight spawns change is if you refresh the map by, like, going inside and outside a building. Taxiing doesn't count. Um, and you can just get, you can get given a whole bunch of really nasty fight spawns in this run. When Rebel went down the alleyway ahead uh, earlier to go and find uh, Mame the dog, you can get two fight spawns on either side of that road, and there is nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and you can't, bit, and you can't bait them either. Nope. Luckily this and game isn't the PS3 like... because era, <laughs> they stay around. Yeah, luckily this game isn't as like... Like, this game doesn't have as many bad corners as, like, Yakuza 5. But, like... 
Yeah, like, <laughs> so we do have to, we, uh, the, the, we do, do we take the silver linings? By the way, that guy in the middle of the street in the blue shirt, he was a fight spawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the nice thing about Yak's free fight spawns, at least, is there are fixed, pla there are fixed places where they spawn in. So yeah. we know what to look for and where to look. Also, shout out to Bob and Sonomia across the road. Yep, shout out to Bob. Bob. You can just see him at the corner. We won't go speak to him because he gives you a ton of stuff. <laughs> nah. Alright, so this entire thing is uh, Kiryu is like, why is Haraka leave, like, like going out and speaking to shady men? So I'm going to spy on her. And then she somehow has a lot of money, so that's even more suspicious. Alright, going around and around. Alright, so because they have a suspiciously expensive meal of like this particular type of hot pot, and Haraka wants to go out again in the evening, Kiryu's like, no, there is a major big problem we need to sort. Which is what we're going to go do. Oh yeah, this this coming up is one of the only cutscenes you don't want to hold forward for because it actually sends you backwards. Yes. It's weird. Yeah, the, yeah the, the controls don't like update correctly for like half a second. So you need to like wait a split second. So if, I, I, I'll do it. If you hold forward, I'm holding forward right now. So I went backwards. Like, it's just one of those things where this game doesn't like get the controls correctly for like a split second. Alright, Haruka only goes to one corner here, she goes to the back corner. So we're gonna go up into the back corner. Okay, I'm also pumping. That guy in the blue is still there. Alright. So now we get a lovely set of cutscenes. So uh, we have to sit here and wait for for a particular set of people to walk up to Haruka in a second. If you walk in any earlier, the entire thing restarts and you have to do it all again. You have to be very careful and if you miss menu at any point, you will just lose a ton, you will lose a ton of time. So this dude walks up to her and she gives him like a like a let like a like a letter thing. Policeman walks up to her and walks up to her and, and then like, she's like, no, there's no problem over here. And Kiryu is like, hella, like, th this isn't okay. We need to sort it out. But he has to, but like, you have to wait for these two guys to walk up to her again. So this guy in the red, he, he's not it. So we're going to wait and see. And another guy in his lovely white suit walks up to her with his incredibly weird strut. This guy is a no. I think it's a policeman next. And you don't want to step in when the policeman's there either. And some of these NPCs in some of these cutscenes are very funny. They're different every time. And sometimes like they just kind of disappear when they interact with like the cutscene people. Now we're going to step in. Right, so these are known as the card forgers via the fight text. So we're going to try and get them in one combo. If you can combo them both in the right way, um, you get them both at the same time. That's what I'm going to try and do. So if you go... Oh, he didn't combo right over. That's fine. He didn't get knocked over or get scared, so he didn't fall over. Fine. If you hit them in the right way together, you can finish that in one combo and it saves like a couple of seconds. It's not like an amazing much amount of time. So yeah, so the reason why Haruka was talking to those shady people is because uh, she heard a conversation between Rakia and the other dude there about how they haven't got any money. And it turns out it was about their Yakuza office and not about the orphanage because Kiryu was like, what are you talking about? Problems with money. <laughs> yeah. So you know, all, all's well that ends well, we can call that. That's 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 like one problem so sorted out. Yeah. And suddenly they have a conversation that lasts so long, it's now like dark outside. 
<laughs> like, it was like, what are we doing for that entire time? Yeah, they stood on that corner the entire time having a conversation. <laughs> I will say one funny thing. If, if you get a fight spawn, like, past where that taxi is, that I just walk by, sometimes there's a cutscene that plays with a QTE where, like, you throw a guy through one of the windows. And honestly, it's very funny. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so we're going to go back to your finish for the night, and uh, we're going to witness another cutscene of Ayako getting, um... Getting spoken to by a bunch of the kids, and are being asked to do a ton of stuff. Because that's kind of the older sibling of this group of kids. She kind of gets a lot expected of, of her from all of them to help, to do stuff. So this entire bit is about how she feels, like, underappreciated and gets very upset about it. Kira's going to be like, yo, Arka, have you taken your bath yet? So don't worry, we do get to see, for, like, the, the Anchor the Three walking animations, like, one last time. There yeah. we go. Arka gets the long walk as well. Uh, the early PS3 animations are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The funny the funny part is, like, we, we like, for the time that these animations came out, they were incredibly good they were incredibly <laughs> good it's just compared to like the dragon engine stuff it's just like not it you, you know what i mean yeah like the, the stuff these days is like so much more refined where it's like swing your arms <laughs> <laughs> throw those arms around so yeah to be fair i did walk like that as a kid <laughs> yeah 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 we, i mean we all wanted to walk like shaggy from like scooby-doo we, we all tried <laughs> <laughs> we all tried to do it. Right, so this is one of my favorite cutscenes in this entire game. Kiryu basically, like, pulls all the kids around the table and goes, You suck. You suck. And you suck as well. And I'm like, damn. He just pulls around the table. He literally roasts everyone. <laughs> he roasts and, like, them all. Some of them, some of them is fair. But, like, for Koji, it's like, Who cleans up your manga? And for, like, Rina, it's like, Who gave you those clothes? It's like, why are you yelling at them for that? Hoji and Ryuna like, have done nothing. Like, Eri barely did anything either. Like, they, like Eri and Ayako made up earlier. And then Kiryu's like, right, now that I've roasted you, I'm, I'm going to go find her. I'm like, damn, what is America's, this? Erika's <laughs> face end is like, and that happened. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then... We get one of the funnier chase sections in this game is uh, when we're trying to chase down Ayako because she just oh, is dear. like so fast. She's so fast. Right, we're going to take a quick taxi over here. There can actually be a fight spawn in this little class thing here. Yeah, that guy in the brown's fight spawn. And you also have to avoid the sub story that's to the right. Yep. So unfortunately, or fortunately, well, Rebel would know that it would be there on the way back, but fortunately... We don't need to worry about <laughs> that's it. That's not going to be an issue. Yeah, we don't need to worry about it now. All right, so Ayako runs so, away from us. And now we got a... Well, it says follow Ayako. We need to chase her. Um, But yeah, so Ayako with her ice skating running style is um com going to completely outrun this seasoned Yakuza man of Kiryu. Literally, who would win in a race? Like a 12-year-old girl or a veteran, like, 30, 40-year-old Yakuza? The answer might surprise you. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so, uh, one annoying thing about this is Ayako can get caught on NPCs and you can fail the race for it. I failed it many times for that reason. Yeah. Or, like, mm -hmm. like she, like, gets stuck and you have to push her away. <laughs> Isn't Kiryu like 45 in this? Because isn't he like 40 in the first game? Something like that. Yeah. 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 He basically should easily be able to catch Ayako, but she is Sonic the Hedgehog over here. Yeah, so the whole the whole thing about this is because obviously, you know, they have a HP bar at the bottom underneath yours. That's supposed to be like the end of the chase section. RGG aren't gonna have you, you know, tackle one of your 
kids because that'd be really yeah. bad. <laughs> so instead, they just make it so that you can never catch Ayako. And just listen and look at Kiryu here and how worn out he is compared to Ayako. This, this man's been chain smoking way too much, obviously. <laughs> this, this, this man's been putting him away. All right. Yep, we have to do it one more time. Yep, and what's funny about this one is that the meter actually goes away about halfway through the chase. Ayako actually starts cheating. <laughs> yeah, she breaks the system, dude. And what's funny is... The entire layout of like the city stuff changes between each of these three chases, and I'm like, <laughs> what happened? Like how? Like how? Like, how did these blockades get set up instantly? Like even this next one here, because the way to the left is actually blocked, and then when we come back around, there's just gonna be cars there. Like they're, they're just they're all gonna be gone, and then this they're just gonna move down the street. Ow. Yeah. So like there was a what car in the middle here. This? Now that guy's shouting with the taxi driver, and I'm like, what the hell's happening? <laughs> How did all of this happen? <laughs> yeah, and the only way you can catch up to her is uh, by her basically just <laughs> tapping out, essentially. She just taps out, and she's like, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. And it's also now dusk. You've been running for so long that it's now sundown. Yes. The best part about that is as well, you can game over very easily in that bit yeah. if you try and go via the sidewalk when Aiko goes via the road. For some reason, the game just says no, and just game overs you. No idea why. Yeah, it's 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 not fair. Sometimes this game isn't fair. Sometimes. All right, so now we're at the end of the uh, basically the helping out the children section for chapter ten, which is thankfully the last time we need to do much related with it. Because now we get to go and deal with uh, the, the reason why we came back here, which is to deal with a guy called Joji Kazuma. Who is basically like a, a hitman for the CIA, essentially. Who got mentioned ages ago. Uh, Saki Nakahara's daughter drew a picture of him, which is why we were in Kamurocho. It Like, the plot for this game is surprisingly, like, complex in a lot of places. And it doesn't get explained to you until you get chapter 9, where they just go, okay. Here's, here's the plot for you. Right. So we're going to go into the nightclub over here. Because essentially, Tamiya wants us to protect this one dude, who I've forgotten the name of, but basically he's inside the club tonight, and Joji goes to assassinate him, and we're like, hang on a second, we're going to stop that. You can get a fight spawn right next to that guy that Rebel Act talked to, and it's the worst. Don't you dare, Joji. He nearly hit me, and if he does, he goes into heat mode and just, like, bodies you. So, uh, I'm skipping way more in this fight than what it looks like there. <laughs> you skip There's like an entire phase a... and a QTE. It's like a 40-second QTE as well. And a second QTE, it's... yeah. Yeah, it's stupidly long. All right, so now we have a nice conversation. Now that we've shot him a few times, he gets back up and goes, Ah, oh, I respect you now. And they have a nice long conversation about uh, Richardson, who was actually the guy that shot everyone, not him. He was just there when the shooting occurred. And now, uh, during these cutscenes, Tamashiro destroys the orphanage, and Kiryu does his lovely Arthur meme fist there. Thank you. Where he gets very, very angry. And now we're going to go back to the orphanage and see the destruction. I yeah, yeah. In the club. Yeah. Aichi <laughs> was like, Aichi is definitely in the house now. Like he, like he, be there, kid. Yeah, he <laughs> definitely entered the house at that point. One, you're too young, and two, there was just a lot, lot of gunfire in here. Yeah. Aichi, please. Because yeah, it's funny that Joji has, like, a gun when he goes in there, but then when he's fighting, like, if you fist fight him, he just doesn't use it. He's actually a surprisingly difficult boss fight if you act, like, when you punch him. But guns in the, but guns on easy mode just trivialize him completely, just because they stun lock. All right, so, uh, yeah, the wall's been destroyed. Oh, my God, the orphanage. This happened in, like, I don't know, the 30 minutes the Kiryu was gone? <laughs> like, the entire thing's destroyed, like... It... I just want to imagine that Mine was, like, hiding behind one of those light posts waiting for Kiryu to just walk away, just, like, in that evil cartoonish manner of... <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, wouldn't, I mean, I would expect that from Tamashiro. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, this bull ring becomes infamous in the series now because it's used for all the Amon fights for the next couple of games. Yep, that's okay. Right, I'm just shooting all these guys. There we go. Those guys have all been shot. So one other thing that, like, Rebel doesn't have to pay, like, too much attention to any bullets missed, but the less bullets missed, the better for the finale. Yes. Alright, uh, thankfully we don't have to fight the ball. Sadly, we don't have to fight the ball. It's basically a double-edged sword <laughs> of, oh god, but also, I actually kind of want to fight the ball with fists. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Although, in this game, I'm not so sure. <laughs> in this game, definitely not. If it was a Dragon Engine game, maybe. Yeah. Right, so this is Tamashiro, uh, but he has a gun this time. Again, we're going to use a gun and we're going to skip a load of this guy's fight. Yeah, fun fact, so do we. <laughs> we have more guns than Tamashiro. We definitely have more guns than Tamashiro. Sometimes you can shoot him immediately or sometimes Tamashiro just is Tamashiro. Yeah, like, you, you ideally want to swap guns because you need an entire gun to, like, deplete its HP bar. Not just, like, whatever you have left it in the gun you have on. So you sometimes need to switch and add a switch there. Alright, so this is actually the finale chapter. This game only goes up to chapter 12. So, uh, yeah, we also, during the Tamashiro fight there, we, 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 we skip tons of phases where he summons additional ads to beat us up. Which is very annoying if you have to do that fight normally. Alright, we're walking up to uh, our favourite boy outside of Serena. This is Rick Langley. Um, he just says hello there and then leaves, and he's never mentioned again. <laughs> Shout outs to our boy Rick Langley. I, I don't know why I like Rick Langley's name. It's just it's like so good. I say, love hey, him. His name is Rick Langley. He's so good. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the guy in Ratchet One. It's he's just the guy. <laughs> he's, he's just the guy. Right, I'm not gonna do a tap. I'm actually gonna speak to Haruka. Everyone has supposed animation. <laughs> yeah, everyone has forgotten to talk to Haruka here, but you need to talk to her to tell her to stay put. Because, um, yeah, because you can do a bunch of stuff with her by walking around before going to the final dungeon, but we're just going to go straight there, not, not deal with any of it. Um, you can actually get a couple of fight spawn locations here on this very tiny trip to Kamurocho. I didn't mention, but when you're on this bottom yeah. street here, you actually can't get into, like, fight spawns because of, um, because in this game and a lot of the games before the Dragon Engine games, you needed space. For the fight spawns to start because it like spawned people around you to like gate off the area, which you can't do when there's no room. Weirdly, there are fight spawns down there in OG1, but yes. then they stopped from OG2 onwards and then came back for Dragon Engine. Yeah. All right, we're going to hospital now. All right, this is the hospital climbing. We gotta get to Daigo's room. All right, so I'm gonna just waste all the bullets in this gun. By waste, I mean just shoot as many people as I can. I actually was useful. Okay, yeah. we're gonna... Now I need to use... This is the point where... Yeah. Rebels now having to count shots. And... 11. With, obviously, the run-up till this point, if you've accidentally overused shots, there's a bit here where you have to take out enemies normally like this before you go to the next part of the finale, and this is where your shots normalize. So yes. any that you've missed basically cause you to fire less here, and then at this point, it's a very, very precise amount of shots with specific guns. Right, cool. So we use the last four of that one, so a full one here, which yeah. leaves it with 10 shots. Yes, we use five from it there. And I shot one out of a gun at like when I swapped to my third set. So I'm going to grab that gun out now because I need it for this bit. So again, in the Axe 3 fashion, we don't actually have to deal with any of the enemies here. We just run past all of them, we don't have to deal with any of them. Uh, the, guy, the guy with the crowbar has a very nice crowbar, I do enjoy the red crowbar. <laughs> it's so big. It's quite a huge crowbar. So again, we're just going to run past all these enemies, we really don't need to deal with any of them. The guy with the knife and the baseball bat, yeah, run, run past. I find it funny that the last guy here just has nothing, he just has his fist. He's like, yeah, I'll punch you instead. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Right, so we have to go shoot the uh, captain up here, but we can uh, we can shoot him in a very funny way. You're meant to run all the way around to hit him, but you can just go here and just go like this. And shoot him from the other side of the world. 
There you go, he's, he's, he's done. <laughs> he's just shooting from the other side of the planet. It is actually easy to miss that. Yes. Guy. You have that, to be sitting in the right place. That becomes a problem. I'm going to grab the shoddy pistol from this guy. Dodge the stun grenade. Because our bullets are so sacred that even <laughs> using the... Uh, even using a shoddy pistol here is actually required. Like any additional shots we can get from anything is a requirement for like getting through this. So now we're gonna shoot this guy a few times and throw that. Okay, thank you. Usually guys don't shoot you here, but they can do sometimes. Generally the remaster the guys with aren't as aggressive here as they are on original from my understanding. But they can be they they can be and they can shoot you. But it's not as it's not as annoying. You just take a couple of hits, then keep going. Here you can like take like five shots to the back before he falls over. He's quite tanky. <laughs> right, so these guys we need to use four shots from a full gun. And then I just sit here and muck about with my guns until the QTE starts. So this lift, um I what happens, I don't know what happens if if like, you fail this QTE. Do you have to fight some guys? I think so. I yeah. think it's the same as the uh Tam Shiro family. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Like, if you fail this QTE, you have to fight some. You have to fight some pros. But I've never tried it because it wasn't until some of the later games where failing QTEs really became like a thing for going fast. Because it does depend on the game. Some of them you can, some of them you can't. In this game, you don't really want to fail them. All that happens is you get knocked down half the time or have to fight more guys. Right, we're gonna go Dugo Foss. Off, off now. It gives you a nice intro for that that you can skip for you to run down this corridor and basically do nothing. I love it. <laughs> Before it throws you into more boss fights. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to walk down here. This is Daigo's room. And uh, yeah, we walk in here and we find, oh my god, there's a CIA operative or this guy's called Richardson. Or he's pretty much an Albert Wesker, right? Pretty much. Yeah. I did whip Who a found the out of bounds in this fight? I actually don't remember. Was it tap? Because there, there's actually a way to send him out of bounds, but like, gun fast. <laughs> yeah, I actually whipped a shot there the other day, and like, you Ooh. got out the stun lock, and then you just went straight. You just go straight into the field of heat, and I'm like, why? Why do this to me, game? All right, now we got to go to the roof. Grab that gun. Are right, we going to use all of this gun for? For uh, these, uh, for these guys. Uh, can you shoot these? There we go. Then we're gonna put on our last set of guns. Grab the shoddy pistol and throw it over there. Grab the shoddy pistol. So these shoddy pistols are actually required to like make sure we save our ammo for our for our double action revolvers. So we're just gonna use both of these on Richardson here. I don't know if you're going to be able to grab those guns. The way the vase actually like fell towards them. <laughs> yeah. And something else as well is I'm throwing the guns at Richardson. Uh, yeah, we need the damage from the guns being thrown at him for optimal shot routing. So we need to hit him in the shin with the gun. And then I can just shoot him with the rest of this. That was perfect. Yeah, good fights. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if you get too close to the table, you can get stuck on the table, which is very funny. Sound me before. All right, so we're actually going up to the elevator to the final boss now. So we've got a, a couple of enemies we've got to shoot before we get up there. So there's some police guys that are going to drop through the uh, roof of the lift here. Nani. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. All right, cool. Now I have exactly zero shots when I'm done with the final boss. Which is why gun math is very important. Because we use exactly the right amount of shots we need. Because uh, when I learned this game, uh, Fruit will also remember this as well. Uh, we just had to guess and make sure we had 7 and 15 for this guy. And it was so hard. It was so <laughs> it much was harder. Awful. It was so <laughs> hard. Alright, so uh, this is the final boss. This is uh, Mine. Time comes up on the final hit of this guy. Uh, but this is the only intro that we can't skip. So we do get a nice... Uh, Nice shot of the Yakuza guys getting the shirts off and running at each other, because of course, 
it's required, we need it. It's one of the only intros you have to watch in this game, you're like, yes. Uh, Mina is actually a pretty cool boss fight, if you actually fight him out normally, he's actually pretty cool, but we're just gonna <laughs> shoot him. We're just not gonna deal with him. He actually, like, has multiple, like, counters, he has a heal at one point. And time like, comes up when I shoot him with the last bullet. And time. <laughs> Alright. GG. That was a pretty good Yak of the Three run, actually. Yep. Pretty solid, Yak of the Three. Uh, but yeah, that was Yak of the Three. Um, thank you, GDQ Hotfix, for um, for um, having me. Uh, if you want to see me play either Yak as a, I play Kingdom Hearts and other random PS2 games. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch.tv slash Rebel Dragon Knife. Oh, it's true, boys. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoy Yakuza 5. You had the third street boys in there. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, Thank when you, you said PS2 games, I had to. <laughs> I had to say street boys. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh. Alright, uh... Do, do you have anything else you want to say, or...? Uh, no, I'm... I've properly said everything I want to say. Shoutouts... Uh, obviously, shoutouts to the actors, the guy. Shoutouts to the three guys that are going to be running five. Um, because Tab's done a lot for this game. Four and five. And Troop's done a lot for all these games, so... Uh, we 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 uh, we've all pretty much thrown loads of stuff at these games to see if we could break them apart, and we've done as much as we can to make them either as fun as possible or as why did we do this as possible. So hopefully you enjoy what Five has to show. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to you for uh, running the game. Thank you so much. Uh, absolutely fantastic showcase. And uh, like we've uh, been alluding to, we do have the Yakuza Five run coming up, so we are going to take a quick break. Uh, while we get set up for the Yakuza run, or the Yakuza 5 run. Uh, before we go to the break, uh, just a quick reminder, if you haven't missed out on any of our hot fix shows or our past events like Flame Fatales, you can go check them out on the VODs over at youtube.com slash games done quick. Uh, with that said, we are going to go to our break and we'll be back with some Yakuza 5 in a few minutes here. Hmm. The game's done quick hot fix. We are showcasing Yakuza 3 and 5 today, and we are here with Yakuza 5. Um, we're going to be doing a little bit of a relay with that. I'll uh, hand it over to the runner, uh, the runners, let them introduce themselves and kind of talk about that. Yeah, hello. Sorry, it's a bad time to get a bit of flatulence. Um, hello. Hopefully you're all doing well. Uh, I'm Froob. Uh, usually I'm the one that's speaking too much in the background, but I'm actually going to be taking the first part of Yax 5. And I have somebody very, very excellent and very well versed in the X-Play with me, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Oh, oh please, I don't deserve that kind of praise. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ryu Hosen. Uh, I, I, I've I, run this game. I, I'm, you have world uh, records, <laughs> you deserve the praise. <laughs> <laughs> I will be, I will actually be doing the fourth and final parts of, of the run. Uh, Tap, who is doing Tapioca, who is doing the middle parts of it, uh, is not here right now. He is a little bit busy, but uh, he'll he'll be he'll be here on time when when the time comes. So, yep. uh, yeah, look forward to that. Yeah, unfortunately, you're all stuck with me for about two and a half hours. Um, well, this was born from a really silly idea that I just threw into the Discord of, hey, for a GDQ submission, why don't five of us do all like five parts of Yakuza Five at the same time? Which, considering people struggle with races, that would be a nightmare. Uh, but that idea <laughs> bore fruit into the whole, hey, why don't we just do a relay of like all the different parts for like a whole fix if possible. Um, and as Ryu was saying, like myself, Ryu and Tap, we're all very, very passionate about Yakuza 5. We all very much love this game. Um, <laughs> warts and all, because it's going to get a little evil in places. Uh, but we're going to be here for a while, so I guess we should better get going. So if you're ready, Tech, we will get going in three, two, one, go. So we get a whole bunch of obviously those DLC save items at the start. We're not going to be utilizing any of those, but they are going to clog up our inventory a little bit, which is nice. Uh, but this is Yakuza Five. Uh, we're jumping past the game because we did Yakuza Four in the previous uh, Hotfix weekend. But essentially, this takes place a couple of years after. 
We are playing as a taxi driver called Taichi Suzuki. Uh, he might look a little familiar. This is Daigo Dojima. Uh, he's about to go missing for five hours. Don't worry about it. You'll actually see him again when we get to Ryu's part later on. Um, but we are in a brand new city. You will notice that this is... This is not Kamurocho, and it's not any of the cities that you will have seen before. This is Nagasu, uh, and we are the part one Kazuma Kiryu, the game's board itself. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, we're on, we've basically become under an alias. Uh, the reasons why will get explained later, uh, but we are literally driving taxis. Yep, that's his entire, that's his entire job. He, he's just a taxi driver now. No explanation, just thrown straight into the job. Uh, yep. <laughs> This is Nakajima. If Nakajima sounds familiar, he's actually uh, Shimano. Uh, Shimano's voice actor, but he is the best boss. Nakajima is, is a good he? Lad. Yeah, he that is. never occurred to me. Like, the, the, the just man. <laughs> yep, that's an impressive. That's an impressive range going from Shimano to Nakajima. <laughs> going from just uh, like constantly angry to a nice, nice positive vibe. <laughs> actual, actual goat in terms of side characters. Yes. So. We're going to be doing the old camera trick. For Yakuza 5, the camera trick isn't quite as effective as it is for the other PS3 games in Yakuza 3 and Yakuza 4, but it still does work like quite well if like the NPCs are far away, because this game has a bit of an issue when it comes to pedestrians. When it comes to pedestrians in this game, they are a solid brick wall. It is awful. It is very hard to navigate around them. Uh, I'm fairly certain me, Ryu, and Tap have all been caught in a literal circle of them uh, coming up to this point when we used to not go to Ebisu before. But thankfully with the new route, which I think most it was mostly you, wasn't it, uh, who came out with it, Ryu? It was me and X-Play. He, he nice. first thought of it, and then I kind of like routed it in for both uh, Kiryu percent and Danny percent. Because Kiryu percent, you can be a little more liberal with the, with the staminans. Like, you don't have yeah. to, like, pay for as many taxis. Yeah, which is nice. Because that, that is something that is admittedly, like, scaring me a little bit, is the fact that the way that we're going to do this, the way we're going to try and do this, is that once I'm done with my part, I'm going to be sending the save over to Tap, who, once Tap is done with, obviously, their part, will also send the save over to Ryu. So everything that we're doing... uh Obviously, everything that we're doing, our characters are going to come back in the finale, which is going to be a big thing that Ryu is going to be in control of. So... The worse I do, the worse it's going to be for you. So I have to play well. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, uh, unless uh, unless like there's something like at run ending happens, I think we're I think we're actually okay. Should be good. Should be good. Yeah. My uh, when practicing Kiryu yesterday, I was actually doing quite well. My side mirror is okay. Um, for that part there, you might be wondering why we didn't go, uh, give over the yellow binding. Same rule as the Ukyo Bell when Rebel was doing Yaks Free earlier. It's technically a DLC item. Like, we could save a stamina, which would actually help a lot in these fights. So, obviously, we don't allow it. Yeah, yeah so, gonna... like, any of, like most of the DLC items are not actually that helpful. But it's more to, like, it's the rule is in place more for, like, parity between, like, the the consoles and the PCs because you know if you're if if you were one of the very rare people that actually owned these games on on PS3 you probably wouldn't have them so it's really cool you can actually like in the original you can actually look at uh the actual manga uh and you can also look at the magazines that are here as well these are, like actual real publications in Japan it's kind of nice they're not translated <laughs> the manga <laughs> parts at least but <laughs> look at the pretty art It's almost like they were scanned directly for the game. <laughs> and we, as you can probably guess, we're finally getting to our first fight. Uh, the nice thing about Yakuza 5 is the tutorials are actually very minimal. Uh, so we don't actually get a fight, like a tutorial telling us, you know, do light attacks, do strong attacks. It is just, hey, we're going to punch these guys now. Hopefully I can get most of them over these bins. It's kind of the same as... Why did that happen? It's kind of the same as uh, Yakuza 3 in that, you know, if you can hit enemies with... Uh, if you can hit enemies with weapons and stuff like that, they'll do a little bit of extra damage, which that was a good start, but I don't know what happened in the middle of that combo there. If I'd done the normal combo, I would have actually got probably both of them with the kick, so that's a little upsetting. But we're just going to be running around this new place. The person on the left there, uh, he is someone that's going to be in every single city. He asks you to take pictures of, like, the landmarks of everywhere, and he can give you a bit of money. 
that's something that should be mentioned is that money is going to be an issue for two characters in this run. Uh, unfortunately, our, our wonderful baseball man uh, has a little bit of funding issues. And we need to take at least one taxi with the guy. But you'll see that in Ryu's part later on. The nice thing is no fight spawns just yet. We'll talk about Yakuza fight spawns in a minute because Yakuza fight spawns are the worst in the series by far. They are very, very nasty. But I'm going to go meet our boss Nakajima. He's just up here on the bridge. You'll also probably see at some point. It almost happened there. Uh, despite the fact that we panned the camera down to despawn civilians, there's an exceedingly like relative chance that there is a civilian that will spawn just in front of you. And because of the way that civilians work in this game, they will be a wall. They will stop you and your momentum. It's really frustrating. But it seems to happen more in Sotenbori, but I don't know if that's just because I've had it happen more there. It's just one of those things that it can just happen, unfortunately. And we get a nice little walk and talk. Yeah, so about these walk and talks, uh, they work a little differently from the Yakuza 4. Um, we tried we tried doing like the same things the Yakuza 4 that we did, uh, like, uh, to, to this game and it, like it it just doesn't work for some reason it like as far as i've as far as i've seen like even like as far like you could even like beat up the game like 30 times but the game will still wait for the audio files so there's actually no way to as far as we can see to, to skip any of these walk and talks but on on the other side you know the game gets kind of long and it gets kind of uh <laughs> it gets kind of exhausting, so uh, this won't be the only walk and talk you see. You will see you will see one later on in uh, Tapioca's part, and also one in my part. Uh, there, there's a there's a little, tiny little thing that you can do in, in my part that <laughs> that no one found for for at least a couple of years, and then uh, and then I came in to, to to ruin that part a little, bit. just a tiny bit. It wasn't it wasn't that bad. But. We were so happy with our second breakpoint, and then you half took it away from us. <laughs> you made it a fast breakpoint instead. <laughs> yeah, so they'll end up. Uh, so, Nak Kiri and Nakajima are just gonna, you know, explore the town basically, kind of give you a rundown of like how how it like compares to. Um, now it compares to Kamurocho and Sotenbori previously, uh, in only featured in you know Yakuza Two and Yakuza Zero. Yeah, yeah. There's actually quite, there's actually like an impressive like a variety of places in Yakuza Five because you know you're following five different characters. They can't all be in the same place, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little sad that some of the maps from Five just haven't ever like turned up again. Cause like some of these are actually really nice maps, and I think they would be really good in the Dragon Engine as well. Oh yeah, imagine Sukimino, an actual fair a Sukimino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, unfortunately, our boss, despite how nice he is, he's going to take a bit of a punch or two a couple of times in Kiryu's part, and we're just going to be uh, helping him out. But these two are causing some aggression, and we're going to do our first level up here. Uh, we're going to be getting tech to level 1 for double combo finisher, and heat up to level 2 so we can get a little bit of a heat bar extension. Yeah, the heat bar extension will be pretty useful later on. And we also get essence of finishing, which is useful as well. Get them both satisfyingly. <laughs> That's not so bad. It's fine. Oh, that was pretty close. Yeah, I've been missing. That was actually really good. <laughs> that was actually amazing. If the first guy had gone down, I'd have been really happy with that, but unfortunately not. Sometimes, like very rarely, you can actually have like one of them bounce off the wall and do that little extra damage, but unfortunately I just I missed there, which is a shame. And then there's a th you can tell there's this strapping young lad who is watching us from the side here. Uh he's gonna be important in like two minutes. <laughs> This is going to be the last of technically our kind of tutorials for the fights for this chapter, apart from uh, Sosuke's there. Oh, wait, we have the ramen first. Keep getting out the ramen talk first every time. <laughs> yeah. They. So, yes, you might have noticed it right by now. We're like almost 10 minutes into the game, <laughs> and we've only been walking around with our boss. <laughs> the game's long for a reason, and it's because of that. <laughs> 
No. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the game's directors, um, they actually compared this to their version of GTA San Andreas, which, taken out of context, sounds wild. But when you kind of like have played five, you know the scale like of it and like how much story there as well there is. Yeah, I, I get that. I can see that. Yep, I I, I hundred percent believe that. I, I don't care if you made that up. That it sounds like on the money. <laughs> It's also, this place that we're actually currently in is also a mini-game uh, later on where you can start making uh, noodles. It first appeared in... this come out before Ishin or after Ishin? OG. This came out before. Okay, so it would have gone from this to Ishin. But yeah, it's it's a noodle mini-game that uh, if you played LED uh, Ishin in the West, it's the it's kind of the exact same as that. Also, don't also like when you go into Premium Adventure, you can actually wear what Cutie wears and you get a nice little surprise. <laughs> It's good. It's very good. <laughs> right, so unfortunately, our boss gets punched again. Uh, and we get these two. So these are members of the Yamagasa family. Uh, as part of the plot, I guess we should mention, uh, Daigo Dojima is in town with the Tojo. I'm going to hit here, so I'm going to just get all the damage. Uh, Daigo Dojima is in town with the Tojo. Uh, they are here to make an equal alliance with the Yamagasa family, even though the Yamagasa family are technically a smaller a Yakuza Alliance, like less members, blah, blah, blah. Daigo <laughs> came up to... Sorry, Daigo I thought you, I thought to, you were going to miss that guy. Yeah, I actually did as well. I actually thought I was going to hit me higher instead. I was a bit too far to the left, to be honest. Uh, you only need to take care of one of these guys, because as you can see, the Yakuza counterattack will just take care of the other one. Uh, important to note, in Olivia, you can see the two items, four locations, one there and one behind us. That's going to be important for the next time we're back in here. But thankfully, our boss won't get punched that time. Uh, but essentially, Daigo... Cut the ranks in terms like the taxi line you're supposed to get like in the front the first one. We have to go apologize for that. And ever since that moment, Daigo Dojima, act surprised, has gone missing. In a what? game. <laughs> and this is where fight spawns come in, and this is where I've got to start being exceedingly careful every time we go around any of the maps. So you'll see me take a bit of a wider berth around certain corners. Fight spawns in Yakuza 5 are the definition of pure evil. That guy on the left and this guy are potential fight spawns. So you've got a couple of different fight spawns you can get. That was actually a really nice walk back. I'm actually really happy. Um, <laughs> fight spawns can appear in a couple of different ways. The most obvious one is when they have a speech bubble above their head. Uh, those ones can see you from a very long way away. To be able to get past those ones, we have to either pump the R1 button, which is the walk button, or something we can do with the PC version, which is nice, is we can just lower the uh, walking on the left stick to about 60%, is it? Something around that? 60%. It, you can you can go a little bit higher, but I, I find that like you change your angle even slightly, it, yeah. it'll trigger them. So it's, a, it's pretty sensitive. Yeah, I feel like it's also a bit more sensitive on PC than console. I don't know why. It, it's probably just placebo, but it's definitely something you have to be very aware of. This is the tutorial for Dragon Spirit, what would become extreme heat in, obviously, the later Dragon Engine games. This is a nice, quick, simple skip. You want to go into it, punch once, and then cancel out. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice you don't have to wail on Sosuke even more than he already could. <laughs> just you know, lightly tap him for the tutorial, and that's it. Um, we we probably like there there aren't like a whole lot of prompts uh, because we actually did something in the settings to like reduce like hints on the in the game, so like they won't stop you nearly as much. Um, like on only if it's like absolutely required, like they're introducing a new character or something. And we just go home. This is going to be our hideout, the curious part. It's a decent hideout, but the issue is its location is kind of like perfectly just far away enough from every taxi stand that's around it that we're not going to be taxiing. Yeah, that so so this this was obviously a time before um, before like calling a taxi like from anywhere was a thing, and also before like multiple. Taxi air spots were also a thing. So they're all like in like five corners of the map or five or six corners in the map. And Kiryu, despite being a taxi driver himself, <laughs> does not have access to any, you know, express spots. So we're stuck with the five and we find that the most efficient ways to just walk 
<laughs> it's making me upset because you could totally there is a there is a literal car park outside of our apartment. You'll see it because there's gonna be a story point there, like in the next chapter. Kira could literally park his taxi there and then obviously just take that to work. That would have been an option, but no. <laughs> also surprised, uh, Kiryu has a, a girl visiting him. Mayumi, I believe her name is. Mayumi, yes. Yep, uh, she, learn a lot yeah, more about later. You probably you, you missed her in the in the cutscene where uh where both Kiryu and Nakajima were in the cabaret club, but she was she was present. And, and it turns out she <laughs> Ooh, okay. So this guy is actually oh, not too bad oh, of a yeah. bite spawn, uh, because he's a larger lad. They're actually slower than your run speed, but it's the guy by club Sega that I'm worried about because he's now seen me. I should be able to run at this point, but I'm just being a little extra careful today. This guy's also fight spawn, he's a larger lad, so we should be fine, especially if I walk to the right. So you've already seen three fight spawns on this road already. Like this is <laughs> this is where Yakuza Five starts to shine. Oh, hey, another one. Uh, we just pump the control stick for this guy. Uh, we also want to be very careful of obviously like pavements and stuff, because with the pavements, you don't know whether any of these guys on the right are going to be a fight spawn or not. That's another part of fight spawns that we haven't mentioned is that normal people walking around can and will be fight spawns. There are also a special type of fight spawns that we like to call the squatters, which we'll get into way later. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they don't ruin anything in, in the next part after this, and also a Taps part, because uh, if you're not you know, careful I, in Taps part, you might accidentally run into them. I totally forgot they were in Tsukumino, and I just completely thought they were in Taps part. I just, yeah, yeah, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like there's one, there's one, there's one in the later part of your later part that is like infinite range for some reason. Yeah, so you want, so you want to do your like your dragon spirit here. It's pretty much the easiest way to take out uh, enemies with this specific like health bar length. Would have liked a little bit more heat left over than that for the next fight because what we ideally want to do is come out of this fight with a little bit of heat for because the fight after this next one is going to be a boss fight. And we're going to need to use Dragon Spirit in that one. And the, the Staminans that we've got don't fully fill the all the heat that we have with the extra level that we got in the previous chapter. So ideally I would have had a little more, but I can rectify that in the fight by giving a quick stomp to the boss that we're going to be attacking. And I'm going to be making a very quick safety save here just in case. I don't think it should be a problem. My game or my PC has been having a couple of issues lately where this bit for some reason has been crashing on me and it shouldn't. So just in case, I'm just doing this right here. And yeah, then we get so, into the side oh, sorry, stuff. Sorry, go ahead. If you would like, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this this game is a little bit unstable um, <sighs> for on specifically on PC. Um, you have to do a bit of a finicky thing with NVIDIA control panel or the AMD equivalent and actually lock the game to 60 FPS. For some reason, that not only makes the game more stable and let, like, far less prone to crashing, but it also makes the game run better. Yep. We are good at this point for now. Uh, usually, the crash I've had recently has been this not loading up for some reason. But this is the first side mission you'll see. So every character bar technically one has their own set of side content, like side stories and stuff. I don't trust any of you. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm away. So you'll notice on the mini map there are arrows that I should have been following. No, <laughs> I'm a taxi driver. I know the quick way. Um, you'll also see that I'm not exactly giving the best of service because I'm kind of swerving all over the place. Uh, we do <laughs> be a little careful uh, because we don't. If we hit people, we'll go like we'll get sent backwards a little bit. If you're really unlucky, you can get sent back to the very beginning. If I see anyone here that's a potential problem, I'd go slower, but those two are fine. That wasn't too bad, actually. I could have gone faster with the first one I stopped for, but because we're obviously, you know, doing a really like thing, I don't want to go too fast just in case. But <laughs> honestly, yeah, if you're not really, too bad. If you're, sorry, if you're really unlucky, you can actually bump into invisible uh, pedestrians. Um, they. It's. I don't really know why it can happen, but sometimes you'll just bump into something that's not there, and you'll get sent back. And like yeah. you'll like that's even happened to me like in the overworld. Like I've bumped into like a random and like a random invisible car before. It's it was a bit jarring. Yeah, I don't know if it's the same for you, but the the one that I've had the most trouble with for the invisible pedestrians is that first turn. Mm, that yeah. First alleyway there. Yeah. When we get to the second part of Kiryu's side story, uh, hands up if you like Initial D. <laughs> so, 
if you probably you probably noticed at this point, this is Devil Killer Nagata. He's the guy that we fought earlier uh, with the Dragon Spirit. We're just gonna do a little bit of drifting. You don't have to do it on the straight here, but I kind of like doing it at the start to get a little bit of speed and get past him. But around corners, definitely, and you'll see that we are basically adopting the snaking tactics of Mario Kart. Yo, know, Mario Kart DS. Nope. <laughs> Didn't get it. No. <laughs> my speed, my time. Uh, this is actually necessary to do. Uh, when you do one of the missions in Yakuza 5, all sub-stories. You also do get a dedicated taunt button and a dedicated taunt button. <laughs> oh, it's important, but yeah. The bottom right, you can see this blue bar is filling up. That's our boost bar. I'm about to get trapped here. There we go. Uh, I want to boost, but I want to boost at the... Wow, I'm driving badly. At the right time, so I'm going to wait a second here, because if I boost here... I should be able to bypass a tutorial. Yep, the tutorial prompt that comes up for specific heat actions. If you look at the minimap, you'll see this little blue bar. These are special heat actions you can do around like every, like certain parts of like every lap that like just put you forward a bit. Nani. Thankfully, you'll hear he just went, Nanny? Uh, that's because his car explodes. It is impossible to lose this. <laughs> I don't know how yeah, you just... drove that bad. <laughs> I mean, racing takes a toll on your car. It's true. And we're in a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, that's the best part about Curious Part, is you are just a taxi driver, and these guys are the devil killers. Now, the downside to making the mockery of Nagata, like, twice now, uh, the devil killers are now going to be an extra fight spawn around town. Boy. Thankfully, their spawn locations are... They are set spawn locations, yeah. and we know exactly where they are. The downside is, they're in two pain in the backside places, because one's outside our house, and one is outside our place of work. <laughs> Yeah, these these are like unique fight spawns. You can yeah. even in new game plus you still have to account for them because they don't get despawned. Yep. Yeah. That <laughs> the Yakuza Five is just that evil. <laughs> yeah, you will hopefully not see today how evil Yakuza Five's fight spawns can be. Um, there are at least three cities in this game that have exceedingly evil fight spawns. Uh, one of them you will see in the next part. One of them, unsurprisingly, actually you'll see two of them next part, because the other one is Kanarocho, uh, and the other one is Sotenbori. I think I've become more akin to disliking Sotenbori's fight spawns than Sukumino's. I think me and Sukumino have been getting along lately, which is wild. Yeah. Yeah, she's just not, not happy with Sotenbori fight spawns still. But I was practicing yesterday, and I was trying to do like a full run. You know when you have to take Akiyama back to Dino Chair? There was a fight spawn uh -huh. in the entrance. Uh, you <laughs> can't get past him. There's nothing I can do. Yeah, they can do that. They can definitely take up uh, story points, and I do believe they take precedence over the actual story. So, yeah, there is one one nice thing about the way that fight spawns work in Yakuza Five, and we'll discuss what that is when we get to the next chapter, because it's actually a special thing that only happens in Yakuza Five. It's actually really cool, uh, but it does happen as well in story fights, which is really nice. Anyway, we're back at work. This is just your, like, hey, speak to Hero Car if you want to go racing against these devil killers. Look, everyone's kind of like, you know, probably shouldn't do that, wink, wink, because maybe our boss here used to be a very, very big racer and then became a taxi driver. Good for him. And then we then we get more side content. Uh, we are going to get introduced to Chef Tatsia. Uh, chef Tatsia is an actual celebrity chef in real life. Um... <laughs> said some maybe not so great things about people complaining that prices of water in his restaurants are 800 yen um but <laughs> in this game he's gonna be he's gonna be kind of like a tutor but every he's gonna stalk all of our characters you will not see you'll not see the last of him for a while uh he has a sub story tied to him that we have to finish like every single restaurant for him you have to find three unique restaurants in every locale Tell him about them, and every time you do, you get specific, like, benefits, like, you can get, like, extra, like, spirit, or attack, or, like, an extra HP bar. For the run, the the, the actual attack up doesn't actually increase that much, so we don't bother. It would take too long. For all sub-stories, you have to, but we still don't get the buffs because they're just not worth it. And after this comes a fight I am worried about, so I will hand it over to Ryu for that while I concentrate. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so the fight coming up, you actually have to fight two bosses. They're usually pretty benign, but sometimes it can also go horribly, horribly wrong depending on whether uh, one of them decides to block or not. I find that it's probably easier to like have him attack you first, yeah. um, and and like or yeah, attack you first and then and then pop the, the dragon spear. That way, he doesn't block. And put, you could do a potentially cool thing with it uh, if uh, if Fru can pull it off, but it, it, it is pretty hard to do. So he's gonna. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, he has to he has to equip his. Uh, oh, okay. I'll just bang you over there, I think. Oh, well, you're hitting him at least. Yeah, so I was trying to get like an extra hit off of the... Isa, leave me alone. You're irrelevant. <laughs> so like, five hours from now. Okay, let's get you on the ground again, so I'd rather not have to use another one of those. Actually, I don't mind that, considering. Isa, stop this. Go away. Oh, yeah, he's uh, un <laughs> unusually... <laughs> Unusually hug happy today. Surprised that actually counted low enough HP. <laughs> when I get won't die from this, uh, I'll just stomp him. Ideally, what I'm trying to do, and I'm, I'm definitely being a bit more overly cautious than I should be, because obviously we're doing the relay and we're handing it over. I'm trying to save on stamina. And there's like, I want to do two heat actions against Isaiah, and if I do a heat action against Moranaga, that's going to be like an extra one. But at this point, I am going to use stamina, and I am going to put these blackjacks in the way. Yeah, so these are a relatively new addition to the run. Uh, we found that, you know, we, because that spoiler, Akiyama is also going to be using them. Uh, we found that it's also usable for, like, this strat is also viable for Q as well. The problem is that you actually need to spend an extra 10k yen in, in the very beginning of the story. That's why he went into the, the ATM. Um, so he's a little bit more limited in what he can do with the blackjacks, but for these early bosses where you don't have the thing, to use with Kiryu yet. Um, we, yeah, Blackjacks are kind of like the saving grace of the early game for him. Yeah, I've been messing up that strat. Like, the, the as Rue was saying, what you want to be able to do is throw Moranaga over to the side and then, like, punch him over there. Because my heat was a little less than I would have liked, I tried to do one stomp uh, in there to be able to build my heat up a tiny bit more. Uh, but even with that, I didn't have... I, I didn't start the fight well because I uh, locked on to Isaiah instead, which unfortunately meant that the the entire time, if I had if I didn't lock on to Isaiah and I just hit uh, Moranaga, it would have been fine because we actually would have... Ooh, nice fight spawn in the world. Because uh, we would have been able to uh, just focus fully on Moranaga and just take him out. So that was unfortunate. Yeah, and what you and and what could have happened is that you actually end up like sliding across the map while you're doing the the dragon spirit attacks. So you could so instead of walking towards that stamina, he could have actually just like gone straight to it while attacking Morinaga to make for a pretty sick like <laughs> a skip to, over to the stamina. But it didn't happen because of yeah. uh, how it turned out. Yeah, I've been that. That's the thing that I really wanted to like actually land in that fight, and I've not been getting it in practice, which is a shame. I haven't got it in a run for ages either, which is annoying. I'm messing up something in terms of my like setup for that. And that is the it, end of part two for Kiryu at the very least. Yeah, that is that is a pretty that is a pretty difficult setup. I will give it that. It's really cool when you pull it off. <laughs> very very <laughs> cool when you pull it off. <laughs> Super satisfying as well. All right, so, so we're, we get we're gonna have a little bit of a flashback here, mini flashback gonna load in the Okinawa map and then we're back in reality. <laughs> it's gonna cost us a little bit of time to have to load in Okinawa, which is not a place you actually go to in this game, only in cutscenes, which is a shame. I yeah, so to see what yeah. it looked like in this engine, the upgraded <laughs> 3 and 4 engine. Yeah, so so basically what's happening is Kiryu is actually staying away from uh, from his family because uh, Haruka actually became an idol, a, ja a real Japanese idol. So, but in order, but in order for that, for the whole deal to happen, Hideo had to agree to stay away from his family and cut all ties with them. So that's how he ended up in Nagasu, basically. One thing we haven't mentioned in terms of fight spawns as well, there is a 
Is that? No, it's not a new beverage guy. Uh, there is a special type of fight spawn uh, called Victory Road. We really oh, do not want again. to get into a Victory Road fight at all because it has yeah. the potential to come back and bite us really nastily. Yeah. Uh, with the Victory Road stuff, the Colosseum in this game, yeah. uh, with the Colosseum stuff in this game, it's really nasty in terms of if you get into the fight with the Victory Road stuff and start the Colosseum like storyline, you get a lot of like extra dialogue that takes up a lot of time. And a little bit good. Um, it, it gives a lot of dialogue that can take up a lot of extra time, but also there is a specific NPC that can spawn in the finale. He can still spawn there even if we don't like actually get like any of the Victory Road qualifiers to begin with. But the the Victory Road the fights themselves are kind of interesting because like. You only go up against one enemy, but they're stronger than your usual, like, fight spawn themselves. Certain characters deal with them really fast, like Saijima. Um, but unfortunately, oh. they are just a pain. Doesn't matter who you so, get. Yeah, and How this is the beginning of the game, so you're, you're really strapped in terms of, like, methods of dealing with the Victory Road people. We love these two because they literally tell us to drive faster, which we're in a speedrun, absolutely. <laughs> Don't mention Daigo Dojima, but this is where we... Uh, Morinagra and Aizawa are part of the Tojo. They came up and they were like, Hey, we saw him get into your taxi, fourth chairman. We know who you are. And they're like, so what did you do with Daigo? And we're like, what did we do with Daigo? We didn't do anything. And that's how we figure out Daigo's missing. Which is going to be a plot point that's going to last for a good couple of hours. All the way Four up hours. until you, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Another little bit of side content you can do, you can pick up trash around the city. It's the little orange uh, like markers you'll see on the on the ground. This cutscene's important because you can see there is a devil killer still stood outside of my workplace, so I need to be very careful after this cutscene not to run into the guy. And then we do a thing that we do a heck of a lot with Kiryu in this part, which is we go home, then we go to work, and then we go home, and then we go to work. <laughs> yeah, sometimes yeah. that guy actually despawns once you have a control of Kiryu. And sometimes, sometimes he won't be there when you when you first exit, and then he'll be there when the cutscene ends. It, it's almost like the game, for some reason, loads two instances of uh, of Nagasu when you, when you exit and play that cutscene. But in this case, he stayed there. So no uh, <laughs> no teleportation gimmicks here yet. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm gonna push it because there's no one in front of me. Uh, one thing that I did there intentionally, you saw me run a little bit out of my way to the right where the fences were. Those fences will save your life in the next chapter. Those fences are the best. Yeah. You so like so. What's really weird about the fight spawns in this game is that they are they basically have like a selective vision. They won't see you even if even if you're like behind the fence for some reason. It, they count it for it just counts like as like a in, infinitely tall wall for some reason. So if you can get behind it, even like behind a car or something, uh, yeah, they they won't like they'll immediately stop in their tracks and uh and not chase you anymore. I'm definitely playing this a little extra extra safe than I should be doing, but I really just do not want to get into a fight spawn. Matt. You can, like, I've done it in the QD percent. You can actually be optim, be extremely uh, uncareful and just blaze through the uh, fight spawns. But it really only works in this map where the the, the area is extremely wide open. Uh, yeah, the other cities aren't aren't so lucky. <laughs> you kind of have to be a little slow in those. Yeah, like I could have, I could have ran past the guy in blue after we turned the corner from our workplace. But even there, I was just a bit careful in case he turned around before I got to him because he would have caught up to me. That's the reason why we also have to look out for the specific type of fight spawns because again, the larger ones can't catch up to you, which is nice. Yeah, there's there's the large guys. They're the hosts, I think. They're faster than yep. you, and then they're like the average dudes that are like just as fast as you. It's yep. it's weird, <laughs> and obviously we are staying very much away from any sidewalk whenever there's a fight spawn that's caught our attention, because the issue is obviously you can't move that fast and you can't move away from pedestrians on the sidewalk, and it, it is hard to overstate how easy it is for one of them to be a fight spawn. The only ones that obviously can't be fight spawns are women and children, um, but the or anyone carrying a bag or anyone yes. carrying like a phone or something like that. 
Yeah. Or if they're like in like in a group together with someone else. But they'll all ob they'll very obviously look like you know an enemy. Yeah. It's it's the yak as a free problem of all the models of civilians can also just be the models of like the enemies as well. <laughs> I think they I think they I think they made a little more distinct in this game. Yeah, I agree. There's gonna be a sub story here. We do it in all sub stories, and we do it in a funny way. Uh, this is like the this is like the NHK man who comes over for your TV license, but this guy is like selling newspapers. Uh, we obviously pretend we're not home to not have to deal with him. In all sub stories, you deal with him by accepting newspaper subscription, and that's it. Ends the sub story. <laughs> <laughs> if you say no, you get into a fight, or we could just accept it and just be all like, "All right, fine." It's only two thousand five hundred yen, which in any percent would be a bit of an issue. Oh, yeah, it here. costs money. Yeah, okay. Yep. And here we get a lovely story section of somebody yeah. you would have seen in Rebel's run of Yaks Free earlier. It is the ever wonderful person we absolutely love. It's Mac! Mac is back. Turn of the Mac. So, this is actually Mac's last appearance in a Yak as a game, and it's really frustrating because Mac is awesome. And they actually have a design for Mac for LED Ishin, and they cut him from the game. And that really sucks. Mac is awesome. We like Mac. Now, unfortunately, Mac's gonna get a text from his girlfriend. Uh, they're here, obviously, in Japan. He's a photographer, travels the world, you know, the drill. Uh, he and his girlfriend have discovered a movie with <clears throat> tentacles in it. Mac, that's a bad road. You don't want to go down that road, and we never see Mac again. So, oh, poor Mac. Mac. But this is the start of Mac's revelation for Hackers of Five. Uh, we're gonna do something very specific here. Gotta bounce, yeah, oh boy. Bye, Mac. <laughs> Goodbye, Mac, for the next 12 years. <laughs> so, this guy is going to be all like, hey, chase the taxi down in front of you. We're supposed to subtly lose sight of the car. Uh, I'm just going to... I'm just going to... Oh, man. Good day, Ben. Hope day's been good. Oh, no, I drove into the car. What happened? Sumi must understand. Yeah, so this... I, I'm pretty sure this mission is actually impossible to, to do, uh, like, even, like, normally. You will just in, you will just fail it regardless of how far you get because it turns out the other guy also is like is also trying to avoid yeah. him. So yeah, yeah the, it turns out the the guy in our in our taxi was chasing the guy or the girl in the other taxi. It will always end at this exact spot with that exact same cutscene, so we just get for it. Like we just you know get past it. Mac gives us the usual text of, hey, you should go find those revelations, my guy. Which we would love to, but unfortunately not. Yeah, it's only one... Yeah, you only get one revelation, I think, in this game, and, like, I think a couple of, like, other weapon ones, but those don't, like, cause, like, the, the cutscenes to happen, really. Um, they're not very useful. Yeah. Is this slow enough? It is. I can, I'm just gonna run past off at this point. Oh, two more risky, but it's fine. I still wanna walk into these ceilings. Also, you might notice Wadder is next to this taxi. We can't speak to Wadder to, like, deal with uh, fight spawns because he's a sub-story. I think is Yakuza 5 is the second game, uh, first mainline game, to have sub-story markers on the map by default. You could get sub-story markers in Yakuza 4 by speaking to somebody in the uh, Champion District. The first actual Yakuza game to feature sub-story markers on the map, though, was Yakuza Dead Souls. Praise Yakuza Dead Souls. <laughs> <laughs> We will get every chance to praise Yakuza Dead Souls because yep. it other it is otherwise the most cursed. Yes. Oh, yep. <laughs> I devil killer outside. You can see him at the fence, so we be careful. Uh, so yeah, again for this bit, if I see anyone ahead of me, I'll absolutely like cut through to the right here where the fences are because that will stop their aggro and stop them getting me. We're gonna run north because this should be uh, the nicer way to get to. Olivia, uh, which is where our boss is. That's a fight spot. Yes, it is. Every time I say that, hey, buddy, how you doing? I didn't rather unlucky with some of my fight spawns today. I want to get here before these civilians get here, but they should be fine. I'm worried about the corner there. I know that vending machine exists, so I've gotten caught on it before. Uh, we meet an interesting Osaka detective. He's pretty far from home here, uh, but he knows who we are, and he pretty much threatens us and says, oh, hey, you know that there, Romeo Alliance you've been dealing with since, you know, Yaks 2? Hey, they're here as well, by the way. Go deal with that. So I guess we're going to go deal with that. Yeah, that's definitely not the last time you'll see him. 
Mm. Be again, a little careful going around these corners. There can be fights spawns like on these corners. You can also, yeah, there's one in front of us. You can also get a fight spawn. Uh, like, you see how there's a little bit of a like entrance to the right of us here? You can get fight spawns in those little entrances, and there's one around where we're going now, which can be a problem. Definitely wait to run this time. So again, I'm just staying very far away from like the big open spaces that could have the fight spawn. If there's one in here, there's one in here. I'll just accept it. Because um, <laughs> you just you can't see around that corner. Yeah, you, you can't. They can be right in front of this guy, which is, which would be really unfortunate. But hey, that's the Oculus Five for you. Yeah. Can, the there's there's so many that anywhere. can be in like the position where you have to push the story along. All right, so we finally get to say hello to this guy. This is what I say. He's awesome. Uh, he is a member of the Omi Alliance, and these are the Omi Alliance. Uh, so the thing that we were alluding to uh, before, we have. An enemy in this fight which is counted as the leader is this guy. So we're going to Dragon Spirit up and take him out. And then when the leader goes down, everybody else is going to react in a different way. So you'll see that some enemies are going to go down on the ground and get scared. Those enemies actually go down in one hit. So you can tell that we're obviously going after them first. And then everybody else afterwards. I wanted to grab, obviously, the stamina and while I was there. I, some of these enemies also have smaller uh, HP bars than the others. Thankfully, one of those was left at the end there, which was good. That felt pretty decent. Yeah, usually the ones that get scared are the ones that actually have the longer health bar, so it's really good that you... It, it's really good to go for the, the leader in that case. Yeah. Huh? What? Huh? So I have to say here, he's pretty much also looking for Daigo because he's heard of like the him missing. Um, but uh, apparently, believe it or not, he is not responsible for it. He is, in fact, telling us that all he really wants from from the Tojo clan is a proper like fight between between the two uh, organizations. Uh, but Kiryu kind of throws a fit and uh, throws that table <laughs> on, onto the ground. <laughs> we get. Yeah. Monagra and Isa turn up. Uh, Patriarch Aoyama, uh, there. Yeah. Patriarch. Yeah. Uh, he has decided whilst Daigo has gone conveniently missing, he is going to become the interim chairman of the Tojo and has gone to stir up stuff with the Amagasa family because he doesn't feel like they're a worthy alliance. The usual stuff. So we're going to go and stop him whilst we taxi everybody over there. <laughs> Very convenient. Just showing up for just showing up for Yak as a work whilst we're showing up for work. And this, this is the worst door guard ever, because we're just like, hey, yo, someone ordered a taxi, and he's like, I don't know, I'll go see. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah, he kind of just lets us walk in. I mean, he, he does warn everyone else, but, like, we, we literally just walk in. So to see three floor set of pieces you can see. Cool. Right, three floors up and three floors down, we should say. Uh, we'll be heading up. There's a lookout over here. It's going to take control of the camera from us, but it's fine. So we can't do anything until this conversation is over anyway. Opening doors in Yakuza 5 can be slow. So what we're going to do is we're going to start punching this door just before the dialogue ends. Opens the door, and we can go in. I could leave these guys for these two. I don't trust them half the time. <laughs> yeah, your companions in, in this game are very rarely helpful. Um, but if they if they do decide to help, they could potentially destroy even bosses. But uh, we'll, 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 we'll get to that later. So, so the so the combo Rube is doing is pretty much the best one, uh, especially on easy difficulty. It's just barely good enough to one shot these uh, these enemies with the short health bar. Did bars. they deal with him? They did. Wow. Ah. Oh wow. <laughs> Even I'm surprised at that. Let's <laughs> do the thing. So we're going to get tech up to level 9. We're going to get a good couple things in here, like regard guard break, that can be like somewhat useful. But there is one ability in particular that we really want to see, and that ability is called... The next one? Bounding Throw. Bounding Throw is going to give us an infant. Yep. It's very strong, but it's also very timing-based. It's actually really hard to do at first. 
Like it's actually like, and it also depends on who you're doing the bounding throw against. Like different bosses oh. react a little differently time wise and also position wise, where you need to stand to make like the best use out of it. But also, it can just be a little finicky at times. Uh, the first guy here, your hatter, is actually kind of a pain to use bounding throw against sometimes. Yeah, Let's that's why we have the. Right. That's why I have the black jacks for it. Uh, yeah, so like even with oh, the bounding throw, it can be a little slow, oh, and especially if you're not used to the bounding throw timing. Uh, and it's easier to just go for like all the items around here in this area, just heat action him, or just use the blackjack. And you know, just casually slam a table on Yanha's yeah, one. No big deal. The Ox is a character, he's fine. So if you miss, you can basically go around and do this combo. If you basically that's early. Uh, if you if you miss, you can just do this to like regain like control of the situation. That's too early. It takes a while to get me back into the swing of things. I'm gonna play early as well because if you do it too late, your hat does this. I'm just gonna use one tower and uh, the natural base. So I have my two standing so this No, stop that. <laughs> On the floor. I don't know, I can't see this on the floor. I don't know why I've been really struggling with the hat fight lately, but I have. It's one fight I definitely need to improve on. I'm, yeah, using the sofa there to do a little extra damage. Ugh. Hopefully that's low enough. Yeah, that's low. Rough fight. Cool. Uh, we're going to pick up some extra stamina hands in this next bit as well, which is nice. There's at least two, three, no, three of them. Four. Yeah, because there's like two downstairs as well. So one of these enemies will drop a stamina next. Uh, in the in the corner there is a toughness C, which we don't particularly even care about. That guy drops one. Thank you. You stay over there. <laughs> so grumpy the enemies. That's one of the things with some of these enemies that don't have weapons. Uh, with like certain like enemies in the series, they are and like actually the main game, they're just very grab happy. They will they will grab you constantly and just like stop you from doing anything. Would be nice if that furniture hit the guy on the ground. Where am I going? Crit push. It's gonna hit this guy on the ground as well. Damn on. Yeah, Once one thing with this room. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, one one thing you can do in in this room is just hit everyone with the furniture and like if you're lucky it can like collateral with every single one of them and just save a bunch of time, but it's kind of inconsistent. Yeah, so... Yeah, so... We don't actually need to deal with a whole lot of fights, uh, and that's kind of like... <laughs> that's kind of like the beauty of, of the Yakuza games. Sometimes they will just let you uh, run past the enemies that you don't absolutely have to fight. Also, you can have this uh, one funny little <laughs> scene with the <laughs> with the ship. Man, my death perception is off today, but at least I can go in here and catch this. Cause like, this, I think it's this guy stopped running away. I got this one. Uh, this guy, I think, drops the enemy. Other one. I do you need to be a bit careful? Because I do want one more. Really, period. So lock onto the guy that we're already finished. Uh, I do want to pick up one more item in this bit in this fight, but it's actually a weapon. Uh, Yakuza 5 is nice because it's one of the games that you can actually like take weapons and just basically I just basically use those for um Wait, I use them one time. Uh, you can basically grab weapons and put them in your inventory. Uh, now ideally no one hits me while I do this. Thank you. This is the guy behind me that is hitting me right now. He's the one that we actually want the weapon from. So that's kinda nice because he's about to he's about to learn. Uh, this won't be enough, I'll go let him go. You're the golf club. Bye-bye. <laughs> we get the front door key by taking out that one guy, and then we leave. Oh, well. Sometimes my sometimes my cutscenes don't skip. I don't know why. <laughs> right, so yes. that's the end of Kiryu Part 3, and now we're on to his final one. Every character in this game has four parts. Ish. <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> Finale, notwithstanding. <laughs> But yeah, this is Madarami. He's the uh, he's the, the main acting, obviously, chairman of the uh, Yamagasa family. Um, he, he just was raided his home. Yeah, he was shot by Aoyama, who tried to explode him, but obviously he's fine. 
we obviously get to see a little bit of flashback between him and Daigo's deal and how he was kind of surprised that, you know, the big mighty Tojo would want an equal alliance with the small Yamagasa family. But Daigo is very, like, Daigo went there with that deal with no bodyguards or anything like that, fully trusting of Yamagasa. And yeah, he's a good guy. There's a fight spawn by me? What? I don't think I've ever had a fight spawn there before. Leave me alone. <laughs> Yeah, in some in some cutscene or after the end of some some cutscenes, fight spawns can potentially spawn right on top of you. I had that happen in my part, which hopefully will not happen today. Oh, oh my! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who just saw me as a fight spawn. Can't tell. It's behind me though. This guy on the right is a fight spawn. This guy walking towards us because he has not been despawned with the camera trick. So we stay away from that guy. Surprised past that first guy. I did actually take that kind of riskily, but yeah, you, yeah, I know you're a fight spawn. You don't stand there. Unfortunately, you have to go to those red guys over there. So, and the issue is, I'm kind of like hopefully having the car move forward here so I can block that guy with it. Because when you're doing the, the pump walk like I am, you have to remember that you don't have your momentum when you let go of walk, so you will start a bit slower. That's why the tilt control stick method is a little bit nicer for. Obviously movement, but sometimes if you're in a bit of a sticky situation, you can't do it. Yeah, I like using the bike here if I can. Like, yeah, nice. th that is that is pretty much the fastest way you can you can go about it. But again, with like the, it's like the same thing in the Yamagasa building. Sometimes the furniture just doesn't go where you want it to. But uh, we are particularly blessed today. <laughs> I wasn't actually certain that going to the right there was actually going to protect me, but it did. This guy should be fine. He's a larger enemy, and I want to walk on this side anyway, because we're now going to have to run down the entirety of the road that goes to our work and beyond. Uh, you can get seen in between these little fence bits, so you do have to be still a little careful, but it's not that bad. It's usually not a problem unless it's like the big bits by there, and they're right in the middle next to them. Uh, but we are supposed to be finding the Yamagasa members who are looking for Yahata himself. You can see, obviously, it's not actually telling us where to go on the mini-map, but as you can see, we know where to go. Uh, it's always scripted each time. This sub-story is unfortunate, because this sub-story gives you the item that decreases the fight spawns. Uh, not decrease, but, just despawn outright. That's the one. Um, yeah. But the issue is, we can't transfer items to other characters, and we also have to go to the middle of the map to continue this one. I'm going to use my Dragon Spirit and hopefully try and take care of some of these guys together. Yeah, there, so in Dragon Spirit, Kiryu can uh, potentially, like, uh, instantly travel to the to the next closest enemy, but as you can see, it's it ha you need, like, quite a bit of room for it to work. So if you're too close, he'll just keep on punching. Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, our wonderful fences here are going to start to run out in a minute. <laughs> it's a shame because we have a bit further to go. Yeah, but the, the the area up ahead is it should be open enough to where it's not that big of an issue. Oh, liking what I'm not seeing right now. He is chasing me, but he won't catch me. Nice, yeah, okay. Yep, this is the part where you just don't want any fight spawns because now it's just a nice straight run to this guy. Unfortunately, you're gonna uh, make a meal of this very rude man. Yeah, so this is one, actually one of the bosses that has like a slightly different uh, bounding throw window. Well, not a bounding throw window, but like a different timing because it will get up much much more slowly than, than you'll see some of the other bosses get up. Like, I, I definitely have spare time this, but it's fine. You know what? You're going on the floor, buddy. <laughs> I don't have enough heat now for the tower. It's fine. We'll just do this into the tower every time. Put that in the first place. Yes, please. I'm fairly confident my D-pad is breaking because every time I press D-pad down, it doesn't register. It's not just this game. <laughs> it's been happening in a lot of the other games as well. <laughs> So we get our first chase section for Yakuza 5. Um, with Yakuza 3 and 4, you actually have like a like 
different bits of tech for each of the chase sections. Like in Yakuza 4, uh, when you jump, you actually get a little bit of momentum. Uh, and that momentum actually gives you like a bit of a speed boost. Uh, as Rebel said earlier, you hold R2 to run. And this game, our tech is basically with these weapons. You actually have to be very careful. You can grab one of these weapons and very rarely it can glitch out. It can glitch out in a positive way and give you extra damage, or it can glitch out in a really bad way and not do any damage at all, which means you have to get a new weapon. And you can also break as well. Yep. Now we have to be very careful. Is that in front of me? It is. So I'm hugging this wall specifically so that I avoid the substory. I also obviously have to avoid this guy. Thank you for having enough room on my right. Once we get past him, we can get past him because he is a larger enemy, but a really bad spot for that guy. A really, really bad spot for that guy. Go up ahead. I think it's a devil killer, but it's fine because we are going to be going to Nagsu Park. And we're going to go up one of the nastier roads in this run for fight spawns. And might be the potential first place we see the squatters. <laughs> I mean, yeah, un yeah, unlike the part where I'm where I'm talking about the infinite range, these guys you just have to, you have enough room to avoid them. Oh it's my just, god! It, they could potentially be crowded along with a lot of other fight spawns, like right now. Oh boy! Be very careful, obviously the civilians, but yeah, once the past scores, we'll be fine. Um, my word, that two, that is two. Yakuza five, stop this! <laughs> Oh, yeah. I could potentially run past this guy, but yeah, he turned. That's what I was waiting for. If I was, like, going for PB stuff, I'd be, like, more aggressive than this, but I am it's very afraid. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, worst comes to worst, you end up with more money. True. <laughs> True. And thankfully, we do have our red climax heat. That's something we haven't actually mentioned. Uh, every single one of your heat attacks is building up a bar in the top left, which you'll see here, which is the red circle. Uh, we need this red climax heat for very specific parts of the run, one of which is coming up right here. It's good. So we'll get dragged into this room. There's a couple of staminans in here I can grab as well. Should be good for safety. I a way more than I should have at this point. Uh, but this uh, set piece also has one of our first bits of really cool speed tech that we do multiple times throughout this run. Well, text box stacking. I'll we'll show you what that is in a second. But this guy, very, very importantly, we are going to do a specific combo. It's very nice. We throw, we stomp, we heat, we climax. Grab you. Throw. Stomp. Heat. And then we climax heat. So there's always a delay between using obviously heat attacks. It's the same climax. So this is what our this is what our red circle is going towards. It's a very strong skill that does like at least one HP bars worth of damage, if not a bit more. Uh, that's very useful for enemies like that guy who have a high bunch of um, basically high armor, and you know he's just gonna knock us through his attacks. I always fail to get this door open, so I'm just gonna walk up and do the slow animation. <laughs> uh, and then we want to take care of everyone in here. I'll stand that in the corner if I need it. I think I've got more than enough of this point. This is my choice. Uh, here. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to stop him once to make sure he doesn't walk away. Very rarely you can have them walk away towards like the entrance. I was actually hoping to be able to see him. So sometimes I wonder how much uh, the bounding flu usually like does on regular enemies. Same, honestly. <laughs> Very same. Oh yeah, okay. important trick coming up. Yeah, so this is gonna teach you the importance of fire extinguishers, which you only ever use one other time in a sub-story with Saijima. Uh, but because, you know, you have to take care of this fire, uh, they give us an infinite ammo fire extinguisher. Now, we lose that in the next cutscene, so what we're going to do is go back there, trigger that text box, then run really fast through the door we opened, skipping the cutscene which puts our fire extinguisher back to normal value, taking us so that we can get this guy. I have to against this guy. Normally he doesn't dodge like that. Ideally, I just don't get attacked by him, and you can see the damage uh, that we can do to him. It's a little finicky at points, uh, but hopefully we just keep on the ground like this. Sometimes he goes really fast as kind of when I get more hits there, but he is not going down quickly. Let me go through the door. I hate the hitbox of this door.
like a lot. <laughs> and then we get a quotation marks plus fight. Very quotation marks. In fact, I don't think it, you don't even you need to do anything for like the final input. Oh. <laughs> Here's a yeah, you see your hat is supposed to have like four HP bars, but uh, four your hat. Uh, I mean, I'm going to take my hands off the controller right now. You can see, but you know, I'm not doing anything then. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> as far as we know, that is the only QTE you never, ever have to do and it wouldn't change anything. It's not slower. It's not faster. It, it It's just funny. So he still, <laughs> he still <laughs> cleans him up in one hit. Like, the game looks like it's doing the input for you, because we clearly are very much not doing that input. Um, you can do it. It doesn't change any amount of time. It's still the exact same hit. So, is, you, you just do it or you don't. If, if you were ever, uh, if you're ever wondering how to efficiently run the game, like, with, like, a, yes. as, like, a minimum inputs run, then you have your, your five inputs right there. To save. <laughs> Nobody at the start of this, which is nice. Uh, we got to run down. This guy's telling us where the inner fighter is. Uh, the inner fighter is obviously a mini game that is over multiple Yakuza games. Uh, that's just next to a taxi, so he's just telling us, hey, go down here, bud. But like, yeah, sure. I'm definitely going to do your inner fighter. Uh, this is like the last time we have potential fight spawns with Kiryu. Uh, this is looking real nice apart from that guy to my right. Hi. Oh, hello. So the nice thing is, he just de aggroed off me before I got to the Nouveau Rish guy here. You see, silver enemies like this, they will give you a lot of money if you beat them. I think I'll probably run this point again. That car is not actually useful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lord. <laughs> hmm. Cool. <laughs> and then we pan the cam around here because this is nasty. This one can spawn a, a fight spawn next to you and you can't see. So we pan the camera. There is a fight spawn in front of me. It's gonna pump it again. I have had nothing but bad luck. Actually, I'm gonna go by the side. Awesome. And a devil killer outside of my work, just for good measure. And we're done with fight spawns on Kiru. That was uh, that was a lot of nasty fight spawns. <laughs> I am not happy with that. Yaks five tonight is uh, <laughs> oh, it's not playing nice. It could be worse. They could they could have spawned in like inside the lot. Could you imagine? That would be awful. <laughs> so Nakajima's giving us our last kind of stuff. He knows like we used to be a big shot Yasha's. He doesn't care. He likes us. We like him. But he's now gonna be all like, you know, there's anything you really need to get done. Now's the time to do it. Uh there is one final sub story as well. Uh that spawns in the office at this point. Uh, where one of the workers has uh, been browsing unscrupulous things on their PC, uh, and they're trying to get rid of this virus, which is giving out so many sound effects. Uh, Nakajima's idea is to punch the PC. That's why we love our boss. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the one last big fight. This is such a cool set piece. Um, so... Basically, we're all like, if the Hat family attack Oyama and the Tojo, that's going to start a Yakuza war. But if the ex fourth chairman of the Tojo decides to stop them, you know, that's not going to start a war. <laughs> so we're going to yes. take on, like, all 100 members ourselves. I don't think it's that much. You do clear a few of them in cutscenes, but it, there's going to be a lot of people you're fighting. <laughs> yep. There's a lot of nasty things about this. I'll leave this to you whilst I do my thing and keep track of this golf club. Yeah, so we got the golf club specifically for this fight. It's definitely not the only one we can get, but uh, we have tried other other things. Uh, and the golf club is pretty much the only viable weapon that isn't like completely out of the way. But as you'll notice that there are also like a ton of like uh, items dropped by the enemies that you can just use, but we're going to be focusing on using these planks um, because you know they're right there and they have a lot of hits and they're big weapons, so they do a lot of damage, especially to these uh, less uh, durable enemies. So we're gonna <laughs> have Suzuki here. Um, the easiest way to deal with them is just is just use a, uh, use a dragon spirit. Uh, you don't want to get shot. Uh, it'd be quite painful if he did. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, wail on the rest of the enemies. We, no, we, we still have a few. We still have a few. 
one plank left. Coolest cussing in the game right here. <laughs> you know, they're firing javelins. What bothers me is that it's like top at it's a top attack thing, right? They could have aimed at the ground and not like past him. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um Is this where the three No, I think Is it where the three guys? Yeah, it's after. Time to go club next to me. It is. Hey, what are you doing here, friend? It's actually what I wanted for this wave, so to have this like actually appear next to me is really nice. You'll notice I'm not going after the Sir Chandler guys, because we don't actually have to at first. We're just trying to take care of as many enemies as possible in this bit. It's why sometimes I'll do the full uh, combo because I can actually like travel quite a bit of distance to be able to get enemies. Now this guy's gotta go down. Yeah, this is the I think this is the only absolutely required hey, buddy. mini boss. It's cool right next to me, that's <laughs> Thankfully, he doesn't block like the, the other bosses did. This is actually going really well. I haven't been like knocked down at all yet, which is good. I said that. I should probably not say that until this is actually over. Over, That's over. Good. And uh, was it you who found out about this? Yeah, uh, I don't think it was me. I think it was either Wisdom Boy or um, or someone else. Yeah. Uh, so it, it is actually, or, or it could have been Tap as well. Uh, so it is actually faster to uh, fail this part of the QTE very early on, because what ends up happening anyway is that only a few enemies will be remaining, and it is much, much faster to just deal with the rest of them with uh, the shotgun. Very conveniently placed uh, neck close to the planks. Not exactly on the plank, but close to the planks. Now, if we wanted to be absolutely safe, we, we could have just played the cutscene normally and it would have ended anyway, but yeah, that saves quite a bit of time. So, yep. yeah. We're, we're, we are going to be failing quite a bit of QTEs intentionally just to, to make things go a little bit more smoothly. And uh, oh, hey, there's that detective again. And yep. uh, he's just told us some unfortunate news that will yeah. make Kiryu travel all the way back to Kamurocho. But for the time being, we're with Saijima. And uh, yep. we're back in time. <laughs> you seem to have it's, gone it's back Yakuza in time. <laughs> you tell it, by it, the it, hair. <laughs> it, it is literally Yakuza 4 because uh, you in this on this specific instance of Kamurocho, you actually have the Yakuza 4 taxi list. You yep. will no, you you will you might notice it uh, when you get to the finale, but when you go, when you come back here, you actually have a slightly different taxi list. Yep, I think Tech, you wanted us to take wellness break here uh, between parts. So. Yeah, because the next yeah, part absolutely. isn't going to be for like an hour and a half. Yeah, I was just about to ask, yeah. Uh, so during these longer uh, runs, everybody, we like to take wellness breaks so everybody can get up, get some water, stretch, anything they need to do. So we are going to go do that for you. Just a quick reminder before we do go to the break, uh, your subs, Prime Gaming subs, Gift subs, and Bitch Cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel do help support all of our all, our, all of our content. I tried to say like five different words at once. It, it happens like once a show. All good, all good. So, uh, if you enjoy any of these showcases, these longer runs with the Yakuza games, any of our other daily shows, it really does help us put on these this content. Uh, with that said, we are going to take our quick break, and we'll be back with uh, the second uh, chapter of uh, Yakuza 5. All right. We'll be back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the games on Quick Hot Fix. We are showcasing Yakuza 3 and 5 today, and we are uh, in the process of uh, watching a Yakuza 5 run. I'll hand it right back over. We can get back into it whenever you're ready. All right, thanks very much. Uh, again, we're going to be here for a while, so let's uh, let's get going. So, Tech, if you're ready, we're going to carry on in 3, 2, 1, go. So, as we were saying pre-break, uh, we are now controlling Saijima. Uh, this is a part... I don't know why my text is not working there. Uh, this is now a part that's like... After the end of Yakuza 4, but before the events of Yakuza 5, uh, where <laughs> things are going to slow down very, very majorly. Almost jarring, mm. where we were having a bunch of action with Q before. and I mean, you're still having a little bit of action here, learning how to play as Saijima, which is basically the same in all of his appearances. Just charge this one move, and you 
take care of most enemies. Great. Very simple. I, feel, I don't know if it's just me. I feel like Sidemer is a lot more satisfying in this game than 4. I feel like they like, Oh, you're not the only one. Out. Yeah. Uh, by default in this game, he has t faster attack speed than he did in Yakuza. So, so much nicer. Yeah. Actually, I think it's even like even like upgraded uh, Yakuza 4. Saijima is slower than Yakuza 5. It's really, oh, it's really weird. It might have been the one. Uh, so I alluded to it earlier. Uh, Saijima is going to take two of the cities uh, that have some of the worst fight spawns uh, in the game. Uh, Kamurocho is one of them. Uh, mostly with the Tenkaichi part here. This can be particularly nasty, uh, so we have to be a little careful here. And then the actual main city that Sidem is going to be in, in charge of later on. Oh, hello. Yeah, I see you. That was not fast enough. Leave me alone. Now, he is not despawned. Should be mentioned, he is not despawned after that. So I have to be a little careful because he is walking back on the right-hand side. It's going to be faster now. There's another. Never mind, this is a fight. One of these is a fight. Please, Diago off me. Hey, buddy. The camera to already being very lovely. I love this game, and it's fight spawns a lot. Um, they're going to despawn, thankfully. Uh, once again, we're in Serena. Once again, Date is in Serena. <laughs> Just following on from Yakuza 3 earlier. Uh, Date is back on the force, but he's actually now like in a romantic relation with the Mamma of Serena, which is nice. Um, good for him, honestly. He deserves happiness. Date's had a lot of not happiness over the years with Yakuza, unfortunately. I mean, he's oh. in a Yakuza game. <laughs> True. True. I'm being a little careful here because you can get a fight spawn right here, but we should be good. Uh, we are going to go and taxi up to the hotel district, which is nice. Uh, the money that we have on Saijima right now, don't get used to it. Fortunately. <laughs> yep. There's going uh... to be an event. <laughs> an unfamiliar event that's going to cause us to lose our money. <laughs> you won't believe what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm being very careful to just stay away from civilians. I don't think you can get a fight spawn like on this section of the road, but you can here. So I'm just being a bit careful. But as soon as we get to Hi, how are you doing? Can I get past you to the left? I'm not actually sure. I, I wouldn't I risk it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna avoid this guy. I think I think I possibly could have, but yeah, it's not a risk it. Man, that's such bad luck today with fight spawns. And we want to speak to Nishida here. And just, yeah, being very careful. Poor old Nishida's looking, uh, looking like he's very much done with Majima. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Majima, he is in here as well. Uh, so at the end of Kiryu's part, we learn that uh, Majima is gone. Uh, and we are obviously in a flashback here where, you know, you don't get too much time to spend with... Saijima and Majima, but Saijima basically confirms, hey, I'm going to be going back to jail for reasons unbeknownst. Uh, so he's like atoning for, like, obviously the events of Yakuza 4, despite the fact that he didn't do the events of Yakuza 4, so I don't know what he's doing. Uh, so we're going to hopefully get everybody, like, gathered together for this combo. I know you're still alive, so get up. Um, <laughs> watching, no one's rushing over to me, which is unfortunate. Thank you. Ideally, yeah. Ideally, I would have like a lot of enemies like rushing to me, but I really do not right now. That was a nice double, just because the aim of the game here is like trying to get as many doubles as possible, or more if possible. But it's not that. Yeah. All the so, enemies kind of like Kiryu's part is really weak here. Yeah. So for Saijima, where whereas Kiryu basically had one combo, one special move, and one infinite. All of Saijima's like combo reds are actually pretty varied in this game, and uh, so the the move you're seeing right now is basically his AOE uh, hits multiple enemies, and it's really good for like the fights. With. <laughs> I don't know. How that, I don't know how he ended on. up over there. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> Yeah, so he's got his AOE attack. He also has his a uh, his a uh, triple triple light attack. That's basically his like go to for bosses. Um, and then there's like the most useful one, which is actually his light heavy, which uh, knocks down enemies even while they're on the ground. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of that, uh, hopefully in this in this part, assuming that uh, all the fights go well. So surprise, we're back in prison. Um, if you liked the Yakuza 4 prison sequence that took 10 minutes, boy, do we have a treat for you. Um, 
a prison sequence that lasts like 30 minutes what? instead. No. So. It's, so. Like, it's like 30... It's like yeah, 30, it 30 minutes long. of prison and then 20 minutes of something else. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then 25 yeah. minutes of uh, the actual city that we're supposed to be in. Yep. But now we're just like kind of like walking around, talking to our fellow cellmates. Yeah. And then we'll run into a one very particular boy in this <laughs> in this uh, prison, and it's our boy. Oh, okay, get to him fast enough. I wish I had this much sex. If I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah. So, like, despite what you're seeing here, like, this is very fast text skipping, but there's so much text that it ends up being much longer than basically any other game before and after it. Hey, there he is. This is Baba. Baba is here. Uh, Baba is convicted felon of murder. Uh, but look, and Baba him. is you. Good. Yeah, it could not a fly. Look at him. Uh, this <laughs> is uh, allies of a guy called Kugihara. Uh, would you believe in prison there are some shady people up to no good? What a surprise. Um, um, we'll learn about Kugihara in a bit. But essentially, we're going to get a scene where they take Saijima off to get beaten up. Saijima is not retaliating in any way because he wants to, you know, wants to serve his time in prison. And we meet Kosaka, the actual warden here, who, surprisingly, for a Yakuza game, this guy's actually pretty clued in. He's actually not too bad. Um, he what? even says to Saijima, why don't you fight back? Like, you can. And, you know, Saijima's like, no, nope, not gonna. So Kosaka's actually on Saijima's side here, which is, like, a rarity. So... Osaka, another. All, all the Yakuza 5 side characters are are, are really like likable and yeah. well developed. Yeah, agreed. And then we just go back to our cell after we've served Solitary. Um, even though we were the ones that got beat up. It was for our own protection. Baba is brooding. So, Himura gets a great idea. He has a map. Now, he has a map of a city called Sukumino. And he's like, I'm going to regale you all with a wonderful tale. We're going to call it like ghost spirit tale watching crap. Um, <laughs> crap part was added by me. Uh, uh, if you'll see everything is very blue. Uh, surprise, it's not an Instagram filter. This is the past. And you'll also see we imagined our hair back, which as somebody that is politically challenged, boy, I wish that was how it worked. We're going to head over to a couple of objectives in this place. In the original version on PS3, uh, you can see at the very end of the street, uh, the grey light, that was bright white. Uh, if you've ever played the OG Dark Souls with uh, that lava area whose name I forget, it was as bright as that. It was, hor it was horrible. But Tsukamino is going to be our main city. Now, weirdly, as you can probably tell, this is a dream sequence. You are probably wondering what any of this has to do with the main plot. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they needed to think of a. They basically needed to think of a way for Saijima to gain experience and uh, and have something to do while in prison. Because of course, it's a Yakuza game. You you can't just sit around and do nothing all day. So this is their idea of something to do for Saijima. So we're kind of living through Himura's life, but it's as Saijima, and this is the weird part. The stuff that we do with Kaguya here actually takes over the, the main hostess stuff. That's so weird. You can yeah, tell because it's not an Instagram filter at this point. <laughs> yeah, so the like the filter base, the lack of a filter basically indicates that all of this is suddenly real. Yeah. Mm. So, thankfully, uh, Tap routed out all of the dialogue for this bit to figure out what the quickest bits of dialogue are. Not necessarily the best ones, but the quickest. And if you remember, obviously I'm being yeah, careful because the PC version uh, that we haven't mentioned here yet uh, doesn't have a delay on some of these menus like taxiing and these menus. So you can very quickly go back into these menus and accidentally pick like the wrong option, which for taxiing is obviously an issue because money is a very big issue on certain characters. <coughs> Side uh, if it if it help if it helps, I I actually just like continue holding X or and just like wait until I'm hovering over the option to let go, and that that also counts as like confirming that option. Yeah, that is that is actually a lot better. Do something, leave. Make sure you leave. Don't go for another round of dialogue. Um, I mean, you could, but <laughs> we, we for the purposes the of going fast, we must we must leave. <laughs> 
And you'll see that Kaguya's rank is going to raise here, which again, that sh sh shouldn't be a thing. It's a ghost ward. <laughs> ghost cavalry girl, what are you doing? <laughs> But yeah, basically this is supposed to give you backstory on Hemera. Don't ask how this is backstory on Hemera. It just is. It's, it's quotation marks important. Uh, now, unfortunately, this comes up to uh, a very unfortunate part of the run. So we're going to head over to karaoke. Now, if you remember what Rebel was saying during Yakuza 3, the vast majority of Yakuza runs have skippable minigames. And unfortunately, the skippable minigame in this is indeed... Karaoke. You can skip every mini game in this, and that's actually going to be vital to save 45 minutes in the speed run in about an hour's time from now. Uh, we'll see why. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah. And what's really unfortunate is that Kage, I think, actually has the best song, and yeah, and of course, Saijima as well. Yeah. Yeah, I would not disagree with that. So uh, Saijima here is imagining that he's hungry all of a sudden because, you know, <laughs> you can't be, <laughs> you, you can't really be hungry when, unless you're imagining it in this world. Sorry, you go, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, we just go to eat at like the closest place that makes like, the, the difference is obviously it's fast. That's why we do it. Um, oh, I wanted to, oh, I wanted to add, um. In in New Game Plus, you actually do use uh, you actually do use like the boost from the food, and the problem with this segment is that it actually yeah. depletes most of your health. Whereas Saijima has like a huge health bar, like in the end game, uh, it, it gets depleted to basically that amount. So you actually do need to like fill up, like with all of the items, just so that you can get your your boost back to back to full. It's really yeah. weird and interesting, but also really weird. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point because you have um, Tatsuya's buffs, don't you? Yes, you do. They they nice. carry over for some reason. I I don't know why. <laughs> also, for some reason, we imagined a fight spawn because Himura said so. Thanks, appreciate it. So we're gonna grab this scooter, and as you can see, this scooter is very good for hitting multiple enemies and for high damage. Ideally, it would have enemies like stack a bit more together, which is what I'm kind of hoping for. But they're honestly not right now. If you could like, yeah, get a bit more closer together. There we go. It's more like it. And at some point it goes down to the wheel and we just drop that. Yeah, so those items are really good because they it's not just a motorcycle, it's also a broken motorcycle, which means you can still use it even when it's broken. And they do more damage than most of what Saijima can do at this very moment. So we're going to be picking up a lot of them. And actually, using them more often also levels up our weapons. So that's not something we really talked about in Kiryu's yeah. part because he doesn't use it too much. But for Saijima, who wields scooters, basically, um, he can actually level up his damage if we uh, use, utilize the scooters well enough. So it is vitally important that we use them as much as possible just to get that little extra boost so that we you know, deal with uh, future fights a lot more easily. Yeah, as Ryu is saying, like the, the new weapon system in Yakuza 5 makes it so that most of your one-handed weapons and even guns are actually weaker than in previous iterations. But once again, your two-handed weapons, much like most Yaks games, are just amazing. They, they always do a huge amount of damage, no matter the game. So we obviously utilize them as much as we can. And obviously with Saijima, it's a lot easier. He has a lot of them. And so, he's also he's also yeah. built he's also literally built different. He is the <laughs> only he's the only character that can wield scooters like that. So, yeah, he can rip out like when we get to Sukumino proper spoilers uh, in about <laughs> forty five minutes. Uh, he can actually wield the he can actually wield the um, this way first, please. Uh, he can wield uh, the giant electrical boxes that are on the ground. Mm, yeah. um, we actually have to go and speak to specific NPCs and specific parts here. We have technically names for most of these parts. The first place we were saw our uh, cellmates, we call that the Baba Bench. Mostly because, you know, that's yeah. where we met Baba and we need a name for that place. Uh, this old mm. guy right here is hyper important. He's actually, um, he's actually somebody that, like, he's not, like, obviously one of the, the cops that run the place. He is somebody behind the scenes that runs the place. He knows everything. So we called it the old man bleachers because of that. And then we basically distinguish stuff based on this fence and the signs. But apparently, Baba has murdered someone. Or stabbed someone. Um, we don't believe that. We think Baba was set up. Uh, we're going to go and find out if Baba is innocent. You're going to get a lot of crappy Baba is jokes, I'm afraid, folks.
<laughs> yeah, don't don't get, don't get us wrong. We love our boy. In fact, uh, he's so well loved by the yeah. community that even like his uh, his act his actor was potentially hyped up. Like he like he was uh, yeah. he was involved like not involved. He was like uh, he just wanted to join in like the discussion like regarding LED Gaiden, which is coming out later this year. Yeah. Uh, but he's he's unfortunately doesn't seem to be par a part of the game. He's just there for fun. But everyone got a little bit too hyped when <laughs> when he showed up. <laughs> yeah, even I was like, because like he he joined for like one of the radio shows that I just do, and it's like, yes, oh, that's why, it, yeah. why are you here? Like he got replaced <laughs> from the LED Shin, and it's just like he was like one of the most surprising like comebacks. It was just like, all right, but no, he was just there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this next part we're also gonna have to do it in the very specific order. We're trying to find out who the chisel that Baba had belonged to. Yeah, so Himura, Himura gets the wonderful idea of, of doing that instead of just trying the impossible task that is proving he's innocent. Uh, because he is actually a former detective that ended up in jail because of a bribe. Please don't ask me as well why I keep panning the camera down here. There's no civilians, there's no fight spawns. I just do it out of, you know, because we've been doing it for the rest of the we've, game. <laughs> we've been traumatized. We apologize. <laughs> We get to the. We're about to get to the riveting gameplay part of Sidemen's first chapter. Yeah. So this whole time, like, if you were playing yeah. this game normally, you'd probably be only be here by like the thirty-minute mark, maybe. So this is the most that. This is basically the most that you do. Well, actually, I don't think we're quite there yet. But yeah, the, <laughs> this is the most that you do in in all those thirty minutes. It looks like I'm walking weirdly. It's because we have to walk when we get close to like the two people that we have to interact with here. Otherwise, the game will penalize us and pull us back a bit. Yeah, it works the same way as the as like not aggroing the fight spawns. Either move slow or pump the the R1 button. So the old timer needs us to create a distraction so that he can go and find out who obviously the chisel belonged to. So. He's given us something to go and take to one of the guards, or he will give us something to go and take to one of the guards in a second. Whilst we're discussing, obviously, that it came from Leather Working, which is one of the places where Cookie Harrow was working. What a surprise. And this is where we learn uh, Oshima's backstory. He is actually a former master thief. Never caught, but turned himself in because... Uh, because he found out that his wife cheated on him. Sorry, there's like there's a lot of like backstory on these, on these is, side yeah. characters for some for some reason. I I don't know. It's like ingrained I, I, in my memory. I do like them. Like I do like the characters in this bit. It's just this bit's like pacing is just really off. <laughs> well, it, it's not off. It's just very slow. Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna give the mystery envelope to the policeman. And then we get Well, we're gonna like pretend to give it to him. And then we're going to get the most riveting piece of gameplay that you will see today in Yakuza 5. Uh, we're gonna get a reverse chase section, where much like earlier with Rebel in Yakuza 3, you're getting chased by the police. So are we! And I'm gonna, you know, run the circle for 60 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, so they can't catch up to you when you move exactly like this. You could also be a little more interactive and actually run across the entire prison, but it's much easier to just do this. Yeah. <laughs> and if you get if you actually do get caught by the police, the timer stops and you waste like 10 seconds trying to get out or potentially uh, get a get like a game over because you run out of health potentially. So, uh, it's a nice jazz music at least. Oh yeah, that's that's not the last you'll hear you'll hear of it either. Play it safe and just run around now. <laughs> you'll also notice, kind of unfairly, if you look at our HP, because it, we're in the cold right now, our HP is draining during this. Yeah, they didn't think of a stamina like met they didn't have like a stamina bar. Actually, I don't think they ever did, but yeah, they use your health as your stamina, and that also depletes in New Game Plus, so it eats away even more at your food bonus, which is really annoying. <laughs> uh. Thanks to that, the old man has found out that, surprise, the chisel belongs to Kugihara. We 
we do believe that Cookie Hatter has set up Baba. And you'll there's get to no see how other, There's no buses. other evidence to, to oh, refute no. that point. Nope. Oh. Yep. None at all. Yeah, we're about to about to have our first boss fight with Sajima, and yeah, you will see just how much of a physical powerhouse Sajima is in this game. Unfortunately, yeah. for Cookie Hara, he's our first target. <laughs> yeah, so with with Saijima, most of your boss fights will start with a grab and a throw. Uh, that's because for some reason most bosses just won't even try to escape your very first grab and throw. Uh, so you hit him, so you hit, ideally you throw him once and then do that light heavy combo I mentioned earlier and then use a heat action and that usually takes off uh, most of his life. So, so Saijima for what it's worth actually has very consistent combat if you can pull it off. Yep. So the whole point of this is that Cookie Hara has been trying to get uh, Saijima to retaliate so that he will extend, obviously, his time in, obviously, in prison. Don't get any parole. Again, much like more normal fights, because he's the leader, he goes down. How did that not... Thank you, you weren't there. Thank you, that's why. So, oh. how did that not take care of this guy? Oh, no. oh now we... <laughs> All right, cool. Well. <laughs> All right. Well. well. <laughs> I, I swear that's... he was, like, actually fit the first time. I'm going to have to go back and look at the vault on that one. Yeah, some, sometimes it doesn't kick in right away. And that was just a very rare instance of that. You can Not. chalk that up to marathon oh. unlock. Yeah. Oh my. So, at this point, Kosak is like, hey, you were supposed to go out on parole. Uh, and then he's going to drop the little bit of a bombshell that Majimagoro has been killed. And at this point, Sajima, instead of getting like really sad and brooding, he's actually going to take it surprisingly well. Because he doesn't believe that Majim is dead. Well, with the hindsight of future games. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> but basically, Kosaka has asked both us and Baba to meet him specifically outside. Again, Kosaka actually being a decent guy in this game and is like, all right, I'm busting you out of prison. I'm fairly certain as a security guard, you're not supposed to bust the inmates out of prison. But Kosaka actually knows what's going on. And he knows that Cookie Hara is doing this intentionally to stop Saijima from getting out. And even though Kosaka called the both of us out here to this bit, he's also going to say, actually, this isn't too secure, so we should probably run elsewhere. But why'd you call us here? Why didn't you call us elsewhere? <laughs> so here's your one little bit of gameplay. If you Obviously, if you're playing the game, there's a lot of story. So there's, there's a save point right there. And actually, thinking about it, that's the only save point we get before the end of this chapter. Because we have the dream sequence, and then we have the set piece, and then we have the snowmobile, and then we have Dave. <laughs> we'll so, get to who Dave is in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but now that this this place is apparently more secure, um, Kosak is going to give us a key, at which point Saijin has been in prison for so long. He has no idea what a key looks like or what it does. Uh, and he's going to ask what this is, and it's going to be a key for a snowmobile outside. Which is how we're going to make our escape with Baba. Why is Baba here? More we'll take it. No, no. He just is. Don't worry about it. Yeah, looking back, it's actually kind of suspicious. It's like, why is he lumped into this? Why isn't yeah. any of the why aren't any of his other cellmates involved? A bit fishy. But that's the oh yeah, this is like one of the very few like audio lines that you just cannot skip whatsoever. Yep. <laughs> the the game is a little picky on or a little uh, erratic on what you can skip and what you cannot. So, yeah, it's kind of like the, I mean, it is one of the early Axe games, but it's like one of the early Axe games where you can skip some, like, text cutscenes with pressing start, like, you know, Zero and OG-ish in, uh, Lad-ish as well, I guess. Um, but it's not clear on, like, which ones and the why. I hope you all enjoyed Ghost Tsukumino the first time around, because who wants to go again? That one? <laughs> tough. Going again. Got the hair back. Again, really wish that's how it was. So, we're going to go and carry on our date with Kaguya. Uh, and get more of Imra's backstory, where you also get more of Imra's backstory in a sub-story when we actually get to the real, non-Instagram-filtered Tsukumino. Unfortunately, when we get to the real Tsukumino, we also get real fight spawns as well. Again, I'm not panning the camera down for fight spawns here, it's just for civilian purposes. Yeah, as mentioned before, they can be brick walls, and sometimes they can be invisible brick walls. Ah, oh, ambitious. Good summation for this game. Very ambitious. Yeah, probably. For the most part. Yeah, 
probably the biggest to to uh, up until uh, infinite wealth, which will probably be the biggest. Yeah. So you get to pick which mini game you want to play. Surprise! You heard me say it already. Mini game. You get to win it. <laughs> so Kagura actually wins darts because of that, and that's actually a vital, important thing coming up in about an hour's time. Uh, because we skip the mini games, that counts as us losing quotation marks the mini games. Yeah, and losing will have severe ramifications. It should have severe ramifications <laughs> for the plot, but it won't. So now we actually get to an actual important plot bit that stems from these Ghost Tsukumino bits. Uh, this is going to be more of Himura's backstory. Himura wasn't dealing with the Yakuza, Himura was dealing with the Mafia. There's a difference. <laughs> so he's, actually gonna... he's actually supposedly really good at fighting off the Mafia. Supposedly, yeah. Well, how many there are? Um, even in Ghost Tsukumino, yes, you can get hit by the ghost cars. Hello. <laughs> So basically, like he, at this point, like Hero's like he was trying to be taken out by the mafia because they knew he was like exploring them and what they were doing. We're gonna head to a place called Ramen Village. This is actually in the real life uh, Sukumino uh, that this uh, this game is based off. It's down this little alleyway here coming up because usually when you see little alleyways like this on the map, you can't actually go down them, but this one you can. We we'll definitely a... won't. We definitely won't revisit this place later. <laughs> nope. Oh, hey, look, you'll see in this uh, very small enclosed space, there's this wonderful little scooter, which we may or may not have used before. Actually, there's two. Nice. There's several. I think I think this I think this lot is actually entirely filled with scooters. <laughs> it is a bike heaven, and we do like it for that. So hopefully hey, we look. get... Invisible... <laughs> Imaginary Mafia. Yep. Target practice for scooters. Guy as well. I'm hoping that everyone will gather up in time to get there. This guy, which they didn't, it's a shame. Yeah, so, oh. so he actually got the he actually got the most the uh, he got one of the more important upgrades in that, which was the um, which was like the in the durability increase. So now he can use uh scooters like even more often than he normally would. So, and that counts for both the. Unbroken scooters and the <laughs> and the broken scooters and the even more broken ones for that matter because the scooters for some reason count as three items. So we have a so we have an absolutely massive army of inmates uh, to fight through. So and we unfortunately we do not bring scooters to prison, so we are stuck just using his uh, standard uh, double light heavy combo. Once we've taken down a good couple, the Lope will get a very lovely mid-fight attack, much like we have a Kiryu. There we go. Attack. That was a bad start. I had a lot of enemies just move away from me. So ideally, after we take out like the majority of the enemies in this with just this cutscene here, uh, we ideally want to take them out and hopefully go towards the gate at the end. Uh, enemies will also be going after Baba. They do drop some healing items or ointments. We don't need those. Uh, we used to also utilize... Um, before we do the new route, we also utilized some of the pills that they drop. Uh, we used to use like the iron pipes. There's iron and like wooden sticks. The iron pipes we used to use for the heat attacks. But, uh, uh, oh yeah, up, uh, oh, yeah you, uh, upgrade the upgrade side to my... Oh yeah, oh wow, I actually forgot. Thanks, appreciate it. Uh, we're going to get uh, tech up to level uh, 8 for Tiger Jaws, and we're going to get soul up to level 4 for stability. That's going to be super useful coming up. Yeah, I was wondering why he was getting knocked down even in heat, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, good, good shout. I forgot that, that's bad. That would have been very bad coming up for uh, the boss of this chapter. So... As we were saying earlier in uh, Curious Part with Monagra Isa, you can actually have your NPCs be useful uh, in fights. Baba can actually delete enemies if you get, like, nice and lucky. Which it certainly looked like he was uh, trying to there. It's quite nice. So we're going to head off this way. Uh, we have to go through this gate to also get to the exit gate. Yeah, this is close enough here with that, but I think the actual set pieces wasn't great. 
So, exit over there. Got to make a run for it. Uh, these inmates, if it isn't apparent, these are allies of Cookie Hara. They are start trying to stop Saitama from obviously getting out. These guys can be a little annoying because they can guard. Get off that one. Thanks, Yoshi. Once again, Yoshi not paying his taxes. That's why he's in jail. <laughs> Oh these, oh, these guys have more health, though. Probably the, the light heavy looks better. Or the, the light double heavy. Oh, I love guarding enemies. Ah, <laughs> uh, guarding. <laughs> I realized I was still playing the axe of free. <laughs> yeah, it, I think it's like for some reason, like it's just Yakuza 3 and 5. Like for some reason they just have increased blocking capabilities. Uh, you might, I, I, I noticed it while uh, uh, in the first part where Kiryu did a full combo and he was like still block like the enemy was like still blocking for some reason. Like, that'll happen even on easy difficulty. It's just it's just the way that these games work. Yeah, so, sadly. Alright, you all know what we're gonna do with Cookie Hara, but I'm actually gonna try and position him a bit closer to Baba, because if we get exceedingly lucky, he's focusing on something else, Baba can actually take out Cookie Hara. If you get exceedingly lucky. Go get Aaron, please. So the uh, nice thing about doing that is that, hey, bud, you can actually then build up your heat and just do it again to Cookie Hara, at which point he will be pretty much almost done. He'll need a little bit more. Which I'm just going to stop him. Just get him quite heavy. Oh, no. <laughs> Baba just got taken out. Excellent. Baba didn't help today. <laughs> Thanks, Baba. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think it was it was either me or X Play who had like a, a like a really good like help like really good help from Baba. Like he actually just deleted Kugihara like almost by himself. It was glorious, but that also never really happens. Yeah. Also, surprise! Himura's got a gun. We gave Himura a gun. Turns out his entire backstory that we learned from Ghost of Kamino was actually real. He wasn't over exaggerating. The man used to be a detective and knows how to use a gun. So he saves us from Cookie Hara, who's definitely dead. And then we get the snowmobile part, which... I'm sure. Hopefully <laughs> yeah, doesn't snow. have any problems. Yeah, I, I didn't have a good one yesterday in practice, which is unfortunate. I have no idea. I feel like the physics of this work differently uh, from the PS3 OG to this one because of the higher FPS. Because, like, you'll see at certain parts of this, the snowmobile will just start bucking forward. That's not me doing that. That's just the snowmobile. Uh, I'm trying to yeah. take certain parts to the left to avoid these jumps. I have to avoid trees as well. And worse things. I don't like to lose that over. Alright. <laughs> yeah, this snowmobile is a little bit hard to maneuver when you want to both go fast and avoid everything at the same time. Somehow these guys are just waiting here for us. Somehow they, they like, somehow they all knew we were breaking out of prison tonight. Hmm, very suspicious. And now, unfortunately for us, these guys are going to start throwing Molotov cocktails at us. So ideally, we don't want to be like too close to the walls because all the trees, because like that can actually like AOE hit us, but. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Again, that's not me ramming R2 to do that animation, it just happens. Also, if you get really unlucky with uh, with these walls, uh, you can potentially infinite damage yourself and like basically lose all your health. It can be really finicky sometimes. Yes, we are drifting on a snowmobile to get under these trees. <laughs> Don't question it, it's Yakuza. <laughs> Don't question the fact that some of these gaps in this bridge are larger than that snowmobile as well. That bridge is important for later. Oh, thanks. Great. Nothing I can do about Whoa. that. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, they are on to you today. Yeah. <laughs> Real mean today. Now we have to watch out for rocks, which, as you can probably guess, are real hard to see in the dark. My monitor has a real bad color problem at the minute, so I can't see very well when things are dark like this. <laughs> Gotta boost the contrast to, to 80%. <laughs> Every time I do that now, everything goes pink. Which isn't oh, a bad thing, but it's... Yeah, this monitor is going. 
I did my PC curse, but so is this one. Uh, we are supposed to speed up. Again, I'm not ramming the button, I'm holding it, but sometimes, you know, that happens. I'm not even, honestly, I'm not even sure what you're supposed to do there. I think, I think you're supposed to hold it, but like, also, like, why are they telling you to speed up when that's as fast as you can possibly go? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, now we get to meet Dave. This is Dave. Full name, Yama Orochi, aka Very Big Bear. <laughs> Wouldn't be a Yaks game without fighting an animal. Yep. The thing with Dave is that you can't actually hit Dave unless you hit them from the front. You'll also see that I will try and alternate at times between uh, light, uh, single light and triple, so that I can keep, obviously, Yama uh there as much as I can without being like a sort of like this. So you can see there I'm like not getting down. That's a bad phase one. I'll let Yama Orochi actually get away. You're supposed to be in your QTE phase. Uh, hello? <laughs> All right. <Sorry. laughs> Bears do things bear ways. Bear is suddenly gone. Stealth bear. I don't know how you're a stealth bear when you're this size, but... Uh. I mean, to be fair, bears can run faster than you. Sure. Well. You actually turned? Usually, usually <laughs> young Orochi just jumps back. Like that. Oh yeah, the knockback is preventing you from getting extra hits in. I, I, listen, I, like, can you stop showing me your bum? Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hey, excuse you. Excuse you, you're in QT range. Hey, thanks. Thanks. Bears. Fun fact, you can fight a second bear inside your part if you do a side story, which in all, in all sub stories is actually like really good uh, because you actually utilize that for the money issues that Saijima is about to very much run into. Surprise, Saijima leaving prison doesn't have any money. Well, Stop. sort of. Yeah. <laughs> About to get money, but unfortunately we're also about to uh, sleep for about 20 minutes. Speaking of sleep, where's Baba? Baba is gone. Baba is bear food. Baba is up the mountain. <laughs> this is Okudera. He saved us from Dave. Uh, Okudera here has been hunting Dave for a long time. We are now in a very remote mountain in the village. It has snowed so heavily that we cannot leave the remote mountain. Not that we would want to leave Baba for any reason. Cough. <laughs> so we're basically gonna learn about like the the villagers here i actually like i genuinely and i think it's the same for you as well i like really like this part casually but in the speed run even though in the prison everything slowed down now everything slows to a crawl because we are going to learn how to hunt over three different parts although weirdly <laughs> enough there is actually speed tech to the last part uh -uh. There's a, there's a bit of speed tech in, in, in all of it, but it won't be that much faster. You're still going through hunting in Yakuza 5. Yeah. Uh, and then we got this guy who's one of the villagers. Uh, I believe his name is Nishina. Uh, he is just like, hey, don't leave. You're not supposed to leave. Don't provoke the bear. Because uh, the bear's been getting closer and closer to the village. They've been struggling to obviously go hunting for food and stuff like that. But we're going to go provoke the bear. And let Saijima just doing what Saijima wants to do. <laughs> not even a bear will stop him. Hello, Sakurai. Thank you for not, <laughs> thank you for not activating there. Uh, this is Sakurai. Uh, he is going to tell us, you know, hey, you shouldn't go up to the mountain. And as you'll see via the uh, dialogue choice, uh, it is going to be, I'm going up to the mountain. So Unfortunately, selecting... So here's the thing with, like, most Yaks games. Whenever you get a yes-no choice like this one coming up, uh, the no choice is not an actual option. You will just keep regurgitating the text box until you say yes. But unironically enough, there is one yes-no text box in this series that you can actually say no to, and it's in this game. But it's in the next part, so we'll wait until then and let uh, Tap and Ryu describe that part. <laughs> But yeah, we're just getting like a, a little like overview of the village. There's three little areas. Uh, there's the big area there. There's this area up here, which is Nishina's house. Uh, this is Nishina's wife. Uh, she's going to help us out uh, because she thinks her the husband is being a bit, you know, a bit mean. Obviously, they're not they're not too fond of outsiders because before they've had outsiders come in and provoke obviously the animals. Blah blah blah. You know the drill. Uh, and there's also a smaller little area uh, that we don't get introduced to until we're about to leave. 
Uh, that is where Sidemus Move Master is. No. You will yeah. believe that hermits on the mountain can fly. <laughs> Pull yes. yeah. So every every character, well, yeah, every I think actually yes, every every single character does have like a move master that you can learn more moves from. We're not getting any of them because they just take way 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 too long to get, and they don't really help the speed run in any way. Like certainly not enough to like make up for the time loss trying to get in in the first place. Eh? Honestly, a shame. I think, like, thinking of, like, all the Yakuza runs, I don't think there's a single move master that we intentionally get. Yeah, and most even of the, the time... Ones that, yeah. And the ones that try to pull you in, like, uh, like Bacchus and Yakuza Zero. Yeah. Like, you, you don't go to him because none of his moves are useful enough. Alright. Personal tips. To go fast up the mountain, you roll in the mountain. Uh, don't do that. Probably gonna get frostbite. We're gonna do our best Sonic the Hedgehog impression and just keep rolling. <laughs> Or, or best Dark Souls impression. Yep. So you can actually go faster than this in this bit, but not until we get a specific upgrade that will happen at a very specific point. Uh, you'll see our HP is going down at the top because we're on a snowy mountain. It's warm and cold. Uh, we actually are able to heal that with food later on, but we're not going to because we're just going to get out of these bits so fast that we don't need to. But this is your introduction to the hunting minigame. We're not going to do any hunting right now. We're just looking for, obviously, tracks. We can see bear tracks. These are apparently bear tracks. They seem a bit small for bear tracks, in my opinion, but they are bear tracks. And there's a couple of things around, like the Jizo statues on the side there that you can pray to. You get a whole bunch of, like, little, like, secondary objectives for this bit. It's honestly really cool. Like, it's genuinely really cool. You get a really good reward at the end of it, but it only really helps the hunting minigame. And you're already finished? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, because we do these runs so often, and because some of these runs, like, you know, Yaks 5, are quite long, we do pay attention to silly things in cutscenes. So, in this next cutscene, if you look at uh, Baba on the floor, you see coming around this corner a second. Uh, you'll notice that Baba in the remaster is actually awake. And you'll see if you look at the ground in the middle here, you'll see Baba's eyes are open and closed. <laughs> Thanks, Baba. Yeah. It, it, well, it, porting effectively porting these games to newer to newer generation hardware kind of mucked up the the game in subtle ways. That you would only notice when you've run the game multiple times. <laughs> we have to we have to find some entertainment in some of these long scenes, with, <laughs> especially with like Saijima. Oh How yeah, long, obviously he has downtime for. Yeah, there there are a couple in my part that I'm going to show off just because of the absurdity of <laughs> of it of it all. Yeah, fair. Also, actually, Doctor T Chops is right. Uh, we do get a uh, Kamaki gun reversal in K1, which actually is useful in like one place in the run. I think that's the only. I think that's the only instance. So we get some experience. One thing as well with Saijima. Um, I'm assuming this is deliberate. Every character can go up to level 20 and then get lim limit broken up to 25. With Saijima, it really feels like you get experience a lot faster. And I just wonder whether they just give you more experience because you don't really play as Saijima that much. Like by the time we get to Tsukumino, we can be like level like nine or ten. Like, you get a lot of experience. Yeah, what levels do do in this game is are basically just give you points for your techniques and increase your health. They, your levels actually do, don't really affect your damage in any way unless, like, unless it's, like, a, unless you get an ability that, like, helps you increase your, your damage or you, like, gain a technique that does more damage. So... Yeah, the levels really don't matter too much in this run, especially when you can get yeah. most of them, like, in most of the abilities you need in just two upgrades. Yeah, we're just going back and forth. We're trying to get proper snow gear and a gun to go up the mountain so we can actually be useful to Okudera. And like, obviously, Ignition is like, no, not like you, not like Okadera. I don't allow it. And then Ignition's wife's going to be all like, eh, yeah, just go back to Sakurai. <laughs> he'll, he'll give you the stuff. But they're very, they're very closed off to outsiders. Um, 
For reasons that you find out why, if you actually do the hunting side story. Uh, actually, I think they tell they they, they tell you right there that uh, Okudera Okudera is also was also an outsider. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I thought they saved that for the side story, but it's been a while since I've done they, it. They they kind they kind of reveal like bits and pieces of it, but you don't get like the really meaty stuff until you finish it. Now we have a gun. Now this is a yak as a speedrun, all right. <laughs> So we're heading out. We have to be very careful here as the tutorial box after this one is going to say, hey, you should take some deer meat with you. So we do have to do a little bit of menuing here to get that deer meat into our equipment. And deer meat is going to be important. This is the point where you can actually lose the speedrun. Weirdly enough, you, you wouldn't think that this bit of all bits is, you know, that dangerous, but this is. There is something that we have to do. It's not hard to do, but there is something that we just must not mess up. Yeah for, for, <laughs> yeah, for what it's worth, Yakuza 5 is actually one of the safest runs you can do. Like, most thing, most bad things that can happen to you just lose you time. They don't necessarily end your run. However, this part in particular is the probably the most important part. Uh, otherwise, you just cannot go through, go through the game nearly as fast. Yeah. As we alluded to earlier during Curious Part, two characters have big money problems. Saijima is one of them. But this is the bit where we can actually get rid of those money problems. So now that we have a gun, we're going to get taught, obviously, the basics of hunting. If you crouched, you're more stealthed and, you know, the animals won't notice you. Uh, so we're going to do our best crouched impression. I don't know if doing this is stealthy or not, but that certainly seems to work for a <laughs> Kadara. Woo! Load the gun, and then we're going to be looking towards that rock on the right. So, I'm going to teach us how to shoot and shoot this rock, and then we will be down to one uh, slug left. But that's going to be important because actually the game's going to reload for us, which is nice. Yeah. We don't have to waste time doing the reload animation. Actually, found out pretty recently that you don't even need to aim your gun there. Like you can just. You can just hit fire the gun, and it should just hit the, the boulder anyway. Yeah, it should put you, hopefully, in position wise to shoot just the rock. Yeah. You'll also notice we're still rolling. Uh, you can roll past Okudera. That's a bad thing. The game will get very angry and say, hey, good back for him. <laughs> Yeah, if you're if you're if you're too fast while while rolling, uh, you kind of uh, you kind of lose track of Okudera over time. So one thing you should. So one thing to mitigate that is to be standing while you're while you're rolling, because otherwise he'll just be on crouching speed and not move nearly as fast. All of this is lulling us into a false sense of security, by the way, because we haven't had to deal with you know randomized fight spawn since Saijima's first chapter, and not since we were in Camarocho. <laughs> just a nice, nice, calm roll up the mountain. Now, these are obviously deer tracks. So now we have the tracks of deer, the game is just doing like the very basics of, hey, follow those tracks, find the deer and take out the deer. And the deer are the ones that we need to take out for, obviously, money. So we need to take out at least two. The game will obviously make us do one of them. You can still mess it up, uh, but we need to take out at least two. Uh, there are deer as well that have the, I guess they're doe, uh, that have the antlers. Uh, the antlers sell for a lot more, but in terms of routing, uh, what you tap and X-Play have done in the past has gotten us enough money that we don't need to go for one of the animals. So what we are going to try and do is get two deer in this part. That's a little harder than it sounds. Uh, I don't know if you need to reload for this bit. Nah, or if, they give you the, or, or if they give you the, uh, the ammo. Yeah, it gives me the ammo here. There we go. It's weird, I don't know why it reloads you there. So I roll forward four times, do my stealthy crouch. Do the first, and then hopefully get the second. That just saves us time from having to reload for the next deer, and then obviously you know, try and take out the next deer as well. And I mean, if you want to be extra drop. safe, you can, if you want to be extra safe, you can go for a third deer. Yeah. Yeah. I should be good. Yeah, good. At worst, if somehow I mess something up with my taxi, and I can just go do the sub story where I punch a bear. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> I, I shouldn't do because I'm taking my I'm taking my taxi menus a lot a lot slower today considering how my controls been messing up recently. 
Now this bit yeah, is a bit of a pain uh, because of obviously not shooting one of these deer. Uh, one of the deer with the antlers is going to try round me up the backside. Um, sometimes they can go for Okadera instead, which we're really hoping for. But yeah, one of these is going to get angry because it's trying to obviously protect its flock and that's just going to knock us to the ground, so we just have to be a little bit careful. You cannot roll to the right of the tree at the... Uh, it's either this one or the next one. They're going after me. No, there you are. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I just lose us a tiny bit of time, but it's, it's whatever. If they go after a cadaver, it's just nice. You just keep rolling. And then you laugh I at actually don't think I've, I actually don't think I've ever avoided getting rammed by the by the deer. I had it happen yesterday, and I, I don't know how. I actually genuinely have no idea how. I think it's like <laughs> that situation with the um, Chinada's forklift where, you know, I managed to not get hit by it somehow. <laughs> it's one of those rare occurrences that can just very, very extremely rarely happen. Yeah, I think I've only I think I've only done that myself like once. Yeah, that's the, is not something that we count for ever. <laughs> All right, so this bit it doesn't really matter if you transfer stuff back to the item box, but it makes menuing a little easier if they're in the item box. And now we get the new skill Ice Walk raises walking speed in the snow. Now we stop acting like Sonic the Hedgehog. But we do give back over the deer meat that we were given by um, Kimio. Then we'll be going back up the mountain one last time. Yes, we're going up <laughs> one more time. We have to learn how to uh, snare trap rabbits and marlins. Also get a special guest cameo that's going to lead into some potential speed tech. Hoping. <laughs> yep. I've had bad luck with it recently. Haven't had... Uh, and have a certain someone behave. What's also kind of interesting about that menu is that in the second one, you absolutely needed meat in your deer meat in your inventory, but in this one, for some reason, you just don't. <laughs> just like, yeah, you're ready now. <laughs> so this guy's important. This guy's called the trader. Surprise. Mm -hmm. That's how we're going to get money, is this guy. Um, when you do the hunting minigame, you'll just get like the carcasses, the fur, and stuff like that. You sell it to him, he gives you money. That was good. This bit is very weird. I probably should have made a safety save just in case. Very rarely this can softlock. I've also, never had it happen to me. But I have heard other people have had it happen to them. But essentially they've had it where, like, not because they're close enough to it, but they've had it where the snare has never gotten uh, the actual, like, the rabbit it's supposed to. Isn't it? Isn't it a step count? It's supposed to be, but I've, I've heard someone say that, like, they weren't standing next to it, um, but they just never had it, like, spawn in. Mm, I've never had it happen to me, but it's like, that, that's worrying. So, all these new blue glowing spots are where we can put our traps. So we're gonna go and put one on this one. We're gonna put one on every single one that's in the area. Uh, but as Ryu was saying, uh, this bit actually has a little bit of uh, speed tech coming up. So, once we've gotten all four of them down, we have to wait until the first one we put down, which is obviously this one, uh, has some game appear in it, which, thankfully, uh, we actually, we for ages we had no idea, like, how it worked, because it was like, sometimes some people would get it fast, and sometimes people would get it really late, and it actually depends on your distance and the step count. It's really weird. Yeah, so, like, when you place the final trap, there's, like, a 25-step counter that you that you need to satisfy and also not be too close to that trap like you can't just like walk in you can't you can't just like walk it back into it right away and and get the and get the snare to the trap something you need to stay a little bit farther back so just run in a circle uh for a, few, a couple of more steps and then it should meet the 25 step counter and go and stand like relatively close this this tree is like a really good marker of like you can go like a little bit past it and then just wait for that to appear over there. Okay. After that, we have one last bit for the hunting. Because enter stage left. Hey. <laughs> so 
Yamaorochi is back, and the bit for this is that Yamaorochi is going for Okudera, and we want Yamaorochi to murder Okudera. Where are you going? Hey. <laughs> what are you doing, <laughs> Dave? What is happening? Dave. What are you doing? Oh, he got, it, he got himself tree. stuck in front of a tree. Wow. At least grab. grab. Okay, so speed tech for this is you're supposed to use the trap site to get Okudera to stand back up. But uh, this ain't going great because Dave decided to don't ram him. Do it again. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> I have not seen that. I have not seen Yamaworshi just decide, I'm out. I've had enough. <laughs> I know you're yeah. speedrunning. I'm going to mess you up. <laughs> yeah, so what Froob just did there is part of speed tech that was found by X Play. So if you interact with this, with the the trap that you with one of the traps that you laid earlier you actually uh, reset both okudera and the bear at the same time so uh, what ends up happening is that you they reset to neutral so uh the bear can once once you're out of the the snare interaction he immediately goes for okudera again and just instantly attacks him um but if you're really lucky and uh, he doesn't get stuck in a tree like that, uh, o uh, the bear just grabs Okudera right away and that also instantly uh, knocks out Okudera. But, you know, it's really hard to, to even, like, or it looks like it's really low odds to even get that grab in the first place. And also, like, just getting stuck in a tree, you're going to encounter, like, that's, like, probably the biggest RNG part for Saijima. But the important thing is we're we're out of it. <laughs> yeah. At this point, we now need to go make our money, which is good because the trader is standing next to the NPC that we have to go speak to to figure out that the taxis are now coming to the village and back again. So we should, with having taken care of two normal deer, have exactly 23,600 yen. That's the guy that tells you about our uh, master. Yeah, nah. He's sort of yelling, stay out of it. <laughs> This guy, I'm gonna make sure that I, I'm gonna do my menu a bit slower here to make sure that I sell everything. Because I had the issue the other day where it didn't sell everything. So we still have the demi in our inventory. These two, these two, this one, this one, and these two. 23,600. Sad that he doesn't buy our ointment. <laughs> we don't need it. <laughs> you will only take what you get from the hunting. And that also includes the <laughs> that also includes the snares that you that you got from Okudera earlier. So, with that, we have just enough money to take every taxi we would want yeah. with Saijima. Yeah. So the only issue is that we need fifty thousand yen on Saijima, and as you've just seen, we have twenty three thousand. Thankfully, that won't be an issue in a couple of minutes' time. Go to town, Baba. Head, Asukimino. This is where the game starts getting a little bit nasty again. Uh, as we were mentioning earlier, uh, there are three really nasty cities and fight spawns in this game. Sukumino is one of them, Kamurocho, and another place called Sotenbori that you'll see very soon, in the next 25 minutes, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs>finally get to see Tsukumino for real. No, no blue Instagram filter. It's a lovely looking place. I do like this place. This is like one of the maps I would love to see in like a future like actual Yakuza game again. Because like having full freedom of movement, it's going to look weird. The bottom part of the map, we can actually walk in the road, but the top part of the map, you can't. That's going to be an issue because of fight spawns. Yeah, so when it's really, the way the game handles this area is really weird. Um, like, it, it, like, without any, like, invisible barriers, it would just be, like, one giant open area, but because this is an older engine, they kind of just block off, like, all the roads. Um, so we have actually, effectively, very limited space in Tsukimino to, to walk around stuff, which is a big problem because there are a few corners in this area that can spawn, like, how many? Like, six? Yes. Six yep. fight spawns in just one corner. So yeah, this is definitely one of the nastiest, uh, one of the nastiest cities for fight spawns. But thankfully, I don't think in this very beginning part with uh, with Baba we run into any of them. Not yeah, until we, yeah, it's not until after we finish talking with Baba that we have to deal with them. 
we're supposed to be heading off to our hideout, but as you will see when we go with Baba, we're going to find a little bit of a sticky situation thanks to that news broadcast that just happened. Uh, obviously, the police are looking for us, and that's actually going to restrict our movement a bit. If you've ever played Yax 4 or you saw Yax 4's run last time with like the police around, it's similar but not quite as restrictive. And there's actually one part where we shouldn't be able to get past a policeman, but we actually can if we just hug the corner, which is nice. Otherwise, yeah. that would be horrible to get past. I did that yesterday. Stop going too far. Stop it. Anyway, Baba's going to run off, uh, and then we have to go to the hideout to find Baba. Uh, we're going to take one of our taxis right here. So we'll go down to the bottom part of the map. We could ideally take more taxis in this part if we had more money, because, weirdly enough, even some parts of this where it would actually be quicker to walk to some places. We actually sometimes taxi because of the fact that, you know, less chance of fight spawns and less nastiness. There's also going to be a substory where I just ran past in a little bit. That substory is a problem because it has a very big hitbox that takes up the entirety of the road. And if there are the squatters nearby, that's an issue because one of them is happening. Yeah, so with this money, it, like it, this money, if you even if you want to take like an extra taxi to be like a little bit faster on PC, it is actually just enough money. So with this money, there is technically no like leeway. Uh, yeah, but you can't you to play it safe. You can just like walk like here and there for uh, like to save on on money just in case you make a mistake. Yeah, you'll see at the end of this that we actually have enough money for one more taxi. You might get confused. That's going to be for the finale. Yes. <laughs> and that part has a very big story <laughs> that also must be avoided at all costs. It is heartbreaking putting six hours into this run and accidentally walking into that sub story and losing two minutes. No. Yeah, Kid. but again, yeah. not necessarily but. run ending. You can still finish the run even if you run into that sub story. It's just a bunch of time loss. Anyway, Baba gives us thirty thousand yen. Thanks, Baba. Appreciate it. That's going to be the rest of the money that we need, obviously, for this bit, as we said, to get to fifty thousand yen. And as soon as we leave our apartment, as I said earlier, hey Tatsuya, stalking all of our protagonists. This is where fight spawns. I just have my controller vibrate. Oh. Yeah, there he is. Already. So, now let's take me no fight spawns. First one is on our right here, so I'm obviously pumping the brakes for this guy. Uh, I'm trying to avoid, obviously, all civilians as well. These three are fine because they can't be a fight. Um, usually when you can cross the road, you can get past these fight spawns with no problems. But, yeah, this is where things are going to get nasty. This is where things are going to get very, very nasty. Uh, and there's not much we can do about it in certain areas. Yeah. Also, also, remember what I said earlier. Is they can just spawn on top of you, including in taxi spots. So, got to be extra careful here. Yeah. One in front of us on the right, who's not a larger light so to correct six. He is going to see when I go past him. Again, once I can get past this corner in one second, determine there's no fight spawns near me, I can go. There was actually one to the right. Yeah. Which that will get despawned in a second because we have to go into Bar Ambitious. You can get them on the sidewalks on either side on this road. I don't think you can get fight spawns down this bit. I might be wrong on that. I've never seen one down here. Neither have I. But we'll play it safe nonetheless. Um so we're trying to we're trying to get in contact. So the whole plot as we're finding out of this game is that Daigo Dojima is trying to make a couple of, you know. Trying to make a couple of alliances with a couple of the different, like, Yakuza, like, clans that are in the area. Or in all the areas that we go to in this game. And the last time that Majima Goro was seen was here. So, we're trying to find their boss to figure out what happened to Majima. And we pay that guy the 50,000 yen so that we don't have to play him in pool. Because pool in the remaster is very nasty. And that guy is actually pretty good at pool. Saves us just a lot of time. And unfortunately, this is the first time we're going to have to run across... The entire city. Yeah, so there's a bunch of objectives that you need to get to, uh, and you can't get them easy. You can't get to them easily by taxiing, so you unfortunately do have to traverse the majority of the town. 
So once again, much like earlier, we pan the camera down to get rid of civilians and just see where the fight spawns are. This guy. Okay. I'm going to have to walk past this guy into the road. The, uh, the squatters are there. Yep. So here's the issue with them. It might not look it. Their hitbox is the entire road. So I'm just making... I, I went very slow there, but I have to make sure I go over this side to avoid them. Mino, stop this. <laughs> I'm definitely being, like, very overly cautious. Please don't be... Okay, he's in a good place if he sees me now. So this is a bad fight spawn location, but it's actually really good where he is. Because this is the spot where you can avoid that policeman. But the issue is that you have to go tight to the left there. I don't like this guy. Okay. But you can actually, obviously, uh, just make, make it so that you can, like, avoid the policeman on the far left. But you can have that fight spawn be on the far left. So him being on the right there was actually really useful. Be careful. Yep, good. There's a little bit of a gap there you can see through. I'm being I'm being so extra careful than I should be. I just do not want to get into fight spawn. Although weirdly enough, they ignore the fact that this guy's model looks like the old guy in the prison. It's it's not the same guy. Um <laughs> Weirdly enough, the uh, Sajimura actually deals with fight spawns and Victory Road really well. Just because Sajimura is just a physical powerhouse. Yeah, he's probably the most versatile of the of the characters. You can see. Yeah, a bit further than that. So in terms of the right. The issue is there can be someone up here, so just being a bit careful. Probably is spawned here yeah, this guy. I didn't know if the guy behind me was actually chasing me or not, but he wasn't, thankfully. Hello, sir. I'm just gonna go this way. You really have to be quite far away from them. And the issue is I can get a fight spawn like around this corner. If you see them, yeah, if you see them yell an expletive at you, that's fine. They're going to stop. This was risky, but I know if I get past that civilian, I could just get past him because he wouldn't notice me straight away. Uh, downside, he's going to be there when we get out of this phone booth. So we already know where they are at this point. Because we don't refresh the map by going into any buildings, we know where the fight spawns are. So we have to be very careful and come out of this. He's probably going to notice me immediately, so I'm holding. <laughs> Actually, did I despawn him or is he hiding? I think I despawned him. I think he was close enough. I'm just going to be careful here. Yeah, good. So, very rarely, if you can if you can get the fight spawn close enough to where the cutscene trigger is, you can actually despawn them. I thought that guy running at me was a fight spawn. <laughs> Please don't scare me like that, sir. <laughs> Yeah, some I, I think in my practice run the other day there was a there, there was a pedestrian trying to run across the the side um, run across the intersection and he literally just ran into me. <laughs> he didn't yeah. like slow me down or anything, but like he just he was like like sh straight ahead at like fifty miles an hour. There's two. There's two in the potential for this walking guy as a hood spawn. I have to go to the right here. Yeah, that looks like a host. <laughs> Stop that. Oh, I and that can't guy. go oh, too far goodness. to the right because of the sub story. I will oh, it's that oh, sub story. Oh, that's yeah. bad. Yeah, this. I was hoping he'd go to the other side, but thank God he's one of the larger enemies. Seven! <laughs> Scattered! Losing tickets! That's our password. Oh, so they're all still gonna be there on the way back. There he is. Don't like the way this is putting me right now. I want to be careful because of the guys on the other side. He won't yeah, see me. What? Really? Okay. Oh, wow. Sure. That's, I disagree with that for sure. So again, we make everybody feared and then we attack them on the ground. Uh, with this, I can also get a... Who's doing this? You stop. He's calling back up. You have to stop him. I'm actually going to do this intentionally to build up my red heat a little bit. Shouldn't have to, but I'm just going to. The actual backup did get called. Cool. Oh, this is awful. Yeah, so we're getting into the the nitty gritty of why we want to avoid fight spawns. Because they can take a bunch of time. <laughs> <sighs> now you all can understand why I've been trying to be extra careful for this entire run. I don't actually know. I don't actually know how that one did aggro onto me because I was buffering our one. So, I'm a little upset at that. <laughs> this guy yeah, also against the light post isn't a fight spawn. He looks like he is, but he isn't, thankfully. That's terrible. 
Yeah, it, th this game, it, it's like, it, it might be a product of like being a remaster of the game. So the remaster, the, the remaster collections, specifically three, four, and five, they're very uh, sensitive to analog inputs. So even like a slight imperfection can cause you to either like not run straight or mess up and pool, which is why we were trying to avoid it earlier. Um, and yeah, like even tilting, tilting it like, uh, even tilting it too, like slightly too far, can cause you know enemies to aggro onto you, and it's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, sometimes you can't do anything about it. There's even in certain cutscenes, you can have actually fight spawns walk in front of you to where you need to go, and that's like that's really terrible because like you can't react to them. Sometimes you'll have like a fight spawn behind you, so you can't drag them backwards. This game just has some really nasty fight spawns. Like, yeah. really nasty. This is the, You can see now the reason why we keep saying that this is, like, one of the worst games in the series of fight spawns. Like, they're aggressive. They are pretty much everywhere. They yeah, can get uh, the jump on you around <laughs> corners, which is why I'm going very slow around corners. Yeah, and unlike in later games, it's not... Uh, they, there's no, like, one fight spawn per, like... Like, all of them can chase you at once, so... Yep, there is, unfortunately as well, <laughs> no way to despawn fight spawns in this game as well, unlike, say, the Dragon Engine games. Yeah, the only way you can do that is with an item that you can't transfer over from Kiryu's inventory, and getting it from a sub-story that takes too long. And so, that's going to be the end of taxiing inside of his pass. We still have a thousand yen left, which is enough for the taxis that he needs in the finale. And there can be a fight spawn up here on this corner, so we're just going to be very careful as we get closer to pan the camera and see if there is one. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't like this. I go <laughs> left. I go left. Uh, but I don't want anything to do with you. Anything to do with me? Because I'll hit you with this motorbike. I'm just gonna be a bit careful because yeah. <laughs> Alright, one last one last run through of Tsukimino before we get to the end of Saijima. This has been some terrible fight spawn luck. I think like Yakuza 5 not not be nice today, unfortunately. I do recall asking or I do recall saying that we were particularly blessed. That only applied to Nagasu and Tsukimino. Yeah. It was <laughs> exceptionally mean this time. Yeah, I'm really hoping that I am taking all of the bad fight spawn locks so that Tappan you don't get any of it. Mm, uh, so Tambori is honestly probably worse because it's even more cramped. Honestly, I would agree. I used to, like, I've honestly been for a long time, like, always thought that Tsukimino was worse, but lately I, I think it's so Tambori. Especially as well, like, all sub stories, so Tambori is. <laughs> oh, I, I think that's what imagine. changed my opinion the most. Yeah. You can get a fight spawn immediately, thankfully not. Get a little bit of freedom. In this bit as well, where there are fight spawns. Hello. Uh, they, will, they will still always stay here when we come back, so I know that on the way back I am safe to just run. This guy is potentially going to catch me, and I have to be very careful of some cars here. Well, I'm going a bit further in case one car comes by, but it didn't need to be. That guy might be... Yeah, that guy I was walking past might have been a fight spawn. He just despawned in that cutscene. I think he was a flight spawn. <laughs> but yeah, for this bit, we have to walk to... What we're trying to do is we're trying to get, again, uh, Kitakata so that we can have a word with him about Majima. Uh, we're going to try and kidnap him via the sewers. Um, and this bit's going to look weird because it looks like I'm intentionally running away from the story marker. I am. Uh, I think this was found by Meta Meta. Uh, we mentioned Meta earlier. Um, by running to the north here, we actually avoid a big, long introduction to the Snowball Battle Royale minigame, which also puts us even further away from our hideout, uh, and in an even worse spot to try and avoid fight spawns. So, and with yes. this, this is the end of running around Super Mino, thank goodness. Yeah, that this roundabout actually ends up being faster than, than doing the snowball thing. Oh, got it. <laughs> Oh, nice suit, Mina. Okay. Oh, well, I'll, I'll take, for the for curious part and Saijimus for my fight spawns I've had today, I'll take only one fight spawn. I'm actually satisfied with that. 
It's also yeah. like most of the time we actually we don't it's not like a rule that we have to, but sometimes we will like include on our like submissions to leaderboards, like, hey, I had like five fights spawns oh, because it's just it's not rare that you don't yeah. get through a Yax5 run without a fight spawn, but it's just not consistent to get through without a fight spawn. It's really hard. So yeah. So, so. it'd have but, to be exceptionally lucky or exceptionally uh <laughs> exceptionally sneaky with your avoidance, but it's it's really, really, really difficult. Yeah. And we get to something that RGD loves to do. They love to make their cities into set pieces, and Sukumino is going to be one of them in this game. And as you can probably tell via the intro of this fight, I got a lovely present on the right-hand side. Merry Christmas. This is a Christmas game, as you're about to see. That's fine. Well, by doing the strong attack as well, you can see it also gives us a nice little bit of distance as well over the attack. It can clear out a lot of enemies, but we can do the light attacks with it as well. But we want to be a bit careful here to not run oh, that way or too far here because you can walk past this bit and hit a trigger that instantly game overs you. I've done that before. So, to get past the police, we are going to take one of two disguises, and of course, the closest one is a Santa outfit. <laughs> We I might only it, be yeah. in October, but Merry Christmas, chat. <laughs> <laughs> I think it actually doesn't really matter which one you choose because of the because there's a slight delay on like how fast you can interact with the with the outfit, but it's it's a Christmas game. You gotta be within the spirit of the game. Exactly. Speaking of Christmas, I'm gonna use this Christmas tree to hit people. <laughs> So, again, as you could probably guess, two-handed weapons, as we were saying like earlier, they are just the thing. Two-handed weapons are phenomenal in this game still. So, hope you push this guy with this over to the other guy. Just missed. Shit, no. Sure. Thought the light would be enough. Yeah, we, we actually did get a, a, a attack power increase from using a... Like so, with two-handed weapons, we we have a slight boost. So it should be it should be a little easier to take out these guys, especially the the boss. Is this the fight that has the stun on in, or is that the next one? Um, I think it is this one. All right, buddy, on the floor. Yeah, I see. That. I know I'm down on heat attacks. That's why I'm gonna do a cross with them. Again, they're gonna fear a little bit, so I'll take care of the ones that are on the ground. I'll take care of the others. Go straight. Oh, hey, Dick. <laughs> okay, so I'll grab the stand in on the way for it. There's a good couple of them in these set pieces. I want obviously some for. Well, we want them for later on. I'll use the sled first. The sled doesn't obviously have as many hits. I can like have everybody on this corner so I can get like some good hits. Like, can the scooter stop flying? I am gonna need you in a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Side of it, please. Yeah, you thought Dragon Engine was the only one with shenanigans. It's always <laughs> been there. That's okay, that's fine. So, fun fact about this fight. Uh RGG forgot something. Uh, they forgot to put the invisible barrier on the end of the fight, so we're just going to leave. <laughs> but speed tap. <laughs> but, uh, now we run off, and much like Himura's, uh, Himura's flashbacks, we're going to have people attempt to run over Santa. That is uncool. Spirit of Christmas is definitely not with them. You know, just side about casually stopping a car at full force. <laughs> Yakuza. Don't Meet question back it. up with Baba. <laughs> Baba's just like, what the get up, dude? You're attracting more attention. And side is a little sad to have to take it off. <laughs> yeah, and like, remaster is weird enough to, you can actually see for a frame that it was still him in the suit, and then immediately <laughs> after it cuts to him wearing his regular outfit. Again, a thing that you would only notice when you've run the game multiple times. 
There's one annoying enemy in this fight. It's this guy to the right who's trying to hit me. Uh, we're going to do the same knockdown in to use a heat attack against the guy. Uh, that way we can build up the red heat that you can see in the top left for later on in the run. Uh, but also because it does a lot of damage to the guy. But obviously enemies hitting you are annoying and will drop the scooter. So I'm being very careful to try and make sure you know, keep that. I missed where he was. That's why I didn't drop the scooter this time. But we can't do it this time. He's gone. So everybody's going to fear. Now, the interesting thing about this is there's actually two enemies that are hidden around the corner that don't actually react straight away. Oh, they actually are here. Oh, no. One of them is okay, least. I should be using this bike, but hey. It's fine. <laughs> Just needed something close by. And the other guy. I can see his AI. Sometimes their AI just doesn't start for some reason. No idea why, but yeah, in the case of this guy, he just stays around the corner until you like physically walk up to him. That's a thing that's in a lot of the Dragon Engine games. There's like one NPC's AI that just kind of doesn't activate, but that guy, he just can't stays there. <laughs> he knows. He knows not to come around the corner. He knows better. We have a lot of exposition and then a chase and a boss fight. Yeah, Come so on. for some reason Baba just knows that the sewer can lead up to the to the place that the Saijima scouted out earlier. And it, it just so happens that Kitakata is standing in that exact spot where the manhole is. So he is going to go past like all of these people <laughs> and somehow unnoticed go grab the kidnap the guy and go straight back into the sewer. So it, Including police snipers, we should say. <laughs> yes, people literally, yes, snipers literally uh, scat, like <laughs> scouring the area for intruders. Just somehow, they still somehow go unnoticed. Yeah. Speaking of snipers, nice windows. They yeah, have a really good view into them, don't they? Very uh, inconspicuous spot. No one's yeah, sure. going to find him. It'd be a real shame if, you know, somebody was to shoot through these windows and hit Kitakata in the next cutscene. That'd be bad. I hope that doesn't yep. happen. Me too. So, we can actually find out from this cutscene that the deal between Kitakata and Majima actually went through fine. Uh, then Kitakata gets shot when he's about to say something about Majima. Surprise. And we have to go and chase down the shooter. He's going to be on the other side of the road and the... Uh, I, I definitely don't know. This, this, this person doesn't look that familiar. Yeah, that's not yeah. the only time. That's not the only time it's gonna happen either. <laughs> this is a video game that likes doing that a lot, unfortunately. I'm gonna move here so I don't get hit by that bike, and then we're gonna grab one of the weapons coming up. Hopefully, I don't get the weapon glitch here. If I do, I will just have to get a fresh weapon. Uh, but we're going to attack the stranger a little bit just to make oh, yeah. him go a bit faster. Come oh, on, yeah. off you go. I'd also stop him from throwing bikes at me. I don't think we have to get into like a certain HP threshold or if it's just like Uh I, I think you wanna deplete to the to the last bar. Yeah. But maybe that's good enough because he's going to run out of stamina anyway. So I'm gonna throw that here so that he doesn't throw these barriers at me. Uh. <laughs> well <laughs> God that didn't get stuck. That would have been bad. <laughs> With that, we end up mysteriously back into this square again with all of the uh, big old mopeds. And uh, we get to find out the face of the person who has been plotting everything. And uh, you might recognize this guy in his lovely turtle neck sweater. It's Baba! Whoa! Yeah, as a, and as it also turns out, he actually did stab the guy in the prison. He was plotting basically everything leading up to his escape. Did tell you, Baba is killer, but his assassin. So we're going to do a light heavy three times. That missed. Good for me. That's bad. <laughs> oh, he kind of laid down, he laid down for a while just for you. Yeah, I do appreciate that. I could probably get off of that. That's bad. I didn't want to see this. Yeah, because you're going to be a pain in the butt now. So I'm going to throw into the ground. Do another good old hit into that. More heat actions. I've now got the red heat, so I've done way more heat actions than I usually should. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of this scooter if I can actually grab it. Uh, we don't want Baba to grab us, though. Oh, well, that's also kind of bad. 
Okay, that up. You're going on the floor again. Because you can't grab and throw them again immediately, so you have to wait, like, a little bit of time. Yeah, normal and it should finish. Get out of here. Now, unfortunately, Baba's about to get demolished by Sajima. This, uh, this definitely hurts. Yeah. If you're really lucky, you can just, like, you can just completely lock him down with light heavies. It's really funny when it, when it actually happens, but it's pretty rare. Yeah, it's very, very precise. But that was an okay fight, otherwise. Uh, I wish I didn't have to use the screw as much as I did. But it's nice to have full red heat for Saijima. You usually get a little more of a chance to get red heat for Saijima coming up, but that'll do. And speaking of that'll do, that'll do for me. That is the end of uh, that's the end of my segment for Yak Survive. Went pretty well, all things considered. Yeah, I'm not happy about the fight spawns. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the no fight one is. Are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm relatively satisfied. Otherwise, um, I think bosses went okay. I think set pieces didn't go as well as I would like. But I'm mostly happy with that. I'm also happy with only one fight spawn between Kira and Saijima, considering what happened. But yeah, for sure. But folks, this isn't the end of Yakuza 5. Uh, we obviously have three more hours. Or actually, four, three and a half? Four and a half? Four three and a half. half more hours. Yeah, three and a half of hours of uh, Yakuza 5 still to go. Uh, coming up next is going to be Tap taking over the next character that you'll find out who that is in a minute. Ooh. Um, I hope you look forward to 40 minutes of downtime. <laughs> this game has a fair chunk of it. Um, yeah, I guess I'll do my, my goodbyes real quick. Um... Yeah, I'm through, I've been in the Yak speedrun scene for a very long time. Uh, I do Yak speedruns, surprise, this is Yak Survive. Uh, on Tuesday, I'm doing a dumb thing. Uh, I'm going to be doing a 15 plus hour speedrun of RGG's uh, Fist of North Star Lost Paradise All Sub Stories, which I'm not going to say the acronym because I think I'll get in trouble with uh, GDQ if I do that. So, <laughs> be around, love to see you, and if not, please carry on watching this because we have another good couple of hours with two amazing runners, two of the best runners Yak Survivors ever seen in Tap and you. And I hope you'll enjoy because the rest of this run is very good fun and there's a lot of really cool speed text to overcome. Oh yeah. Uh, do we want to? Do we need the guts in the finish, or do we want to? No, no, you can go. No, no, no. Yeah, we, no, we, we can go. I'm just holding it. Yeah. All right, it's a long card scene. We were doing this. <laughs> no, it's, it's just a long card okay. scene because the tap will pick it up from here. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so we are going to take a quick break, everybody, while we get the uh, the uh, transfer for the uh, file over. Uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Uh, just a quick reminder: if you are on YouTube watching this video, if you wouldn't mind, you can. Press the like button on the video, subscribe, subscribe to the channel, and uh, you can go watch the uh, runs live at twitch.tv slash Uh We'll be back in just a few minutes with, uh, you know, new runner and uh, more of the game. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. We are showcasing Yakuza 5, and we are at the... Third character, uh, we've got a new runner. I'll let uh, them introduce themselves, and then we can get right back into it. Uh, yeah, hi. I'm I'm new here. I just found this game. I'm Tapioca. Uh, I've booted the other two to commentary. They're still here, though. Say something, please. Hello, it's Ryu. I'm still here. I'm gonna be I'm... here for the next part too. <laughs> I'm Froob. I'm also still here. Hi, hello. <laughs> All right, yeah, great. So Froob sent me his save file. It's save 30, that's why it's awkwardly shuffled to the top here. So we're just going to continue <laughs> right where we left off, and yeah, I'll be playing the next part of the game for the next, like, hour 15 or so. So should I give you, like, a countdown or something? Yeah, please. Okay, cool. We'll do it in three, two, one, go. I've been tasked with the most important part of the game, Haruka and Akiyama's part, uh... A little bit of a divisive section of the game. There's not a whole lot in the way of skill or inputs or anything for the next, like, hour. Uh, so I have my friends here to keep me company in the call. Yeah, so this part is going... It, it'll feel like it'll drone on for a little bit because uh, with Haruka, her gameplay is quite a bit different from the rest of the characters. He does not fight for so to speak so <laughs> yeah you're gonna see in a sec here uh haruka doesn't punch anybody she does have gameplay but ooh, right you'll you'll see the problem with the gameplay in a sec um 
as soon as this guy tops talk stops talking to me. <laughs> uh, we can just skip it. Uh, all of her gameplay is meant to be these rhythm levels and mini games and things, and uh, except for one, which I'll get to when we get to it, um, every single one of them is completely skippable. None of it's required at all. You can just do that over and over again, and then Haruka has no gameplay to speak of, and we're just going to be walking around as her. So that's great. Thanks, Sega. This literally <laughs> saves like 40 to 45 minutes. Like, no nah, it joke. saves 20. Does it? Ow. Yep, it's 20. It's like 22 <laughs> or something. It's less than you'd think. It saves us from having to listen to so much more three times, which I appreciate. But <laughs> I mean, it, it's a banger song, but I guess it gets a little bit repetitive. Nah, Loneliness Loop is better than so much more. <laughs> That's the one we don't get to hear any of. Yep. Do you ever... We don't hear... Oh, no, we do... Oh, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, of course, we hear the third. Hear the what am I saying? Of course song. we hear the third. Loneliness loop. Just don't even hear the first note, even though it's the biggest banger. You do get to see one funny pose before it, before we switch off of it. This would also be if we were like doing the runs like solo. This would be the first break point of the run for us. Right. You'll see in a sec. This is uh, this is also our bathroom break chapter. <laughs> the game is a little bit merciful here. No. Nice and almost halfway through the run, which is nice. Park is the worst. <laughs> Can I say something controversial? I feel like Park had it gonna... coming. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I feel like that's not controversial for people in the series, though. They, they tried it. They tried to like. They try to do like park damage control in chapter two, and it doesn't work. I'm not buying it. <laughs> camera stuck i i have like i have to hold down on the stick at all times and it like screws you so badly on those stairs yep it's just like burnt into my hands at this point from playing too much yakuza 3 <laughs> yeah one time i got uh, one time i got stuck as akiyama in there and like the camera would just like pan out really far away <laughs> before finally yeah, getting it gets into super the... messed up yeah but anyway, here's our bathroom break. This is completely unskippable. I can press all the buttons and nothing happens. Um, I think this was mentioned during the last walk and talk, which was about eight minutes into the run, so like two and a half hours ago. But uh, there is one of these in Yakuza 4, which you can skip by unplugging and replugging the controller, which is the worst jank ever, and I hate it. Uh, but unfortunately, that does not carry over to this game, so Thanks, Dr. they fixed it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Chops, for whatever the hell that is. <laughs> so we just have no choice but to sit here and watch them talk about... I don't even know what. Even if we do somehow get rid of all the walk and talks, there is an, one There is one saving grace that is also in Haruka's chapter, and it's only because it's something that you have to do and you can't skip. But we'll get right. to that later. We need to save that. That's the big surprise. Haruka <laughs> <laughs> being friendless. I've never actually read the text in this cutscene. I just... <laughs> you was actually be sitting here through this. <laughs> you usually be off to the side, taking your break. <laughs> Probably haven't actually paid attention to this cutscene since this game came out. Like... <laughs> Eight years ago. Eight years ago in in the West, and uh, eleven years ago in Japan. Because this game took a very long time to get localized. Yep, I was there. I remember. Thanks, Dead Souls. Fun times. It was really cool, though. Honestly, when this came out, and you got to go back to Sotenbori. Nowadays, it's like they just sort of rehash the same Sotenbori map for like every game. And when you go to Sotenbori, I just like scream. But back then, it was exciting. Well, not for Gaiden. There's no way you're going to Sotenbori, dude. They haven't no, revealed it yet. No, they are. But they've they've shown the map. The map. Oh, they is showed based the map. Okay, this yeah. Map. They're actually, oh yeah, instead, right. Yeah. Because they're bringing back the Triangle Park. I saw I the meme about that. Where I it don't was know like, why they aren't just using the one they, they built have in the a Dragon park. Engine already? They're actually working on it for some reason. <laughs> and timeline-wise, it makes no sense. I think they wanted to yeah, make they it built like the park. a little more extravagant than 
than we see in like a dragon because that one was basically the same as uh, yeah. the one in Kiwami 2. Which I'm glad about. And also with the extra taxi spots, we should, fingers crossed, get our taxi back down where Dyna Chair is, please. Yeah, please. Uh, <laughs> this game's taxi list in Sotenbori is incredibly crap. Um, it's... It's it's like it's just so bad. There's just no useful taxis. You'll see the one that we take. It's it's like not even good. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, that one takes you to like one of the sides of the map because there's again like here there's no good way to get to the center of the map, which is where Dyna Chair is. Right, I'm free, except I'm not. There's another cutscene I have to sit through <laughs> before we get to actually control Haruka. <laughs> You're never free when you're playing Yakuza 5. That's what I've learned over the years. So one saving grace, quotation marks, for Haruka is that she doesn't get random fight spawns. Instead, she gets this. Right. So Haruka's fighting is done by dance battle. Um, and instead of people just running up to you and insisting that you dance battle them, which I think would be funny and they should have done that, um, there's just fixed people around town who you can challenge and we can just not challenge them. And then that's guaranteed no fights. So that's cool. Uh, this is a tutorial for the dance battles and we're just going to skip it. This is Akari. She's going to get absolutely clowned on later in this chapter. Ooh, yeah. Haruka has no mercy. Yep. There it is, goodbye. Uh, I think if you do an all sub stories run, you have to win like three or four of these. Eh, it's closer to like five or six, actually. Oh, it's four. It's four? Well, it's like three and then... Yeah. Because you can't lose the sub stories. It's like the three to unlock the, the first thing. One, yeah. Yeah. Then there's like two or three in the sub stories. I, I can't remember if this one counts or if you have to do them properly. I think in when I did all sub stories, I think I just skipped this and just did, you know, four battles. Nine, what was one, that two, one? <laughs> yeah, so what Tap is actually doing here is she, uh, he's resetting uh, Haruka's run cycle. So Haruka's, so Haruka's movement, uh, she's the only character that runs faster in the initial run, in the initial dash than, than the other characters. So we use that dash as much as, as often as we can. Um, but it can be a little finicky to to properly reset her into the initial dash again. So there's actually a bit of involvement with Haruka in this uh, yes. in this run, even if it's as subtle as just what is essentially fox trotting in Smash. Yeah, you can probably you probably can't even tell if you're not like used to seeing it. But Haruka, for the first ten steps of her run animation, moves a little faster and. After after 10 steps, she sort of like slows down and her animation changes. Um, so we, I want to say the value on the stick is like 62% or something really weird. Yeah. Um, you're looking to hold forward for the first nine steps and then the 10th step reset back to 62% and then go back to holding forward, forward fully to reset her animation. And you do that over and over again throughout the entire game whenever you're playing as Haruka and it's really weird. And none of the other characters work like this. Yeah, it's it's basically the same thing as uh, as like trying to walk past white spawns. That's the threshold. Right, it's the same. Sitting through this, there was a handshake mini game back there. We skipped it. The handshake mini game is terrible. So, <laughs> goodbye. Yeah, that one you just kind of shake hands with your fans, and you have to, for some for some reason, you have to really shake your hands with the with the super fans that have like pink shirts or whatever to optimize your score. Well, Princess League round one time. This whole chapter is just like day in the life of being Haruka or something. So we're just doing all kinds of crap. This is the first round of the Princess League, which is sort of like, you know, American Idol but Japan. I guess. Um, we're in the finals and there's three rounds of it and we're going to lose all three rounds because we do not like Haruka and T-Set deserves the dub here. Um, <laughs> the third round has some weirdness to it that I'll explain whenever we get there. But this just works the same as everything else. We just skip the dance and then lose. It's completely throwing on national TV. 
Yeah, yeah you yeah. might be thinking it's very important for the plot that Harak has to win. No. Yeah, it's... <laughs> the, the plot is sort of predicated on the idea that you win the Princess League, but if you lose, the game just pretends you win, and you can even drop out, and the game just pretends you win, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it's, like, completely messed up. I don't even know why they give you that option. There's T-Set. Arc is going to completely ruin their careers at the end of the game. Just a spoiler alert. <laughs> That'll never not be funny to me. They're literally just like there on stage and she's just like, I, I swear to God, Haruka. Haruka is the worst. Yeah, the characterization in order for this story to happen with her is a bit uh, harrowing. You know, I'm not sure they actually gave her that dress or if she had it the whole time. Because this cutscene seems to imply that Yoko actually gives it to her, like, literally right before she's supposed to perform. Yeah, I think she was going to go on stage, just, like, dressed like normal. She had no plan. <laughs> huh? I kind of wish I had that TV that. in the background. That. Are we good? We're good. Cool. <laughs> Round one. So much more. Goodbye. <laughs> if you do an all sub stories run of this, you will be hearing so much more at least a dozen times. Really bad. Yeah, I'm actually genuinely surprised I didn't use the other songs more often. Nope, just so much more. There's one of the dance battle people, by the way. You just walk right past them. They're not really encounters. Oh, there's a random pedestrian from nowhere. That's sort of the downside to holding the camera down all the time. Uh, pedestrians will sometimes just like load in directly in front of your face. That person was a little bit out of the way, but sometimes they really are just immediately in front of your face and you just have to bonk them. I hope I went to the right place. I wasn't paying any attention. This has to I be think, right. I think you're supposed to go into Dinah chair. Yeah, 100%. Oh. What? <laughs> any day now. It's stupid that, like, <laughs> this game... It, what's really painful about this game... I hate you, Park. What I hate about this game is that, like, if you're holding R1X to skip the text fast, the text will skip really fast, but it blocks on so many just, like, stupid animations. And it's what, it, it's what makes the cutscenes take so long. Mm -hmm. Like, if you could just blitz through the text, like, in Yakuza 1 and 2, it would just be, like, it would, this game would be, like, multiple hours faster. And then maybe more people yes. than just us would run this. <laughs> Yeah, I think I I still haven't like counted how much time you would save if you could just skip all of it like you could in the Dragon Engine, but I estimate that you'd probably save like 4 hours. This would be like the sickest 2-hour run, dude. Imagine. <laughs> Someone please make this mod. Yeah, just skip everything the game. So, Park is doing a, an extremely petty thing here and fires the dance coach that we literally had for like five minutes because he All apparently right, didn't, do enough, had enough, he didn't do a good enough job. You have to go find the new dance instructor, and the new dance instructor is in the opposite corner of the entire city, <laughs> like literally as far away as possible from where we're standing right now. Yeah. Um, and despite all that, there's no taxi to get us there faster. So great, we just have to walk. Yeah. There's a taxi Yo. that is there in Yak Zero onwards, but not this game. Please <laughs> bring it back for Gaiden. Many thanks. 
hate having to do all this running. They, like, screwed up the PC version of this game somehow, so you can't walk in a straight line anymore. It's very... Like, where did that guy come from? Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, this is what we were talking about earlier. Just for some reason, when you pan the camera down, or even when you don't pan the camera down, you can just have civilians spawn in front of you. Which, when you're on characters that have to avoid fight spawns, that's a problem. Yeah, we're not even, and we're not even like dealing with fight spawns with Harka. We just want to avoid running into pedestrians, but sometimes they'll just show up anyway, and do like a dis like a disappearing, reappearing act, and spawn right into you. You can potentially it, it can potentially help you for like resetting her 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 run, but it's usually just bad altogether. So the plot here is that we had to go get another dance instructor, and this guy is like a famous dance instructor, and he's gonna make us do a dance off with Akari to decide who's the better dancer, and then he's gonna like go with whoever wins, and we're just gonna not even dance. We're just gonna quit out of this just like everything else. In the ultimate power play, we just don't even dance. That's how confident we are in our skills, and he's gonna appreciate that and pick us over her. Either that or Akari's dancing is so bad that it doesn't improve on doing literally nothing. <laughs> it's just imagine Haruka just standing there, not doing anything, and it's somehow better than whatever Akari did. <laughs> yeah. So cool, he's with us now. See ya. Um, you can do a bunch of side stuff to become her friend again, but no. Bye. <laughs> Sorry. Good dancers only, fool. Boy. So, that's actually kind of that's actually kind of mean because <laughs> like Christina is like oh yeah no just just leave her you, you don't yeah. need her in no life anymore you don't need these people in your life they're holding you back there's only like one of two friends that Haruka has actually made at school as well it's just who's like, the other friend and uh, it's the other one that hangs out with them I've forgotten her name the one that likes really likes Okonomiyaki no. she has like the short like bob cut hair. Uh, I have no idea. He only turns up in like three sub stories. Uh, yeah, there's the sub story where you meet the other two girls and they're like not your friends. They're like yeah. on their phones the whole time. What mm -hmm. makeup do you like? Do you like any boys? How is it like being an idol? Bad, actually. Terrible. I'm only here because Park is making me be here. I mean, they kind of make it out. Is this your <laughs> they kind of do make it out for Haruka to look like she actually did want to do this in the first place, but I don't buy it. Uh, but, well, then she, I don't know. I feel like it's not her Yume, it's Park's Yume. Have we yeah. forgotten Yakuza 2 where we explicitly say, I don't want to yeah, be exactly. an idol? <laughs> they do forget a lot of story points like that sometimes. I get that she's, you know, grown up a bit, she's looking out for the orphanage. I think she could have done it in a way that wasn't this. I think she could have gotten a job like selling fake credit cards or something. I feel like if the if if she didn't become an idol, the events of this game and the events of Yakuza Six wouldn't have happened. <laughs> it's technically Haruka's fault. It isn't even Haruka's fault. I'm willing to blame Haruka for everything. <laughs> She's the mastermind since Yakuza One. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah. Everyone Actually, goes after Kiryu not, because of wrong. her. <laughs> That's how Kiryu gets infamous. I mean, does he really, though? Because, like, no one even, like, you know... Out of my way, please. <laughs> people just still randomly pick fights with you, even though they <laughs> should know who you are. I, I love that the PSP games of all things, like, legitimize that. With the whole, hey, it's actually a test to, like, challenge Kiryu and lose. All right. <laughs> Weird test you got there, bud. We've seen plenty of weird yakas are not time in these games. All right, cool, good movement. Kind of gaming today, not to brag. <laughs> I'm sure nothing bad will happen in the second half of this chapter. Nothing at all. Nothing at I all. I definitely didn't get two victory road qualifiers <laughs> in my face in, in D Rust last night. Same. <laughs> Hopefully they're left. I saw night. I saw your run, and was it yesterday, Frub, when uh? There was literally a dude just like in the doorway yep. to dine a chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's so awful. I hate that. That was my third fight spawn of the chapter. I gave up. Because, <laughs> like, what happened earlier, you know, the uh, the one where you have to go to the um, 
the parking lot with Akiyama. In the yeah. cutscene, a fight spawn walked next to me. And as, oh soon as, it, as soon as the vocal <laughs> ended, he's next That's to me. Like, I can't do anything. So you survive the alleyway, and then <laughs> that happens. Usually if I get owned by something, it's a pedestrian encounter in the alleyway where it's just like, what are you going to do about that? Yeah. But anyway, here we are in Sotenbori Love Check Quiz. Um, if we get seven or more questions correct, we're going to win an exciting prize. So we'll see if I can do my best to get the questions right. It's Sotan Hody, guys. I think so. I mean, I've never seen it spelled, so who knows? What parts? That's technically Definitely the no triangle part. answer if you can see the future Sotan Boris. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man. Dino chair. I wish it was Dino chair. Lessons on the fourth floor. I don't even know how you're supposed to know that. You have to like talk to the elevator to find out the floor numbers. <laughs> They're definitely not T set. Not even respecting T set. Didn't you just the real say reason why that question is false is because they're not popular. That's what I was taking offense to. <laughs> <laughs> like that's false. Nobody likes T set. This is the one that everyone actually gets wrong when they play casually. There's a takiyaki shop. There isn't a takiyaki shop. The crab restaurant is definitely not named Crab. <laughs> Anyway, we got all the questions wrong. Uh, whether you get the questions right or wrong, that animation is the same length, and we don't want to have to sit through the text of us getting the prize. So we just need to get at least three wrong, and the rest is just because we want to embarrass Haruka on national TV as much as possible in this run. Any day now, game? Thank you. I can't believe Manda-san gets an FMV there. <laughs> of all the places to have a pre-render. If you also notice that that's like a that's an actual producer outfit that like they it's like the the idea. Oh carried shoot! Over. Yeah, hang yeah. on a second. Yeah, they carry it over to zero. Yeah, so for that, that's for I that, for literally that I have never made that connection before. Yeah. It's like, is this what they really wear? Apparently the answer is yes. Yeah. At least in this universe. Get out of my way, please. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that blonde dude was an actual fight spawn. I got worried. <laughs> yeah, he's just, I mean, he could have been. Anyway, that was Chef Tatsuya. Uh, Chef Tatsuya is at his worst in Sotenbori. Just like a true villain if you're doing all sub-stories routing. Mm. But I think that's it for the chapter. Yep, there you go. Not through the longest part. This one is a lot nicer, it's a lot more shorter. Chapters 2 and 3 are pretty short, and then chapter 4 of this part is the longest chapter in the whole game. Same yeah. for all sub-stories. Oh, it's so bad, dude. If you do an all sub stories run of this, I'm gonna be talking about that a lot because I like all <laughs> sub stories. It's good fun. But um All Sub Stories Haruka and Akiyama chapter four is like over two hours long. I think it's it's very, very bad. I think it's two and a half. Like actually two and a half. Oh yeah, I think it's two and a half. Anyway, speaking of sub stories, uh, all sub stories are now on the map now that we're done with chapter one. So the entire southern street of Sotenbori is now a death trap of stuff we don't want to deal with. So whenever I walk to Dyna Chair, I'm just going to walk up here. Um, you could also go through the alleyway and try to like do some stuff, but the alleyway tends to be really crowded and obnoxious, and I find it's just consistently faster to take the north route there. Yeah, you Actually, think the same. Three hours, by the way. <laughs> I've been in chat. <laughs> three hours. Cool. Gift from a fan in a box. Oh, 
can we have any fans if we're constantly throwing the princess look? Some they like it as like a remember like they like it as like a like a sarcastic, ironic thing. Where it's like they vote for us to progress just to see, just to watch us throw. There's there's the the, the T pose kind of. That was loneliness loop. That's completely Shoot. skip it. Yep. Actual round two of the Princess League isn't gonna be happening for like a very long time though. Yeah. <laughs> Trying my best to not choke these menus. That menu is like mega jank thought, even on console. Yeah, actually round two doesn't even happen until like the fourth chapter, does it? Yep. Nope. <laughs> By the time round two happens, uh, I think most players have forgotten the Princess League even exists. <laughs> I love it's just like, oh yeah, shoot, right. I forgot we never did that. I love the idea that someone had that the uh, SBR99 substory, it should have been the Princess League where you just had a battle royale against other idol groups. This is so much more again. She has to perform it in the park on this crappy plywood stage. Do idols do this in real life? Yeah, some do, yes. Like, do, do they have better stages than this, at least? Yes. Well, sometimes they, yeah, sometimes they do, sometimes they do it on the street. I yeah. saw one recently, uh, like, saw footage recently of someone doing it under a bridge. And, like, actually being very popular, and, like, the issue is they can't just do it. There are certain, like, laws and, like, rules to, like, the streets where... Yeah, this is sounding more and more like Jet Set Radio, where literally they have to, get like, get permission to do it and, like, do it correctly, etc., etc. You can't just turn up and blast music. Illegal idling. That's why it's the underground scene. Mmm, I see. Here's an old guy. We'll come back later. Oh. We're meant to like this old guy. He's pretty creepy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit unsettling, yeah. Now we're gonna get right, a cool. now we're gonna get a present for Park for some reason, even though she's done nothing so far but slap Poitier and uh, make us hire a new <laughs> a new dance instructor. It's like her birthday or something. I don't Maybe. remember. Maybe. I, I, don't I literally remember just made that up, but that might be true. <laughs> it could be. We're going to make up our own plot as, as we go <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to choose to believe that today is Park's birthday. We're literally getting her present at Don Quixote. She's getting like a stamina and X for her birthday. Or get some bandages. I mean, we've all seen the Like a Dragon live action movie. We've seen how effective Staminans are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Is that a thing? Do they drink stamina in they the do. movie? I Kiryu haven't seen it. He has one at the very end, and he just literally oh my gets God, set that's on so good. CG file. The movie is wild. The... That sounds like a good movie. It's... Uh, a T set shows up. Thank God. My is in fold Super Mario Brothers cosplay with that hat. <laughs> I that hat will never just. I I hate the hat. Yeah, uh, I can't unsee that it, anymore either. Doesn't compliment the outfit Not as much as she thinks it does. And it's the same color, but it's just like it's just like plumber core. I don't know. It's just really. Bad. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Also, cool, well, now we're in the other the brooch. They wouldn't have known to break that one specifically. We're now in the other farthest possible place from civilization on this map. And gonna make for us some walk reason, all the way around here. And for some reason, you don't even walk with them. You, they just kind of leave you here. In all sub stories, we actually have to be careful there because there's an unmarked uh, dance battle that we have to do. There's a sub story there. Wait, there is? Yep. Yep, we have to walk backwards, I remember specifically. Because my notes uh, in all capital letters yelling at me, hey, idiot, turn around. <laughs> uh, that's literally my notes. <laughs> Sometimes when I, when oh, I forget yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah, I my remember runs, that because, yeah. Uh, yay. Yeah, yeah. But just forget stuff in my runs. I just yell, hey, idiot, in my notes, and it's like, oh, yeah, I remember this.
<laughs> I'm gonna probably use yeah. why whenever whenever someone asks you for notes, you're like, hang on, I gotta clean it up a bit first. Yeah. <laughs> you submit the notes, it's like, hey idiot, go over there. And it's like, oh, I know what that means. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need that for for my run too, because the uh... <laughs> Oh, are you doing it? Hmm? Oh, are you doing an all sub stories run? No, 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 not all sub stories. I just mean in general. I'm probably gonna need uh, a few reminders in this uh, <laughs> when I'm doing mm. when I'm doing my part. I might accidentally Simply trigger. Baseball man. I might tr accidentally trigger too many cutscenes because I forgot, or too many QTs because I not forgot a... where to go. <laughs> as long as you don't. Yeah, to I speak also forget the QTE sky. thing. We are actually almost Haruka, done with Haruka, please. Thank you. Almost. We're not done with Haruka until finale chapter four. <laughs> Sorry. Fortunately, we are. Ryu's gonna have to pass the controller back to me so that I can walk across the city as Haruka. <laughs> yeah, if we were doing if we were doing this live, we probably would actually just do that. <laughs> <laughs> One person per character. That'd be fun. That's the yeah. fun way to do it. Shame we only have like three hackers of five runners. <laughs> We're gonna have to like dig Metza out of retirement for it and get Should... one of the newer runners as well. Yeah, I saw X play playing six not too long ago. I'm sure he can be, he can be convinced. <laughs> we can resort to violence if we have to, just have to get him on the couch. We mentioned the items that we just picked up, by the way. They're all items for the hostesses, and obviously Daraka doesn't interact with the hostesses, so... Cool. Oops. Yep. This game has a lot of weird stuff going on. Like, uh, if you open lockers as Haruka, you can get weapons on her that you're then, like, unable to pass back to Akiyama or some with something weird. Yeah. <sighs> by the way, we just, <laughs> yeah. we just skipped the Taiko. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's but... Taiko no Tatsujin. I, I don't know how that ended up in this game. That's not a Sega game, but there it was. Yeah, no, it's it's wild. There's only three songs in it, but they were just like, hey, have Taiko. And all right, cool. And like they put it literally in the story so that you could play it. And we're just like, well, nah. we're speedrunners. We're, we're the worst. We're just going to skip it. Trust me, it hurts us as much as it hurts you to watch that skipped. Mm. It hurts me because I've been playing this for like... How long now? But over half an hour, and I have yet to do literally anything other than walk and watch cutscenes. <laughs> like, please, just let me play Taiko. I promise. I'm not even good. Just let me do it. Good news. Here come fight spawns. <laughs> no. This is a fight spawn free zone. For the next two minutes. <laughs> Honestly, though, Sotenbori is like the easiest city for fight spawns, in my opinion. It's pr it's usually not that bad. <laughs> disagree to, like, after recent events. <laughs> mm, you're just I wrong. Also, sorry. I also I also disagree. You also, what's I, easier? What's easier than this? Nagasu. Uh, Nagasu. Yeah, but like other than that, <laughs> what's easier than this? <laughs> um, Kamarocho. Pro Probably Kanicho. Yep. Kanicho is like very wide uh, open. The only problem is... The, road. <laughs> the only problem is it's so cluttered you can't see crap and there'll just be some dude hiding behind a truck and he just <laughs> jumps you. Yeah, but it, it's still an open area, so I'm not too worried about that. Anyway, something happened in Dyna Chair. <laughs> so it after requires all of our that. immediate attention. Ark gave us her weird bulbous pen. She played Taiko with us. The game is trying so hard to redeem Park and make us care. Oh god, why is it lagging? Oh, what is this? Ugh. Here, the 10 48 FPS. Computer can't handle this 2012 PS3 game, apparently. <laughs> It's a, it's a 20, oh, yeah, 20 after all of that redemption, uh, Park is now dead. So, see ya. Also note that Haruka is teleported to the bottom part of that crowd instead of being at the top where Tab ran in. 
impressive. I wish you could teleport more in this game to skip the walking segments. <laughs> yeah, or just call a taxi from anywhere. Best quality <laughs> of life change RGD ever did. Hey, it's all better now because we actually get to... Cool, so now we have Akiyama's part. Hooray. I get to do one fight, and then we wait 15 minutes, and then I do one more fight, and then we wait half an hour, and then I do a third fight, and then it's over. <laughs> Welcome to part three of Yakuza 5. I said it was divisive for a reason. Akiyama's combat is also, like, kind of the crappiest, to be honest with you. We do very little actual Akiyama combat in this part of the game. Um, for the most part, we have cheese. But if you're ever forced to actually kick people as Akiyama, it's very unsatisfying compared to the other characters, in my opinion. Yeah, they kind of nerfed his moveset from, from Yakuza 4 to Yakuza 5. Everyone just blocks <laughs> or doesn't get knocked down. And like his whole gimmick in this game is kind of questionable. So here's our, here's our combat tutorial. There is Takeshi Hakamata of the Omi Alliance. And we can just do that. Wow, I barely hit anybody. That's terrible. <laughs> That's kind of cringe. I thought it wasn't gonna also, die there even. <laughs> yeah. Where's Kato? Die Kato. He somehow got behind me. It's not supposed to happen. Ideally, you just, with one swing, take out everybody. And my game really did start running like total trash all of a sudden. Thanks, q -Long. Mm. Thanks, Q-Lock. Yeah, the PC ports of 3, 4, and 5, and 6, and K2 are all incredibly sus and have various problems. I think out of all of the ones that you have done, though, this is probably the least egregious. It's like this or six. Is anything wrong with six other than them not fixing any of the crashes? Uh, no. Not that I can think of. So yeah, now that we're playing as Akiyama, we're going to start getting fight spawns. Um, there's one fight spawn that can come at me immediately after this taxi. We'll see if he's there. Oh. Nope, no squatters. Yeah. Mm, there is a guy, though. I heard that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> the text box is right there. So, here's the cheese for Akiyama. I guess it's not really the Akiyama cheese anymore, because we uh we also buy these on Kiryu now, right? Yeah. But we're going to buy five of those and 15 of these, and we're going to be spamming the hell out of that for basically every boss fight, because it's way better than Akiyama's kicks. Thank you, Metza, for that. I think. Yeah, the nice thing about Blackjacks, as you might have seen, like in, in Kiryu's part, is that. Jeez, look how slow he's running. This is messed up. Oh, gee. Oh, dear. <laughs> I might have to take a second to see if I can do something about this. Yeah, this this is this is really not okay. Hold yeah, up. if you want to, like, we can, like, go to a break screen if you want to, like. No, 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 we'll see. Oh, okay. I had dump. a thing running on this side. I will kill that and see if it helps. I was going to say, you could dump the, the live view in Discord as well if it doesn't help. Yeah. Nah, I'm fine. I got it. I think, uh, at least this cutscene's okay. I had the stream running on the side, and I paused the stream, and now we're doing good, so. Mm. Blame Twitch. I think it was just Twitch's fault. Bunch of cutscenes. Akiyama completely inserts himself into the situation. Yeah, as it turns out, Park actually borrowed a lot of money from Akiyama to start this whole thing in the first place. So that's why he that's why he gets involved. 
And also, apparently, Haruka and Akiyama know each other from whatever oh. interaction that happened between Yakuza 4 and 5. Which you could probably guess, you know, the, the only other game that came out of, like between them was Dead Souls. Yo, Dead Souls? Dead Souls canon? I think so, at least. I mean, there is one very specific picture in Gaiden that shows a... <laughs> A, a character that is also featured in Dead Souls. Wait, what is... With a minigun on. <laughs> Wait, he's in there? It, that looks like him. I didn't see yeah. that. Oh, man. I mean, if you see a certain couple of people, like, from mm. a different RGG series also potentially in Gaiden as well? Nah, I haven't been paying any attention. <laughs> a certain lad who has to the North Star? God, no. A certain lad who had some DLC... Uh, for a certain judgment game, may have turned up. Mm. <laughs> I recognize the character, therefore the game is good. Any day now. <laughs> so many... So many text boxes to clear. So much more. Oh, and by the way, we're back to playing as Haruka again. I hope you like Akiyama. He's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> That's like literally it. Yeah, they're going to bounce between uh, the gameplay of Haruka and Akiyama in this part. If you're thinking that Yak Survive has a pacing problem, you're correct. <laughs> this is the. This is. It's not a pacing problem so much as it is just that there's zero pacing or zero attempt to have pacing. Yeah. You can't have a problem with something that doesn't exist. It's not too bad when you're doing it casually, you know, paying attention to the story and you're invested, or if you are invested. Um, but it is one of those cases where in the speedrun it just brings warts and all to the forefront. Like once we get uh, to the get next chapter, face. everything gets a lot more action-y, like there's a lot more to do in the run actually, like for the next three hours, it's just like kind of fast paced. We just have to get rid of Harold oh. first. Well, so kind of fast paced as long as you pretend that Baseball Man Chapter 2 doesn't exist. True. I do love <laughs> yeah. trying to avoid unavoidable QTs. Let's make the map so that we can't have the player avoid any QTs. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to that one. <laughs> I'm probably going to run into like three extra ones. As long as you stick in the middle of the road, you'll be fine. I have to also have to in go the, the right way because they're like <laughs> scattered across the entire map. <laughs> yes. Uno couldn't have just gone to like a closer club. He had to go to all the most spread out locations in the entire city. And, uh, as, it, as it turns out, there's also uh, no money in, in that part either. Yeah. I'm actually genuinely upset that's one of those parts where we can't just go to the point when we know what to do ahead of time. Like, a couple of Yakuza games allow us to do that, but Yakuza 5 is very strict on you go do the thing we tell you to do. All right, and back to Dyna Chair. For those keeping track at home so far, uh, we walked to Dyna Chair as Akiyama, then we walked home as Haruka, and now we're walking back to Dyna Chair again as Akiyama, and that's the entire chapter. <laughs> it's just this street a bunch of times. That's that guy's a problem. He was facing the other way. If that guy was like Victory Road or something, though, he would have been fast enough to catch me, even though he's facing the other way. Uh, yeah, we're good. Cool. I've had people, I've had fight spawns uh, appear right on top of Saigo here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's uh this game this game is not holding back with the fight spawns. If there's one thing that anyone should take away from watching this run, it's that the fight spawns in Yakuza 5 are completely insane. Also oh, I think there's like a <laughs> got a little something behind your foot there. Standing on a locker key. And also he has hair now. So this is training for Akiyama's special gimmick that they gave him for Yakuza 5. Um, it's basically the same as Kiryu's, 
where you like go into extreme flaming red mode and then you just like go ham. Uh, and just like Kiryu, all we have to do is activate it, punch once, and then deactivate. So that's all we're gonna do. Just have to wait for him to let us go in. I'm gonna lock you in the corner here so that you don't dodge it. His AI is programmed such that he'll keep trying to attack you even though you're even though you can't really be touched while he's talking. Oh, it looks weird. Uh hello? <laughs> Did it it made you taunt. <laughs> uh no, that was entirely my fault. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I might have I might have been stupid for a second. Yeah, when I was, it had been so long since I last practiced. Ooh, squatters Yakuza in the park. Hello, squatters. It had been so long since I last uh, practiced this game uh, that last night I accidentally taunted instead of taking out my what? weapon for Shino. <laughs> in uh, what game is R two take out the weapon? Uh, take out the weapon okay. or yeah. Kiss. R two. No, no, no. I, I no, like I. No, isn't it down on the D-pad in this game? The taunt? Uh, it's yeah, kind of both. Down, down on the D-pad is, is smoke is Kiryu. Oh yeah, I, hit I R2, guess I wasn't. Yeah, I guess I wasn't taunt. I, I guess it didn't taunt, but it was like a, just taking out a smoke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I would do that all the time by accident when I was running this. I forget why. Just like mashing, put away the weapon, and he just like put it away and then start smoking. It's like no, 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 stop, Kiryu. And you're stuck there for like five seconds. Yeah. We're almost to the exciting part. We just have to get through this safe. An odd and convenient shaped keyhole. I wonder what could go in there. Definitely could it not be something the hard freakishly hard. huge pen that was gifted to <laughs> us. Yeah, maybe that'll work. Hey, there you go. Okay. Two bosses sprung up from out of the safe and ran away. Before we do this, uh, we have to equip these. And then I'm also going to do a couple level ups. Uh, this is a bit of a weird spot in the game. They don't really... Like, we've literally only had that fight with Hakamata coming into this. So a lot of players casually are, like, super unprepared for two bosses in a row here. Um, and all the leveling up you can do is that. Fortunately, because we don't need any of that. <laughs> Boom. Ooh, the triple. Sick. Yeah. If you get the triple hit, then uh, that just means that he'll die at the end of this heat action instead of taking a hit afterwards. And he's dead. See ya, Kanogita. See you in another chapter, bro. This is basically Blackjack unleashed. Whereas the uh, Kiryu was just uh, lightly playing with them. Akiyama goes all in on the Blackjacks. These bosses used to really, really suck before we had the Blackjacks. You had to use like Essence of Finishing Knee, but if you were too close to a wall, then it wouldn't work. It was really dumb. It was awful. That's that, and it should just be a little bit more blackjacking, and then we get the Haruka, the Haruka assist. Whoop. That works too. Yeah. And bonk. All right, cool. Back to doing nothing. It's been real. <laughs> see you later. It's Akiyama. been real, boys. Yeah. <laughs> see you three more times, Kanai. Kanai is like this game's Kuze, except a million times lamer. Um, he just keeps coming back. Now we have the super low poly detective. Is he? He's kind of low poly. He just looks like a pedestrian. Very smooth face. It's PS3. Everyone's like that. Ah. 
きなそうえといあのいわまあはいおっ So now we'll investigating Park's death a little farther And、uh, Akiyama will use his connections with a forger to find another forger that happens to be in Seoul Tambori. There's Hana. I don't know why they don't show her. She doesn't even have a portrait, and they didn't get her voice actress back. I thought that was a mystery caller, Hana. I thought that's her. I don't. That's not voiced, is it? It is voiced. Oh, never mind then. They did get her voice actress back. They just didn't show her for some reason. Yeah, and when you, when you look into the, the character bios, she's literally just like a desk and a chair. Wait, seriously? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really look, funny. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, if you, look in, if you look in there, like, there there's no you model. Might be,、uh, you might be the world's first person to ever read the character bios. Oh, it wasn't in a me. Yakuza I, I, game. I, I, it wasn't me. I, I got it through word of mouth, and then I looked through it myself, and yeah, it really is just. A desk. If I remember rightly, I think Kaya Hirano, her voice actress, is going through a lot of、um, a lot of really nasty crap in real life at the time, which is why she came back properly for Ishin. Oh, yeah, 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 that makes sense. All right, gaming. I know、uh, the, the one for Ogita confirms that he's dead, as if you needed confirmation, but it, it confirms he's dead after this chapter. Oh, messed up the menu. There's Princess League Round 2. We were joking about this before, but we practiced for the Princess League Round 2, like, I don't know, six years ago? Seven, something like that. It's very spaced out. Between the last time we did <laughs> Princess Lee. Hey, remember this? Two chapters of Murder Mystery, followed by, oh, by the way, you're still in that reality TV show. T Set's manager who is modeled off of the old series director, Nagoshi. Most suspicious looking, non suspicious <laughs> character, Nakai. <laughs> Like, you should be an opener for T set. Well, <laughs> funny how I mean, given, out, given, the direction, <laughs> given the direction her current career is going, doing so well, just failing upwards. <laughs> Are we going in? We're going in. All right, Princess League Round Two. Wish me luck, gamers. Oh, j e e z Oh, oh, I tripped. Okay, I lose. You lose again? Wow. Yep. The thing about losing the two rounds of the Princess League, this is my complaint I have to make. This, this is like a giga nerd moment, but I have to complain. They say that because we lost the first two rounds, T set's going to get an advantage in round three. But the advantage is that the bar starts in their favor. But the bar is supposed to represent how many people are standing in front of each stage, and how could they possibly manipulate that? <laughs> like for the show producers. They give money to certain audience members. They stand over there. Like, are they paying off the audience to stand in a certain spot? I, that's what I'm. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's always bugged me, and it's just like such a nerdy, like. I don't know, man. It just bugs me. It's just one of those things. They should have put more thought into their fake cutscene minigame thing that lasts for three minutes. Oh my god, it's so crowded. One point in all sub stories, we have to say no to a character so you can go inside and get a sub story that we literally cannot do at any other time. Yeah, maybe the advantage is that there's like a maze of gates you have to get through to stand in front of Haruka's stage. Oh, god. <laughs> there's this like setup, like you have to complete. This obstacle course. It's like a soul t r a If you fail it, you like fall into water. So, <laughs> so no one wants to stand in front of her stage. Soul trap. Or Takeshi's castle. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So Yamauro gets uh, gets to run the entire thing after Park's passing, and then and then Akiyama gets word on where the forger is. This is the really nasty part where we could get an encounter. Se potentially several. Potentially several. Uh, we have to go to a bar, and the bar is in a really tight, confined space with tons of potential spawns. Only some of which you can even tell are gonna be spawns, and you just kind of have to hope that nobody's there. So hopefully that's okay. Well, let's talk about I'm two for two in practice. <laughs> <laughs> this is the start of a sub story that we're not gonna do. Uh, we kind of have no choice but to do this cutscene because she's guarding the exit. Even though you were even though you were walking away from her at that exact moment, she just teleported down. That guy is sus. Yeah. I feel like with this part, this is like, if you're gonna see a Victory Road fight, this is like one of the most common parts. I see a lot of hosts in here. I don't know if that's actually like... Yeah, very okay. few civilians. Okay, we're so good. Nice. To the, the do you bars. like alcohol? Do you like alcohol? If you're going to a bar, yeah. you'd like to think so. Also, shoutouts to this guy with the worst drawn-in facial hair in the entire Oh series. god, yeah, I've never noticed that before. What the hell's <laughs> up with his facial hair? It's, it, it looks... They drew it on with a pencil, what is that? <laughs> Got the interns who made Fist of the North Star to do that. Oof. Maybe that was a little too mean. <laughs> Oh, there's Tatsuya. There's Chef Tatsuya. Once again, stalking our protagonists. Thankfully, you never have to talk to him with the other characters. He just kind of stands there. Oh, but what the hell? Oh, that's oh. so weird. I think I paused on like the first frame of the cutscene or something. <laughs> What was that? Oh, we'll just buy the upgrades once the fight starts. Imagine if that was the only way to skip these cutscenes and you just Whoa. found out that way. Frame, frame that, one. <laughs> I mean, I, I we just have to get good forehead. <laughs> anyway, we're buying the rest of our upgrades now. We're dumping all our points into tech. Essence of finishing knee used to be so important, and now we just don't even get it. And this is the fight that we actually have to do using normal fight tech. One of very few times we'll actually be kicking anybody is Akiyama. The real consideration here is to just make sure that you don't knock anyone down. Because if you do, then it's kind of hard to get lots of damage on them. And also, they take absolutely forever to get back up. <laughs> so, that's sort of why you don't see me doing too many finishing moves there. Um, if you land all of Akiyama's kicks on someone, then they will die without a combo finisher. So we only do the combo finishers if it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> and now we're back to Haruka. The gameplay's been fun, everyone. <laughs> back and forth. Back and forth. This is just a short Haruka section, though, I think. Eh. Let me through. Let me through, please. <laughs> Those guys were forming like a human wall across the, the whole alley. Yeah, and what's funny is that like a lot of uh, a lot of um, Fight spawns just kind of ignore them entirely. Like they have precedence over the pede pedestrians, so they'll just like run through them, even though even though they're brick walls for for our characters here. Here's the forger. He's the old man from chapter two, uh, and he spends all day staring at idle boobs on like eight monitors. And he's ours aren't photoshopped. So that's how he knows we're the best. So that's cool. Thanks, old man. She's got a fake arm or something. 
Puck. It's, sa- it's like not sagging as it should. I guess that makes sense. Apparently, Haruka's never had crab in her life before. Is that what they're talking about there? Yeah. yeah so, oh, so I see. That's why they go to. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is kind of an obnoxious place for the game to leave us. Um, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere here. And in order to get to the taxi to get to where we're going, I have to run through a sub story, so we're just going to do it. Yeah, this. this this uh, sub story kind of has infinite range, so you just, it, it's better to just run into it. This guy is trying to like force his squid on me or something. Well, when you put it that way. <laughs> that is kind of a weird way to put it, isn't it? Well, no thank you for the squid. And we can just ignore him now. Oh boy, that was that was a disgusting reset. <laughs> Arca came to like a complete stop there. Yeah, my move my movement used to be like that, and probably will end up looking like that when I take control. I'm I'm an absolute rust lord at this, though I've been having fun even playing this part of the game the last like two days. So who knows? Maybe I'll come back or something. I have to put the zoomers in their place with this game. <laughs> Yep, tell and you'll and I know it's obviously a problem because it's you know ten hours long, but you two could easily sub ten or sub stories. You two are very much good enough. Good Osaka talent. Uh, throughout the whole game, all the important like one time only locations are at the bottom of the taxi menu. And in this part of the game, the only other taxi we ever used is the first one, so cool. There's just large swaths of Sotenbori that we're never going to visit. The entire, like, northwest corner of the map. So Akiyama just went in and uh, visited Katsuya, who is the president of Osaka Talent. Uh, it, was this the part? No, maybe it's later, but uh, basically Katsuya tries to get Akiyama out of the out of the situation or before it gets out of hand, but he obviously just refuses because he's endangering Haruka in some way. I think that's in the finale or something. <laughs> maybe. Because he's like, oh, anyway, we're, yeah, we're not involved. Uh, in jump scare moment. Um, this is important, actually. So we have to play this rhythm game. This is the one mini game we were talking about before where you have no choice but to do it. Um, and that's because this is practice for round three and you can see the goals in the top right. For practice rounds one and two, you can just ignore the goals and fail all of them. And if you quit out, it's considered failing all of them. But for round three, we have to actually succeed at one of the goals. Otherwise they make you do it again. So we have to sit through this whole thing. But as soon as I get a combo of 40, I can just put the controller down and like go have a snack or something <laughs> yeah this would be the the final long break that you get if you do if yep, you do have 40 break. all right <laughs> it's been real <laughs> she can just screw up everything else i think she's ready i wish they did like uh you know in like guitar hero when you like do a note wrong and it makes that like wrong note noise yeah, it's like the like a scratch or something. Yeah, or like in Rock Band, like the instrument drops out. I wish they missed the notes. She's just like tripping over herself. <laughs> that would be really funny. Like all the notes are just like completely off key. So we have to hear this song in the run.
surprise D-pad input. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just skipping all of them. If you mash them, they just fail immediately. It looks very silly. She is dancing for her life right now, though. Go win the Princess League off, boo. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just messing around trying to make her get bads on all the notes. It's kind of hard to do. Like, you can hit extremely early and they give it to you. Yeah, this, this minigame is surprisingly lenient. I guess because there was so much content, they didn't want to make it... They didn't want to make any, any one part of it, like, too hard to do. Yeah, when you, uh... When you go to select difficulty for this, your choices are easy and normal. There's just no hard mode. Like, you can't even have it harder if, if you want. And even normal is just, like, the easiest thing in the world. I think the only, the only quote-unquote hard song is uh, once you've hit, like, level 20 what? and max, maxed fans, you can actually f have, like, an end bot, like, an end game boss for Haruka. And then, then, and then you play so much more for like the billion, the billionth time, but it's actually is that like, like a harder map. It it is actually harder than the normal. Wow. <laughs> Despite that atrocious performance, uh, Yamura and yeah. Christina still have faith. Like, I in think her. you're ready. <laughs> They're with me. They're sending Hark out to embarrass herself on TV. So here's the weird thing about the final round. Um, we're going to go into the dressing room and there's going to be like the, you know, dressing room cutscene we have to sit through every time. But Yama Ur is going to be like, are you sure you want to go out there and do this? And you can just say no. Like they just give you a no option. If you say no, she's like, are you sure you mean no? And you just be like, yeah, I'm sure. And she's like, all right. And then you just drop out of the Princess League literally like half an hour before the finals. Um, and you can just do that, which completely derails the plot of the game. Um, and it skips a whole bunch of stuff. But the problem is, it causes a cutscene to happen at the end of this chapter, which is really long and unskippable. And so it ends up being faster to enter the Princess League and lose it than to just not even bother and quit out early. Which is a little weird. Oh, shit. Oh, wait, no, yeah, we're good. I said yes. <laughs> I was the... I don't know what I was thinking there. We're fine. Oh man, round three. Because I have you, see ya. Sabotaging Haruka because I'm a T-Set fan. Even when they wear stupid hats, they're still better. Like, the whole... The whole winning the Princess League thing was like the condition to have the concert in the Tokyo Dome. So you'd think at this point the port would be really messed up, but we're just gonna go do it anyway. Yeah. It's fine. We have this cutscene here where T sets like, you were good, and that's it. And Ark is just like, <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, you can hang and with us. And that sets up the plot fine, nothing. I guess. <laughs> yeah, she's like, maybe sometime we should do a giant concert into Japan Dome. It's time for real, real gaming. It is. Big speed tech coming up soon. Yeah, that was, I want to say, the last Aruka. So from here on out, it's all Akiyama. Hey, it's that Osaka detective again. He's actually where he's supposed to be. Okay. 
I need an Aosaka detective. Okay, please leave. It's a little bit sus that he leaves, and literally the instant he leaves, Hakamata shows back up. You ever think about that? And Hakamata's <laughs> with the Omi Alliance? Do you think there's any relation? Like, surely he was leaving as they were coming in, and he was just like, all right, you boys seem normal. Here's Hakamata round two. Uh, if you remember how we dealt with Hakamata in round one, um, yes. The answer is yes. Why do I keep getting this trash heat action instead of the good one? It might be because he wasn't getting on. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. It might be. <laughs> well, he's dead now. So now we're finally going to get to go do Akiyama's set piece. And Akiyama's set piece is kind of the spiciest set piece in the game-ish. Top, top three. Top three spiciest. Yeah, um, we're going to do a gigantic set piece skip in it. And I'll go ahead and explain how all that works. I assume Froob explained it, but that was like three-ish hours, three -ish ago. hours ago. <laughs> yeah. And if anyone's actually been here for three hours, then congrats, you should be a Yakuza speedrunner. <laughs> you have what it takes. <laughs> oh no, shoot. Ah, it wrapped around. It, it, it's okay. I can't even blame the game for that. That's... I can't even blame the game for that. That's just me pressing down on the D-pad too many times, because I'm bad. The good news is we're really rich, so if this was Yakuza 3, that would be a reset the run moment. But in Yakuza 5, who even cares? Yeah. Akiyama's blessed with money in Q, and the rest of the characters aren't, so we have to be... He's actually surprisingly poor in the all-sub-stories route. It's really weird. <laughs> Akiyama having no money is like a massive issue in Hondo as well. I, yeah, I somehow ended up like having no money on him for Kamurocho after I got the alcohol, and I was like, "What? Yeah. What did this happen?" Because it didn't Poverty happen the man. first time. Anyway, so here's the tech. Here's how this is gonna work. Let me kill these guys. The gist of a set piece skip is that lower third text causes event triggers to not happen. So lower third text is there should be some. Yeah, that's lower third text. And whenever that's on screen, we can just run through event triggers, including those that make slow and undesirable things happen. There's a whole bunch of event triggers in this set piece that we don't want to have to do. What I'm going to do to try to get lower third text to happen on command is I'm going to buffer it through the invisible wall that's stopping me from moving forward right now. So I'm going to deal with most of the enemies in this fight, but not all of them. Oh shit. Ah, oh, really? That guy had no um, health. Um, I've never failed that. You're kidding me. Well, this is what we would be skipping. I can't even believe I just failed that. I can't even believe that just happened, dude. Well, so we would skip that, and then if we come by here, we would get to run straight through that wall, and it would look really cool. And I can't believe I failed that. The entire rest of this run was going so good up to this point. I, I, I hate this. This sucks. I can't even remember the last time I saw this cutscene. It's been years. That's like the easiest one, too. <laughs> Literally just like, that's so dumb. That's so dumb. So we'd skip those two cutscenes and then this fight is also a required fight that we wouldn't have to do. Why did I do that? Now I'm just like capitulating. Die, please. Oh my god, you! Uh, okay. No, there's more. Uh, I, I literally can't even remember the last time I've done this fight. I, what the heck? That's like the easiest <laughs> trick in the run. Just one guy! Yep, I forgot. As soon as I saw the text, I remembered. Yeah, there's one guy who just hides back there. Unbelievable, dude. That's That sucks. That's awful. He has no arm. This is what the Yakuza 5 runners are going to do to me after I'm done streaming this. For failing that trick. I 
can't even believe that, dude. The guy had like one HP. He must have had no health to die to that. That's that's so dumb. I'm I'm not gonna stop complaining about this. That's so dumb. On the bright side, you don't have to fight these guys. <laughs> yeah, they're skippable. They just let you waltz in. Do you blackjack the upstairs guy? Yes. Okay, I'll do it too then. Oh. I don't know why I even <laughs> tried that. I don't know why I even tried that. So it's faster to kick the doors open so you don't have to see that animation. But, um... Meh. As Akiyama, it's really awkward to get the doors kicked open. You have a stamina and spark in your inventory now. Yeah, I have that spark. I I guess did I pick it up back there somewhere? Yeah, it was where the it was where the last guy was. All right, well I'll let you have the spark in the finale. <laughs> we focus the guy with the crowbar first because he has a ton of health and also he's really annoying. And killing him means that two of those guys get scared, which lets us kill them in one hit because it's kind of a weird mechanic in this game. Um, it mostly happens with random encounters, but there's a few places in the story where it happens as well where someone in the fight is considered the boss of the fight, and if you kill them, then it makes everyone else get scared. Yeah, this is the, Here the, we can use the furniture bounding yeah. to kill everyone in way fewer hits than usual. It's pretty satisfying. That's the last we ever see of Ogita. He is dead. What? Is this man sleeping or deceased? He's dead. Here's a big fight. Just a bunch of dudes. The only real skill here is making sure you know how much HP everyone has so you can try to spread it out efficiently. Ew, that was bad. That was really bad. Now we have two guys on the ground, which I said earlier is the opposite of what you want to be doing. Why did that guy get targeted exactly? <laughs> You're really at the mercy of Akiyama's targeting sometimes, or he'll just swap between enemies. And it's just like, weird. I don't know. I'm really annoyed about that. Everyone has to contribute a major mistake to the run. Rube got random encounters, I did that, and now you have to screw something up for you. <laughs> it's okay, uh, Shinada's combat is very difficult. Yeah, are you gonna... I Yeah, just... Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, accidentally pick the wrong character in the finale to go to the camera show hills. Oh no. I, I wouldn't wish... I wouldn't wish a failed set-piece skip in the sewers on anyone. No. Not even Ryu. <laughs> no, I was talking about the time when we you have, have to pick a uh, to to. yeah victory road. I'm just gonna just gonna pump the brakes for a sec until we're like very clear of him. Okay. Karate outfit guy was victory road, so he runs ridiculously fast, and if you fight him, he blocks everything and has a ton of health. We really don't want to fight that. We do have spare blackjacks. We actually buy more than, than you really need. Right. Like... Yeah, very easily. Like, I think... I wasn't paying attention, but I'm pretty sure we still have the full right D-pad blackjack and then two more in storage. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Hutter. Hear me out. When when you get to the top of Kamurocho Hills, pick pick Saijima to fight Kiryu. <laughs> it's actually not. It, there are ways to deal with Kiryu when you when you when you pick Saijima. So it wouldn't be that. It wouldn't really be that bad. But you kind of have to be pretty spot on with your 
And you also needed like an extra upgrade so you can deal with him. So it wouldn't actually be that bad, but it, it is faster to do it the Damn. other way around. Well, final walking section. We have to go immediately back to where we came from. This entire four chapters of the game that I've been playing, if you haven't noticed by now, is literally just walking back and forth between this taxi and Dinah Chair. Like, they put Haruka's house right next to this taxi, so even when you're walking to her house, it's still the exact same path. Just up and down the same road. Where did the- okay. I- <laughs> I, like, actually flinched when I saw that guy. I- Just like, okay, sure game. Sure. No encounters, though. Super clean. You got it. How can I let another Haruka fan down? Ugh, cringy Haruka Sawamura fans. Here's Kanai again. Yep, yep here he is. Once again. Getting blackjacked again. <laughs> oh my lord. Oh shoot, I was out of blackjack. Well, we're doing this. Yeah, I... It's this kind of situation where you make one mistake and then it, you get preoccupied by thinking about your mistake and you make one million other mistakes. Does anyone else do that or is that just a me thing? Uh, that's so that's not totally cool. not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I mean, on the bright I hope side... I you weren't planning still... on using that. <laughs> on the bright side, he's still, uh, he's still down the count. Yeah. I hope you weren't planning on using that for like Kanai 4 or something. Oh no, it's it's not it's not worth using in general. Yeah, it's super not, but you never know. We have to succeed this QTE because it ends the fight. Uh, if we don't kill him like that, then we have to take out all of the minions who are still hanging around, which I don't want to do. Anyway, that is pretty much it. There's a couple cutscenes, and then my part will be done, and I'll hand it over to Ryu. This is, uh... This is the great part of the story, where Haruka gets kidnapped, then released, then kidnapped again by the same person, and then freed. <laughs> it's great. Good, good, good writing. Extremely hectic story. Mm. Anyway, there we are. We're good. Uh, you can pause the timer or something here. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a quick break, everybody, while we uh, get the uh, save handed off, and uh, we'll progress with the uh, the second or second, the fourth part of the uh, the run. We'll see you in just a few minutes, everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. We are in the middle of a Yakuza. Well, we're near the end of a Yakuza 5 speed run. We are showcasing it off. Uh, we are on to our third runner of the day. I'll hand it over, and uh, whenever you're ready, you can get right back into it. Hello, my name is Ryu Hosen. I ran this game one uh, a couple of times, and now I'm world record holder, and now I'm very nervous and quaking in my boots based on what happened in the previous part. So let's hope it just goes as smoothly as possible. <laughs> All right, I uh, yeah, I'm I'm ready to go. Uh, uh, can, can I start? Yeah, whenever you're ready, just give a quick countdown. All right, uh, five, four, three, two, one, go. And there's an immediate cutscene there. Very helpful. So, part four, Tatsu Shinoda. This is a new character introduced in this game. Uh, and it, it seems really, really out of place to suddenly introduce a, a new character like four hours into the run. But uh, he does actually have a place in the story, so to speak. But if you ask me, I think I think it's better. It would have been better if he was uh, part of a completely separate story from uh, remo removed from the Tojo clan. Does feel a bit shoehorned in, sadly. 
Yep, here, here's another guy with a, with a pencil, pencil drawn facial hair. A couple of guys like, uh, like him around these parts. Um, you might, you might have already noticed that, like, Kinecho isn't, uh, doesn't really take kind to despawning its, uh, its pedestrians. So they're mostly still going to be there, but I, I just pan down out of force of habit. So, so Tatsushinada's backstory here is that he used to be a pro baseball player who is now, uh, who is now an adult, uh, industry journalist. Um, this is basically what his life has amounted to because he was apparently found out, uh, apparently, allegedly found out to be, uh, stealing signs, which is a huge deal in, uh, in Japan's uh, baseball culture, so he's running around doing all of these uh, these errands. So he's kind of like in, he's kind of like meeting up with the with the manager here, trying to get another interview with one of the one of the masseuses. I think this is a massage parlor. So this is gonna be a very weird cut. This is gonna be a very weird cut scene because we're skipping it so fast. You notice that uh, Shinada was about to reach for his phone, but instead uh, the manager just kind of like <laughs> handed one to him. So it looks like he stole his. It still looks like he stole his phone, or like it looks like Shinada stole his phone, even though like the cutscene would have shown normally that he was taking out his phone and giving it to the manager. It's again another uh, yet another of uh, things that you only see when you've run the game multiple times. It. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really weird, but yeah. Kind of funny for like a cutscene to, to break like that when you're skipping it as fast as you possibly can. So we're, so we're trying to help uh, Milky's brother. That, that's the name of the... Uh, the name of the hostess or masseuse. And now we get right into the meat of his, his uh, combat. Well, sort of. You notice those desks over there? We're going to use them. Just uh, smack them a bunch. Well, oh, that was really good. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, there we go. Just a couple more smacks. That was. Uh, it looked really good, but I, I, I kind of messed up the, the follow-ups there. Now we're trying to get. Uh, Get her brother out of the situation. So apparently, what he did was he broke he broke a prized bat, like something that belongs in the museum, and he just kind of broke it. But with uh, Shinada's uh, expertise in baseball, he finds out that the bat is completely fake because of like some compressed bat uh, thing that happened all the way in the eighties. And then the the manager of the place comes up and uh, depending on how you look at it, properly reprimands Ono for uh, for fooling uh, fooling Toriyama into thinking that he actually did something wrong. And uh, you will get an unsavory scene right here. Ooh, yikes! <laughs> He was going to go in for more. So yeah, so far it's been completely detached from from the plot of Yakuza 5 so far. Almost like they almost like it was a completely different story that should have been its separate game, but I digress. We're still going to move on with Shinada because we are stuck with him for this part. It is named after him after all. So we have our a proper interview with Milky. Few cutscenes here and there. So you saw like a little bit of his combat. We're not going to be quite there yet. 
to show to really show it off because assuming these pedestrians got out of the way we have another walk and talk there's uno that's his friend that was banging on his door earlier So, Shinada, as it turns out, is actually in, in trouble with a loan shark. He owes a buttload of money to this loan shark. And in just one year's worth of time, he's accumulated a debt of over a million yen, or actually like several million yen. I don't know, the game, the game only gives him a check for like one million yen, so... Oh yeah, by the way, if you remember, four hours earlier, I was talking about how you can skip, <laughs> you can kind of do a thing within this uh, walk and talk. That is the only piece of dialogue that you can skip in all three of the walk and talks. It saves like 15 minutes, or not 15, 15 seconds, not 15 minutes, 15 seconds. And uh, yeah, it kind of ruins like the, the break period you have. The rest of it is still like long enough to where you can take a very quick break. But for all intents and purposes, the, the Haruka one from before is the final one that you have in like a solo run. So the main family that happens to be running this place is the Nagoya family. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Uno is understandably wary of the threat that they pose to this uh, to the city because they could be literally anywhere because they're they don't look like Yak. There, no one here remotely looks Yakuza like, uh, as uh, Shinada put it. So. <laughs> and then uh, Uno starts talking about this girl that happens to be an actually an old, uh, an old uh, hostess or whatever. And then throws Uno for a loop and then starts running away. Get out of here! And then he literally runs away. Now we head for a batting center because we are literally down to 217 yen. Uh, you can see it right there. And uh, because well, because we already kind of already paused here, we might as well upgrade uh, Shinada. And a fun fact, those are the only two upgrades you actually need with Shinada. Now, his moveset's a little weird. The, oh, before we, before we get into that, we are interrupted by the editorial office. And get these answers right. Uh, the club is Futomomo, and the hostess was Milky. I hope I did that right. I know I did at least one of them right, but I might have done that wrong. It's okay to get one wrong because uh, you will. They will give you a prize later. Our and, selection uh, is also one of the only randomized selections. Like it's the same answer each time, but they're in different spots or potentially different spots each run. Yeah. The, the optimal RNG is to just have, uh, is to just have the uh, both of the options at the top, because that way you can skip the dialogue as fast as possible. But you know, obviously, you can't always be that lucky. So this guy's coming at us with a knife. We're gonna come at him with an iron pipe, uh, or not? I am only punching this guy, and that is because, spoiler alert, that iron pipe is not good for attacking. It is good for a different reason, but not for, not for actually attacking with it. We'll find out how we do that along with the upgraded, uh, the upgrades that we got fairly soon. But first we have to do this batting center work, which is very important because he needs to make money. He's now down to 17 yen. <laughs> and uh, even though this looks like... this, Even though this sort of looks like a mini game that we can skip, uh, this is actually a more of a tutorial, so we kind of have to go through with it. And uh, for the record, even if you did fail this, um, I think it still gives you infinite chances. So hit one home run in 30 pitches. Oh, jeez, I hope I get that. It'll be a fastball. 
There we go. I actually almost missed it there. I was a pretty late hit. <laughs> it is actually surprisingly fast. Yeah. And considering you've been going through, you know, a whole bunch of downtime in the last couple of chapters, it is easy to just be a little less enthusiastic about this bit. <laughs> I mean, it's still gameplay, so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm down with it. Also, Takasugi. If you listen closely, that is actually his theme. Of course, modeled by uh, Sho Aikawa. He always gets his own theme in these games. Unfortunately, you don't hear very much of it because, <laughs> because uh, we're trying to go fast here. Youth on his feet and youth on his butt, telling us how to do better at batting, which we're are unfortunately not really going to do all, all that much of. So another friend's going to call us and be like, oh, hey, did you just get paid? And then <laughs> you have to break the news that we are literally down to 17 yen and our meal ticket was snatched away from us. Now we get into Kinecho exploration. There is a guy right there, but because... Uh, because the area is so open, I can usually just walk around without needing to slow down. There's that guy on the right there. I believe that is another uh, victory road. I'm going to play it safe here. There might be another one on this corner. There isn't. And we just walk in. So all the all the characters that Shinada has interacted with so far, they're going to be important a little later on. I mean, they are his friends. He's basically been in this this town ever since he he got banned from baseball. So he's he's kept them very close to his heart. And now we have Ono here. He's trying to get back at us for um really stealing his thunder in the office and act and getting his cheek stabbed with a pen which is a uh, not not something I wish on my worst enemies but of course you know oh no confrontational as ever just doesn't buy that Shinada was just calling him out on his uh out on his lies all right, so we're going to take out the pipe, right? And not accidentally take out a cigarette. So we're going to take out the pipe, use the heat action. And get the infinite going. Oh. Uh, sorry, my my screen actually just went out. That's uh, unusual. Oh no. Yeah, okay, this <laughs> I was hoping they would go a little better than that, but I don't know. I don't know if it I don't know if that's like my monitor or my uh or my uh game actually failing to render the game, but it like completely went black there, so that's why I messed up the combo, which is a bit unfortunate, but fortunately that didn't go too south. But yes, that the upgrades that we just got uh from the batting center back then or right before we got into the batting center is actually one for one to upgrade his uh damage when he uh when he's drunk and also my explosive finish which is basically his version of kiryu's bounding throw so he can also so like kiryu he can also do one although it is sort of limited in the way he can do it as you can see i had to be very like I had to be basically uh, very um, quick with my actions and ensuring that he, uh, he like the enemies get hit from behind because it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work nearly as well if they're coming from uh, the front. You're doing you're trying to do it from the front, but uh, if you get enough loops, you have just you build up just enough heat for the the heat action, a uh, pipe heat action, which you might have noticed does like almost like more than half a bar of, of health. And considering Shinada's um, bosses, um, not a lot of them have a ton of health. So it's very useful. Like the pipe isn't like really good for attacking because it's an, an infinite weapon with like five attack or something. 
but the heat action is very, very, very damaging. So uh, you might have... Am I, I just glossed over that character there. That is definitely not someone that's been missing for the past four hours. Um, just a totally unique uh, character that is introduced solely for... Uh, <laughs> Solely for Shinada's uh, you know, place in the story. You know, no real connection. Oh. Yep, I forgot about that email. And now there's someone in front of our house. This is one of his high school rivals. Trying to get him back into shape for baseball? Question mark. It's not very well explained, especially when we're especially when we're skipping the text like this. But I think it's the idea is that all of them want to settle. Uh, all of them want to settle their score with uh, Shinada, but fortunately, this is a mini game, and we can just skip it. And then he's going to he's going to call you out on your your throwing of the of the mini game, and we'll just give you more time to complete it later on. Which uh, spoiler we're not going to do. <laughs> that's his. Uh, so that's Shinada's side mission. Um, Arika's side mission was kind of like all the side stories that you could see in the on the leader on the the whiteboard. Um, and Saijima's was hunting, so. Everyone except for Akiyama basically has a, a side mission like this. But uh, we probably do like the least amount of it. Like in the case of in case of Shinoda, his is probably like the least involved because we just don't have to do all that much with it. So his old team, his old team is trying to like get back, get back together or something. Again, the the, the plot's a little lost on me, but uh, but uh, Shinada, you know, with with everything that's going on lately, is trying to slowly get his life back together. It's very much a big part of this is obviously baseball, and if you're not into baseball, you're gonna struggle a little bit. But it's baseball, man. Everyone loves baseball, man. <laughs> My monitor went out again. Oh, no, oh, no. no it, it, it's like it's like it'll, it'll briefly like it'll briefly cut to black and then and then come back to normal. I don't know why it it, it it seems to only do this with uh, whenever I'm running a game, so it might be like a <laughs> it's either a monitor issue or a, a GPU issue. But considering the game's still running fine, I think it might be a monitor issue, or there's like a bunch of electrical interference for some reason around my setup. So Shinada kind of lets himself get beat up for. Uh, Trying to defend the the gigants. I, I actually don't know how how that name is pronounced. I think it's gigants. We're gonna get you know get a little bit of a pep talk from uh, from Milky. We're gonna visit her. Whoa! Yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, like throughout throughout the run, we've been like panning down the camera the entire time, but doing so. Doing so might accidentally be like, it might induce motion sickness, and for that we apologize. And like it for like for this map, it, it really doesn't even work all that well. So probably could afford to do it less. This. Should be the part where we, uh, yep, we get our message saying that uh, we got we got the we're gonna have our reward for 
for the editorial piece that we made with uh, with Milky. And hopefully there are no fight spawns here. Even relatively. Oh, good thing I stopped right there. I'm gonna try walking very slowly. This is not minimum speed. I'm just. Oh, there are a lot of people. Just those two guys. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that's a. I don't think that's a victory road guy, but he's a bit menacing to be sure. Yeah, we only have to go down this road like twice, and both times this road can just be really nasty. Oh, you know what? We don't have to go that far. <laughs> you know, I have. I have had an idea. I've had an had an idea with the uh, regarding the. Um, Regarding the, the the rich men around the Kanecho, you could potentially get a lot of money from them, and not have to sell the stamina at Royale. But that's only if that's only yeah. if you can that's only if you like actually get money from them. If you need to sell, if you like get into a fight with them and then sell, have to like sell something anyway, then it wouldn't have been worth it. But if you do get money, it could save you. Like because like. The heat action, right? The pipe heat action. You could probably just yeah. use that to instantly defeat them. But uh, yeah, that's that's just a theory crafting thing. I haven't really gotten into it, but that's that is a potential idea we could do in future runs, which sucks because it's you know <laughs> sort of RNG in like the the fourth hour of a six hour long run. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would be horrible to rely on, and also just sometimes not even getting the move over goes. I wonder, yeah. if, I wonder if, like, because we're this late in the game, whether they're, like, programmed to drop, like, specifically rarer items or not. That's a good question. But, um, yeah, like, the, the thing with Shinada, right, he doesn't have a lot of money. We do have that stamina royal we can sell, but actually, if you do a, like, basically any sub-story with him, he I, just gets what? enough money to do, <laughs> he just gets enough money to do, uh, uh, to buy whatever he, whatever he needs. Because the sub stories actually give him quite a bit of money, but in this case, the the stamina, selling the stamina on Royale is just more efficient. Oh, the monitor cut out again. It's strange because this wasn't happening before. This wasn't happening like in my. In my warm up last night, it's kind of disappointing to see that it's like affecting my game again. Yeah, we're gonna speak to we're gonna speak to uh, Uno again. Oh my goodness, that is right in front. Ooh. That is right in front of his. Okay, he's not turning this way, but I'm I'm still cautious. Yeah, because that's definitely a victory road guy. Okay. Mm. Or maybe it's the <laughs> maybe maybe it is the cable that's bad. Udo's off to to God knows where. You have to have to find out where exactly he went. And unfortunately for this bit, we kind of do have to uh, travel across the entire city to find out where where he really is. Oh, I could, there, there wasn't anyone there. I could have, I could have just taken the sidewalk straight up. Okay, so actually, Uno's somewhere, somewhere down in the. <laughs> 
<laughs> is actually somewhere down, like down south. So we're gonna have to go all the way over there. Yeah, unfortunately, we have to go to the right areas, even though we know where to go. You just won't load him in until you've been to the correct ones. Yeah, actually, I don't. I don't think this may or may not be like an initial spot. Like where like it's like one of the two waypoints that it gives you. I have to let this car pass because <laughs> he. Oh yeah, that's also a, a Iono Koji. That's a that's Shinada's a move master, or rather weapon master. But uh, yeah, we obviously don't want to run into him because uh, it would take forever to both get out of the cutscene and learn any like worthwhile moves. Nah. In fact, I don't think you can even use heat actions on him, so the only way to really deal with him is to do <laughs> do the explosive finish infinite. Oh. <laughs> Takasugi got blocked by the pedestrian for a little bit. All these in-engine cutscenes are like <laughs> cobbled together. The, the classic. All right, so this is the part where we were sort of, sort of joking about earlier on, and making, uh, <laughs> making sure we don't run into any more QTEs of that nature. I am. So the idea is that you don't want to you don't want to cut any corners uh, on the road, like not even like not even past like these uh, pylons here. You want to make you want to make like a a path like on the road exclusively, basically until uh, I think after uh, Takasugi leaves your leaves your company, like he like he just uh, like he, he's not with us anymore. And now we're now we're just kind of uh, <laughs> trying to get trying to get some some info out of out of Uno while also getting a back massage because uh, this is a massage parlor and uh, <laughs> Shinada is friends with a lot of massage parlors apparently. So Uno, Uno notices that Shinada drops his phone and also gets a little bit, his head shakes a little bit because uh, high FPS no. is weird for Yakuza 5. <laughs> or it could just be a PC thing, I, I'm not sure. But yeah, some some of the characters act really awkwardly when uh, when you're skipping like this. So Manabe is the next person we have to look for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So stick to the road, as usual. Hopefully there are no fight spawns on the road so that we can... <laughs> we can smoothly uh, walk across here. Not exactly what I had in mind, but... Uh, I think that... Uh, whatever. <laughs> we needed to go here anyway. Because this is the pawn shop to actually sell our stuff. You know, Takasugi went in front of us, so he's just standing there. <laughs> so now we have more than enough money to uh, taxi to where we need. We do need a taxi a couple of times with Shinada. And, uh, oh, that's... Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> it, it cut out again. Sorry. Um, it might be... It might be better... It might actually be better if I'm on if I'm on borderless. Yeah, sorry if it's like Is the is the feed still there? Can Yep. Can, yeah, we still see it. Okay. 
hopefully that fixes the issue. I know it's like kind of, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know why it's doing this all of a sudden. It was totally fine before. Yeah, things happen. It's all good. Tech is haunted. <laughs> Marathon unluck. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> don't need to move the camera for this bit. Although you do get to see more of the, the restaurant that way. So Manabe was used to be part of the same team as a, as Shinada. He's going to get the get the scoop on uh, whether whether the games were fixed or not because this is a really <laughs> serious issue in in the baseball apparently. He also he also makes a an an an, uh, an analogy uh, between baseball and meat. <laughs> That may or may not actually be like related. Ooh. Right. Um, my notes tell me that it is actually safe to take corners again, but I am not buying it one bit. I'm still going to take the middle <laughs> just to be safe. But we can go straight back to Uno's. Surprisingly quiet in HO <laughs> and very kind lately. I guess I guess the the monitor cutting out actually <laughs> actually made them not want to spawn anywhere near me now. <laughs> The dumbest fight tech ever. It's tied to your monitor's refresh rate. <laughs> Getting rid of your refresh rate gets rid of the enemies. <laughs> yeah, PC, PC ports uh, for Yakuza games are really, really cursed. No. It, it actually wouldn't surprise me if that if yes. the if it was the if the code was cobbled together like that in such a way that you could do things like that and actually no. use it as speed tech. Taga. And now we have the kicker. Agasugi is not actually part of the Nagoya family. He's just a upstanding loan shark. <laughs> I don't know how you would describe him, but he's he, he's not actually like he's a nice guy. He's just, you know, coercive with his uh, methods. Now Shinada is more motivated than ever to uh, to find the truth about about his uh, his baseball ban. And now, hear that beautiful music in the background. We are doing another chase. Unfortunately, this guy's really annoying. So. Uh, he likes to he likes to move very fast. Also, it's super weird. You had to actually follow the same path as him. That little bit to the left, it looks like you can cut over. If you do that, the game gives you a game over. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, these pedestrians are a bit of a problem because you can slow down too much and potentially just game over. Wow. <laughs> He's all. <laughs> yep. He's off, and uh, he's in charge. Following him really carefully so we don't lose him. Uh, I did hit him a little bit for uh, for heat, which is important because uh, there will be a boss coming up, and you will need to smack him with a pipe a couple of times. I missed, but it, it's okay because <laughs> that's the end of the chase anyway. Now, he was trying to gas up the massage parlor earlier, and now all of a sudden, a bunch of girders. Oof. 
hands over there very suspiciously, and there's a guy in a hard hat who doesn't look like he's he was involved in that uh, accident at all. This is where you find out that Shinada actually has excellent vision. 2010. Much better than 2020. But you could tell that Sakai was probably the one that that dropped out the the girders. <clears throat> and <laughs> the pipe just coming out of thin air with you know just because it's it's Yakuza. Don't worry about it. Man, he, he has a lot of problems with his previous baseball life. Everyone is coming after him. <laughs> so this is Sakai. We, we need to smack him with a pipe. Oh, wait, I... Yeah, I, I took a little too long. Yeah, it's hard to overstate yeah, it's, how it is, precise it, this is. It, 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 is, it is pretty difficult. I'm just gonna do it the, the safe way. Then not, not only precise, you also have to be like at a certain point. You can't do it from his legs. You have to do it from like the shoulder. Yeah. It's something I've not actually fully got to grips with yet. I really need to. Yeah, I'm just gonna do the fast heat action. To fix that fight a little bit. Yeah, I, I I had a feeling that would probably mess that up a lot because especially for Sakai because Sakai actually gets up slower than than all of the other bosses. Mm. So this is basically right after he hit that home run. And uh, this baseball fan might look a little familiar, but we'll <laughs> get to that to later. Hide it really badly. <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get to that later. Oh. <laughs> it's him sitting in the detention center or whatever. Now we're back to the present. And as it turns out, Shinada, despite having lost most of his motivation for baseball, actually has a whole database on basically every single game that the that his rival team played. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a bit of a mixed storytelling <laughs> telling here, but you know, it's it's all good. It's mostly <laughs> the story is mostly consistent. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Takasugi. A little bit in the way. Making sure no one's right in front of Tatsuya or anything. Yeah, Ayano Koji's still there, so you gotta gotta run past him. Relatively nice Kanecha. And maybe the, the monitor going out really really did change. <laughs> <laughs> really did change how the the fight spawns work. Uh, I forget what that article is about. I can't I can't read Japanese unfortunately, but I do believe that is uh, it has something to do with uh, either the team leadership or uh, or some or something else. I believe so. It actually, was subtitled in the original PS3 version, but for some reason wasn't in the remaster. Yeah. The one th yeah, one thing we we've glossed over is that the 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 localization uh for the original PS3 version of the game and the remastered version are different. They they changed a few a few sentences and we'll get to one particularly infamous one later on in the finale. Um or maybe it was always like that. I'm not sure. I I don't I don't quite remember, but uh <laughs> Some of the translations are not accurate, and I guess they they want to make it like more flashy in a sense. 
But now Milky's in trouble, and we have to immediately uh, come to her rescue. And Tak Takasugi, for some reason, just oh, and he's gone. <laughs> Oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> so we actually have to go to Uno-san first. That uh, the taxi waypoint was a bit of a fake out. Because the Uno is in more trouble than, than Milky is. Also, that's Victory Road again. Karate guy. This is, there seems to be a karate, uh, someone in a karate gi, like, everywhere. Yeah, I feel like we've seen him every city today. <sighs> yeah, we're fine. Okay, so we actually need to be, uh, oh, we, we need to buy a couple of things before we, before we head out. You are going to do a set piece with Shinada. <clears throat> We shouldn't need anything else. <laughs> we're gonna get. We're gonna actually use the the boozer's lore to our advantage uh, later on in the set piece. Making sure there's no one here. Cool. There's one guy all the way to the left. We don't care about him. So there was a there was a sub story that would have been there but takasugi would actually the presence of takasugi actually disabled that sub story so we will have to run around a, a little bit uh again this, to my knowledge this is the this is the probably the best spot to to be in it's just over there to the left and there's another guy we we are far enough to the left that he won't even see us. Well, he saw us, but he's not. Uh, is it storage rooms? Yeah, <laughs> it's always at the bottom. It, it, usually, yeah. uh, I, I think it's always at the bottom. But I've <laughs> yeah, our town stuff is, which is also weird because like obviously the game says, hey, you got to go to the docks, and the docks have a separate option. If they that's do, obviously yeah. the fishing one. So very, totally not suspicious warehouse. Um, so before we get in, we are going to use uh, two beers just to just to keep the the drunk state running for the duration of the set piece. Now the damage buff isn't particularly noticeable until you start doing the heat action. So ideally we do. So ideally we we get the one heat action and just. Hit, hit the boss a couple of times. And we're going to see that several times because, uh, well, <laughs> well, first we, we kind of get knocked out and that sound was a bit inappropriate. It just kind of sounded like a, like someone hitting like a, a slab of meat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, um, yeah, the increased damage will help a little bit. It, it'll shorten our com or the, the combos a little bit. Um, and deal extra damage to bosses, so that and to have it carry around, carry out through the entire set piece with only one menu is uh, is pretty good. The extra beers are actually like like we only need four, but we have uh, we have like six just in case. In fact, I think we have enough money to where you can just fill out your entire inventory. But uh, yeah, we're, we're we're conservative today. Not trying to promote a negative or. <laughs> A negative message regarding the use of alcohol and making it sh making you stronger somehow. So the reason we actually uh, drank the alcohol back there is because this cutscene plays, or rather, this uh, um, so this uh, lower third text is actually. Um, it actually prevented us from uh, from like pausing in the first place. So we want ideally we want the uh, 
we, we want the, the boost like in advance so that we don't have to worry about it. So this is the forklift section that we alluded to maybe like four and a half hours ago. <laughs> it is uh, very difficult to not get hit in this section because uh, in 60 FPS you kind of uh, they kind it kind of runs faster than uh, than you than you do. Oh, he didn't get stuck there. I think that's the spot where <laughs> that's a spot where Rube managed to get it stuck, but not so lucky this time. Yeah. You might be wondering, why don't we just go behind the forklift? Uh, it reverses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're all, you're usually going to get hit at least once or twice. And it's not unusual to get stuck like that and <laughs> and just uh, have your, your run ruined by a forklift. One of these like fence breaking bits is really weird as well because you can hit like the middle one for some reason it will break the one on the left just because the hitboxes. It's really weird. Yeah. So unsurprisingly. Kubota is the the boss that we're going to have to deal with throughout the set piece. And uh, as you may have surmised from like all the characters showing up in in the in the warehouse, they are in fact the actual Nagoya family. And they don't look like Yakuza because they really are just uh, they really are just like kind of like a band of civilians. So yeah, our increased damage from from the drunk state uh, gives us just enough damage to to defeat him with a very simple combo like that. It's also, these guys that if you're fast enough will actually um, will actually um, get feared. Oops. Oh, I'm messing up my commas a little bit. I'm not, I'm not landing every hit as intended. A lot of weird things happening today. You yeah, have had all sorts of luck. Yeah. Oh, and Takasugi actually finished someone off. Hey. Much, yeah, so, like, much like earlier, we just don't usually leave our AI partners to try and take care of people, but eh. Sometimes. Oh, that guy tried to grab me. Oh, <laughs> lock on. <laughs> See, I always, I always tried this this series for uh, having having pretty bad lock on in basically every game of the series, and you know, we praise the combat for you know games like Yakuza Zero, but it's it's usually the same. Also, that was a bit of an accident. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that move. I'm gonna be QTE right here. And uh, surprise, surprise, it's Kubota again. Take out her crusty pipe here. Wait for the heat action prompt. Because for some reason, it only it only activates when he's a uh, it only activates when he's about to attack. I guess th th there's a cooldown between cutscenes as well. A bunch of people are going to get uh, get feared. You preferably want to take down this guy and that guy. Uh, <laughs> not, yeah, like it's it's pretty hard to like get like more than two people. Oh god! Yeah, <laughs> don't want to use that staff there. Or pole, whatever. Oh, it stuns him with the, with the get off me. Yeah, so this combo usually takes care of most bosses. There are some enemies that are like actually uniformed with like the like with the blue with the blue suit and the 
uh, and the red tie, those enemies have more health, which requires the explosive finish. But otherwise, it's like not too bad. And Kubota, as, as usual, you're gonna just gonna smack him around a bit. Okay. That was a little late, but it, it was good enough. <laughs> Gonna hit this guy for heat. <laughs> Don't need the gun. And now this is where Kubota makes his final stand. And for some reason we will be teleported all the way there. <laughs> The internet going, and I think you just you know, smack him once. Okay, <laughs> a little bit more effort was required there, but uh, that was good enough, I'd say. Yeah. Relatively smooth, no issues. And yeah, now we have this. Manabe. Gonna get that infinite started. There we go. He's gonna taunt, and we're just gonna smack him again. And that's the end of that. Whew. All right. I can do the infinite still. It's just, it's just very nerve-wracking because of the tight window you have. My bounding throw just needs to warm up a bit. Yeah. This is actually this is this is actually good warm up for for bounding throw. Oh, the level up prompt. Oh, it's slow. <laughs> the two cutscenes here, and we find out that the one making, uh, the one that like basically orchestrated the entire the entire uh, banning situation was actually uh, his old coach. Uh, what was it, Fujita? Yes, Coach Fujita. Yeah. So he's the one that. That started the whole thing, and now Shinada is kind of uh, dejected. But duty, duty calls, and he has to inform the masked man of what he knows. This uh, masked man that we totally do not know. <laughs> no idea. Nope, never seen him. He looks like a super boss, actually. But uh, we won't, we won't see those guys either. For this bit, I kind of want to be careful again because I have had a fight spawn exactly where we're supposed to go. <laughs> Low down. And here. So, this checkpoint's a little weird. I'm, I'm not sure it's supposed to work like this, but for some reason, touching this invisible wall triggers the call. It, it's just the most convenient place to do it, so... That's where we are. And we can just walk straight back home. And can you imagine the, the masked man, like, being this angry at us just for, like, stepping out for... <laughs> just, like, just a couple <laughs> of blocks down the road? It's like, just so weird. Like, you don't invite someone to your house and then walk off. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, it it was such a short walk, though. It was like twenty <laughs> seconds, and he still got mad. Yeah, well, so my he's bad. a pain in the backside because he's standing on our bed with his shoes on right now. Every other yeah. character removes their shoes indoors, but the mask man, no. Yeah, this man has no respect. It's definitely not like he was reprimanded many decades ago for being disrespectful or anything like that. Who even is this guy, anyway? Those guys weren't killers. Those ma the masked man thinks he knows who's behind everything. Including Fujita's thing with the, the baseball ban. And that's, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. We have our money. And the masked man is about to reveal himself. Dojima, yes, 
It was, in fact, Daigo Dojima. Look at him. Only been missing for almost five hours. <laughs> five hours of running around on this, and getting everyone involved in this wild goose chase for, for him, and uh, and all he's doing is visiting an old friend. <laughs> Well, to be fair, this old friend actually ended up doing a lot of work. And this is really the only reason Shinada is tied to the story at all. And because they have a disagreement, they're going to fight. And uh, as you can see, Shinada is actually quite ripped underneath his jacket, which begs the question how he could have possibly gotten beaten by one one young dude and, and old, an older dude like all the way back in chapter two like this guy would probably like he, he could have won easily but he just got beat up for no reason now he's and now he's angry and we're going to smack him with a pipe preferably only twice <laughs> this fight has been messed up before also uh Shout us to this theme. It is the best theme in the series. Don't don't at me. It is really good. theme. It is fantastic. All right, take out the pipe. You can upgrade abilities. We don't care about that. Wait for him to taunt. Then uh, take out our pipe again. Wait for him to get up, and then that's it. That's the fight. <laughs> oh, we almost got, we almost got the the perfect sync with the the guitar riff. It's so good. <laughs> and then that t that fight takes uh, Shinada out completely, even though he technically won. No. I go being uh, a little bit more formidable than he used to be in Yakuza 2. Well, I don't know if you'd consider the fight in Yakuza 4 like indicative of like his potential here, but yeah, yeah. he is fighting. An, he is fighting an old friend. He doesn't want to like beat him up to a pulp completely, right? So we are going. We are about to head to Kamurocho. We have all the info we need to stop everything from happening. But unfortunately, Hinata has a moment and uh, just wants to play some baseball. Sort of. He gets a special audience with Sawada, who is supposed to inherit the entire Nagoya family. And was surprisingly the same picture that threw the the home run for Shinada 15 years ago. So it gets all dramatic because they are actually being watched by Omi Alliance uh, members. And Sawada... ...has to resort to violence. He's got a gun. But Shinada kind of knows that he's just being used here. So he's trying to get both of them out of the situation. Anytime. <laughs> lots, lots of uh, animations to play out. They can't, they can't display all the text at once, or else it would just be a, an endless scroll. <laughs> It would just go like, and then, and then that'd be the end of the cutscene. Then we skip this cutscene. Very wrinkly cutscene because it was pre-rendered in 480p or something. And now we get to take out more dudes. Oh, that's the mini boss. Hopefully I just hit that guy, yes. Oh, 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit him again. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> that one dude was uh, extremely late on his uh, on his fear. <laughs> I need to assume he was on the floor before. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. That is not how you do explosive finish. Did we did we briefly mention old styly silly worm strats? Um Yeah, <laughs> so there is a potential strat that you can do, which only happens when you have when you have low health. You can trigger an additional uh, QTE. That makes Sawada help you even more in the fight. But as it turns out, you don't really need it. Yeah, I almost failed slow, that. Sadly. I, I almost failed that uh, QTE because I was <laughs> describing the strat. <laughs> I also don't need that pipe. The worm gets its revenge after all. <laughs> yeah, so eating the worm actually takes out like 70% of your already smell small health bar. And uh, it, would it would basically immediately trigger that cutscene. Which uh, turns out to be a little too slow. You can take them out just fine with the with Shinada's uh, move set. So now they're going to recreate the, uh, the home run. 15 years ago. Can Shinada still do it? Here it comes. It's a curveball. Yep, that is an actual QTE. And you can fail that. And it does insta game over you. And uh <laughs> Yeah. If you're not if you're not paying attention, you can very easily lose that. Fortunately though, um I think it is always square or X on my Xbox controller. I am using an Xbox controller. That's why the prompts look a little weird. Don't worry about it. I'm not disoriented at all from seeing squares and X's and, <laughs> <laughs> and triangles. Uh, so this is the finale. Sorry, did you want to take a final break here? Uh, yeah, if you don't, yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. So, Sorry, anything you have to say before we go, go ahead. Um, no, not really. Uh, this is just, we're, I mean, we're just about to come up to like some of the most action that the game sees. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe it is, uh, it does warrant a little bit of a break before we, before we continue and, you know, just to get ourselves, uh, hyped up and, and ready for the last, uh, hour or so of the, of the run. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, like I've been saying all day, uh, during these longer runs, we like to take breaks just so everyone can get up, stretch, get some water. Uh, so we're going to take our final break of the show, uh, and uh, then we'll be back for the finale of Yakuza 5. See everybody in just a few minutes. Yeah, don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. We are showcasing Yakuza 5. We are at the end. We are literally at the beginning of the finale. I will hand it right back over, and whenever you're ready, we can get right back into it. All right. Uh, let's, let's give it three, two, one, go. And good thing we weren't immediately met with a, a fight spawn. Uh, I stand corrected. There's that guy right there. Uh, he's far enough. We'll we'll limp our way over to the new Serena. Yeah, so, as mentioned earlier, Kamurocho is a really bad spot for a fight spawn, and Kiryu has this one extra little potential problem in a couple of chapters. Hmm. Which problem was that? Raiden. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, Frub has mentioned this a couple of times, but uh, there is. There is a victory. There is a victory road, guys, that we were trying to avoid this entire time, right? Uh, turns out, um, even if you do get into a oh my goodness, why right there? That is literally where the story trigger is. It might bump me off, it might or it might move me right, a little yeah. bit into him. Well, I'm right. just gonna, I'm just gonna walk there. I don't, I'm just gonna walk at full speed. <laughs> I yep. don't care. Sometimes it's just gotta be done. Yep. So, 
<laughs> yeah, so as it turns out, Raiden might pop up regardless of your progress with the quote-unquote progress with the victory road. So, uh, yeah, let's just hope he doesn't show up today. So here's Baba, he's following us around. And I'm just going to let this line play out because that is definitely not what he's saying. <laughs> Only children believe in dragons. <laughs> Bob is about to find a real dragon in front of him. Oh yeah, we have a, a bunch of those. I guess I did keep a bunch left over, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, so this is quite a bit faster with the... Uh, with blackjacks. Very conservative with them, so we can actually carry them pretty much all the w well, not all the way, but maybe through uh, the next boss that he fights. Oh, we get all the way. Actually, to no, I don't think say? we have enough. I don't. I don't think we have enough hits for him, but uh, we can definitely take out at least half of his bar with it. Yeah. At, which at some point after which uh, we'll just have to go back to. Um, the bounding throw. Does the bower fight respawn fight spawns or are they still in the same position? I can't uh, remember. No, it's the same position. <laughs> that answers your question. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look at Baba, he's following us at the exact same speed. <laughs> same the animation as well. <laughs> Here's the place. Go inside now. Because uh, we don't want to keep Baba waiting. We're too nice for that. I don't know how she how she's gonna make sure no one comes in. I suppose they're just gonna like lock the elevator somehow, <laughs> or maybe like the the back door. Yeah. So Baba is actually sort of trying to help us and give us intel on what's really going on. This, unfortunately, is where the finale kind of falls apart. Because <laughs> it's trying to tie all these stories together. Everyone is sort of led into... Um, everyone's sort of led into Kamado Cho and uh, finding out like the, the big plot behind everything. But here's Saijima, who's also with the detective. Uh, this detective is apparently a Joker fan because he is quoting him word for word. <laughs> kind of strange that he would offer uh, this uh, former inmate a cigarette, but whatever. <laughs> Definitely not the last we're seeing of him. The really cool, like, little details about this bit is because uh, Sarah's out here hasn't given his name to Saijima. In the actual text, he is still just Osaka Detective. That's one of those really neat little things about this game. God. Yeah, from Saijima's perspective, oh, yeah. he's literally just that, an Osaka Detective. Alright, let's hope that there is no fight spawn right behind Saijima. Because that yeah. can happen. Yeah. <laughs> And we will experience that at some point, sadly. And look at that. We had just enough money for this taxi. And this is the sub-story that you want to avoid at literally all costs. You see me taking this giant detour? Yeah. We that's how big the, that's how big the sub-story is. Yeah, it is the entire road. <laughs> and it's at least a minimum 1 minute 45 second time loss if not like over 2 minutes. And just to add it, just to add insult to injury, it it also shifts the the camera position so you could potentially walk right back into it. Mm. <laughs> so we're in the sewers again, uh, Saijima with his uh, awesome uh, manhole opening powers uh is back in here from Yakuza 4. And uh, someone that we haven't seen in a very long time, or or th this whole game for that matter. 
we're going to go see the Florist of Psy, who for some reason has completely uh, failed at his job as an informant that tries to know everything about the about what's going on in Kamurocho. He's just kind of been off to the side for the whole story. So he's actually, I think Saijima is actually looking for uh, one of the members. I don't remember if he's actually looking for... Uh... No, I think he's looking for Katsuya, right? Yes. Because he, he just drove off. Uh, in that cutscene that we skipped. So uh, we're going to take a visit to the Colosseum. We all like the Colosseum in, in the Yakuza games. It's not, <laughs> it's not a Yakuza game without at least involve, without involving this in some way. I think the only one that doesn't have a Colosseum section is technically LAD and, well, definitely not 6. <laughs> yeah. I feel like there could have been one in six. Like yeah, in, given in, the, time. in Stardust, like in Stardust yeah. or something. Oh yeah, actually, that would have been such a good idea. Uh, don't mind the two statues in the ring right now. They're they'll be moving later. <laughs> <laughs> one of them might be a bit familiar from about five hours ago. Yeah, supposedly killed off screen. Cough. Well, he's not the only character that will be quote unquote killed off screen. Unfortunately. And uh, also you find out that Aizawa here has a Koi tattoo. Which means he's definitely not an antagonist. Definitely doesn't aspire to be a dragon. Or like a dragon. Aha! So Aizawa here is uh, trying to... Trying, basically trying to get info for his uh, to find like what really happened because as it turns out he was uh, kind of just like left for dead but not actually killed um, and he's trying to look for Morinaga to find answers because Morinaga did say that he was going to have much bigger things planned in Kamurocho we'll find out at the end and how, how it really all went down Ikude. Also, for some reason, we, we're just going to fight just to just to beat some sense into Aizawa, despite his uh, clearly injured status. My head hurts all of a sudden. <laughs> I can hear the ringing. <laughs> yeah, you, bro, that must have caused a shockwave. All right, so Aizawa, we're just gonna you know do the standard combo. And we're actually going to use Tiger Jaws here. That actually pulls him up, so we can do the throw again. And then one more light heavy, and he's done. Oops. <laughs> Trying to pull out a pull out a weapon there, even though he has no weapons. Yeah, so it's really strange how that works. Like, so you want to be pulling, you want to be pulling them up from like their head, right? And you would think that because you were trying to throw them again, like that the game would try to stop you from throwing them uh, too many times. But we just inadvertently created a chain grab, so they just kind of get stuck in that state as long as we have enough heat. Which is why it was important that we got uh, at least one stamina and going into this fight. We'll pick up a couple more uh, in the in the upcoming chapters because uh, Saijima will need to do that more often. But uh, yeah, that's how uh, <laughs> that's how Saijima should ideally uh, deal with his boss fights. But you know, it's <laughs> it doesn't always go smoothly, especially for for Baba and. Uh, and uh, my, er, sorry, uh, Saijima's final boss. I may, ha I may have accidentally revealed who that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Where is it? It's Tenkaichi Street. The taxi list in this game is 
somewhat weird because you've got the hotel district at the top like you usually do in like every game like that has it but then subsequently most of the taxi list not all of it is like reversed from what you would expect usually tenkaichi is at the bottom but in this one is second and like yakuza yeah. 4 for example it's like first or second as well yeah they they shift it around all the time i guess because i guess because the uh <laughs> Oh my goodness, I can't believe he actually... Yeah. I, I, like, I felt somehow that I was going to miss that. Yeah, I thought it would have be aggro once you were in the alleyway, because the fact that you can't get a fight down there, but it just dragged you out. As we said, camera show fight spawns are, uh, very lovely. Uh... Oh, that guy was trying to run and got caught in the uh, caught in the crosswalk. <laughs> Running attack. Hey, we got five thousand yen for our troubles. Not that we really need the money though. Yeah, that was a little bit unfortunate. I I tilted my stick just a little too much. Yeah, five spawns tonight. I've just been pure evil. Yeah, I, it, I'd still consider that my fault, though. Like, it is very sensitive, and I don't think I recalibrated my stick back to the usual the usual sensitivity. It's actually more sensitive than, than it needs to be. Fair. So, Shinada ended up in Kamurocho, just like the rest of our characters here. And, uh... <laughs> He wants to borrow 20, 320 million yen because uh, earlier uh, Katsuya was trying to bribe uh, Akiyama to stop the concert. And uh, of course, he doesn't want that to happen for w whatever reason. Whether that's ulterior motives or just wanting Haruka to quote-unquote live her dream. We'll never know for sure. Better bring a little gift with us, and we're going to buy a lot of liquor. Somehow we are going to carry that between the two of us. At least 10,000 yen's worth. And because the fight spawns have been particularly ugly today, let's, uh, first of all, watch out for those spotters. Ugh, they're here. Jeez. And like, the fun fact, thanks to all sub-stories, we know you can have less than the required amount for the alcohol. It will just take just all of your money, which yep. is an issue because we got a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny because Shinada is supposed to be the poor one. But he, uh, he ends up having to, also having to... Uh, to pay out of his pocket, which I don't think actually happens, like, mechanically, but it's still funny yeah. that it happens at all. And of course, because we went into the popo, every fight spawn respawns. But even if we were to look down Tenkaichi before, we wouldn't know if there were fight spawns. Yeah. No squatters, no other annoying guys, no Raiden. I think he, he, he tried to, he tried to chase the uh, chase one of us like from, from like across the taxi is he kiryu only or can you get him with akiyama as well y you can get him with anyone oh man. yeah it's uh, it's really nasty kiryu, that's awful i think i've had to avoid him once as akiyama which is why i'm like traumatized only when I'm using Hakiyama here. I think you, all, you can also switch to, to Shinada, but Akiyama works uh, a lot better in terms of combat. Shinada's real specialty really is in, uh, in clearing bosses. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot that was the interaction. We're gonna fight these guys. We're just gonna kick them a bunch. Uh, hopefully, Shinada does something useful. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> he caused chaos, that's for sure. 
Oh. <laughs> and there goes that bike. Huh. Did actually, he did uh, quite a bit of work there, actually. That's good. So we're coming up to this company. He is apparently the middleman for both uh, a Dyna Chair and Osaka talent. Like, they're all in cahoots with each other, you know. It turns out, like, they have a friendly rivalry, and they actually used to work together a long time ago, along with a certain guy in this picture that he should be giving any minute now. And if you can see that picture very closely, it's Majima. What on earth is going on, indeed? Whew. Now we're on chapter three. Wait. Oh, okay, good. We. I remembered this time. I need to actually skip that cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've been surprised almost every single time, but not this time. I was prepared. Y'all saw nothing. Don't worry about it. Man's liking to work out. It's fine. He's also on TV. Yep. Put on his suit pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, if you're wondering why Katsuya is saying the Karaka's concert can't happen anymore, great question. Don't know why he gets the say on it. Like, not quite sure how it came down to Katsuya just randomly going, oh, my concert now. Because the Haruka is obviously still in town and she is going to do the concert in Tokyo Dome. It's weird. Yeah, maybe that's the ramification for, uh, maybe that's a plot ramification for her not completing the Princess League as intended. Mm. <laughs> <It's so weird. laughs> yeah, they make it, they, they still make it all about Haruka as if, like, she actually won. So, it's, yeah, it, it gets really weird. Anyway, this is the, uh, the last time you're gonna see Aiza for a, a little while. And yeah. gonna be the last time you see him. Very mysteriously disappears, uh, and the florist just lets him. And that, and in fact, I think is actually the last time you see the florist in like store in like the story. So uh, yeah, in like any RPG game. So uh, yeah, a bit concerning that. So I just chose. It gave us a choice there. Um, so it we could choose between uh, between Kiryu and, and Saijima. We chose Kiryu here because he is actually much closer to the taxi. The taxi that we can go directly to Kamurocho Hills for. Kamurocho Hills for. And this guy, I'm just going to be really safe. Go down one. Hopefully there's no fight spawn here. <laughs> yep. Because there, there could be one final, uh, one final spawn just to, just to really <laughs> hammer the point home. We are very far away from the door. Don't worry about that. And then we're going to choose Saijima. Now, why Saijima? Well, if you remember, he is very good at clearing, uh, clearing fights like this. And we just happen to have two Christmas trees here. So we're going to spam the heck out of it. Oops. Trying to grab the air there. And he went into the full circle, but still somehow hit him. Uh, I think they're all down. Yeah, they're all down. So there's actually an invisible barrier here. We, we don't want to clear it too fast, otherwise we run into an invisible wall and cause an unintentional uh, Xbox stack. I have done it before. It was it was kind of <laughs> it was kind of deflating. Um, no, uh, no Christmas tree here, unfortunately. Also, how did you grab me? Hello. Yep, that was amazing. That was a teleport. Looking like, uh, <laughs> a 
like Street Fighter 6 nonsense with the <laughs> with the uh, sliding characters. Ow. <laughs> this should be the last enemy. And now we can actually uh, run across the, the mall here. This is really like, I think one of the only times you get to see Kamurocha Hills in full, and it's not an exploration, uh, it's not an opportunity to explore it. You just kind of have to go through it normally. Still no Christmas trees here, so we just have to take them out regularly. Missed, unfortunately. Ah! <laughs> These enemies are very grab happy. Might have noticed that with the with this game. Enemies love grabbing you. Also like blocking apparently. They really have been blocking a lot tonight. Yeah. I think uh, during my casual playthrough of these games a long time ago, I especially criticized three and five for doing that a lot, <laughs> just making them block. Oh, it's this guy. <laughs> I was confused for a moment. All right, so this QTE we're going to we're going to intentionally fail, but you don't intentionally fail by doing nothing. You actually have to press an incorrect button, otherwise it continues for some reason. Really, really strange that. But yeah, it's a lot faster to go through uh, to just take the the fail QTE. You can also run away from these guys as far as you can, just so that they don't grab you from a million miles away. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Lost our heat, it's no big deal. We're mostly going to be running anyway. Because as you can see, we do not have to fight a whole lot of these dudes. <laughs> Take a nice long stroll across the mall. I was gonna do some funky weirdness with the camera, and now we have to run away as far away from them as possible. Yep, we got it. Pretty sure we got it. So that was an in another instance of text box stacking. Sorry for not bringing it up earlier. I was kind of concentrated on it. But yeah, you can you skip. What I just did there is skip a whole mini boss, which saves me actually a couple of resources on top of a lot of time. This is Higashide. Oh wait, I should actually be grabbing him. Do the combo. Do the thing. Oh, that is not those directions. <laughs> Darn it, Saijima. The tracking in this game. Not great. <laughs> wow, this <laughs> is slow down from constantly uh, hitting the other dudes. A little bit messy, but that's fine. So he's gonna run away and disappear because it wasn't far enough. We actually take care of these guys. Very fortunate that both of them are are, are uh, feared here. And now we have this Fujikawa fellow. Very annoying normally, but hopefully. Ow. Ow. <laughs> we have ex uh, we have our climax heat here. So hopefully this targets him. I, I think he's in the shot. Is that him? I, I don't think I hit him. Uh, I didn't hit no. him. I didn't hit him. That's fine. I've been missing at least one of Higashide or Fujikawa quite lately with this as well. It's so frustrating. Yeah. That's fine. Apparently, Higashide is also a, a leader, so that counts for... Uh, that also counts for uh, like fearing him. Uh, I think we can afford to use this.
So that's the end of the set piece. And now... It is the four of these men. Katsuya, Watase, Kiryu, and Saijima, of course. Everyone converges onto this uh, Kamurocho Hills Tower. Not to be confused with the Millennium Tower that has been traditionally the finale. Uh, uh, the finale set piece. So the idea here is that we're trying to we're trying to find who is most worthy of finding out the the true mastermind of the uh, of everything going on. So everyone's gonna have a big old battle royale on the roof, and the winner's gonna fight the master or find out who the mastermind is. Which is the <laughs> if that sounds like the dumbest idea you've ever heard, it is. <laughs> yep. Uh oh. Angry Wasi on our hands. Okay, we got it. <laughs> what Ryu is doing is the bounding throw infinite, and again, as I said earlier, the timing on this is exceedingly precise, and it actually differs not only just her boss, but also if they're on their front or on their back. Why does they are doing an extra, <laughs> extra death animation there? <laughs> yep, because uh, getting getting infinited, infinited, uh, hurts quite a bit. <laughs> okay, great game. <laughs> Excellent game. All right, Katsia is a little bit more involved, so we of course we want to do the. Uh, Oh, you know what? Oh wait, no. Okay. But one of the hardest technical fights. Yeah. That we do when we're on. Oh, he's already in. He's already in heat. That's uh. Oh, that's fine. That's good well, we'll find. <laughs> we'll be fine. Have to wait for him to attack or something. It's a little bit slow because I, I had to use a, an extra. Oh, it looked like uh, it looked like I could actually uh, throw him again for a bit, but he escaped very early. Yeah, if I had an extra stamina, it would have made this fight a little bit quicker, but that's fine. Yeah, the tiger jaws really helps out in, in like facilitating a a loop. Now, <laughs> I did I did allude to uh, you know potentially choosing the wrong uh, the wrong character here, but it actually would have been bad because I don't have a stamina to facilitate that loop. Yeah, the reason so I didn't uh, finish off Wata say with the heat action is because we actually need to do this fight as well. Unfortunately, it's a little bit easier. So you're going to be wondering than, uh, why we use Kiryu. It's not just the power of the bounding for infinite. Uh, if you pick Saijima, Kiryu has the tiger drop. Yeah. <laughs> Which, even on even on easy, Kiryu likes to use the tiger drop. But if you're on a much harder difficulty... Ugh. Yeah. It's not that bad. You can basically do what I did to Katsuya, and because his health bar is shorter, like the combo is a lot. Uh, er, the combo is also a lot shorter. You just need a stamina to do it. Um, you would need an extra upgrade for the for the heat in order to facilitate the combo. But yeah, other than that, it's like not too bad. It's like not that bad for to pick uh, Saijima, but in that case, it, it should have been Kiryu anyway. All of them are down for the count, and uh, Kurosawa here. Cool. Well, that yep, that's his real name. And as it turns out, he was the seventh Omi Alliance chairman all along, betraying everyone here, including his captain and uh, lieutenant. I guess. I guess that's Kurosawa's, or not Kurosawa, Katsuya's uh, position. 
cool. I'll still bite a save for saying he's going to jump this building. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see it. <laughs> I believe him as and well. And then here's Daigo coming to save the day. Daigo doing something useful? Oh my god. Oh, you've been suspecting me, rival Yakuza family clan mate. <laughs> It was him the whole time. And he has this extremely good opportunity to end everything once and for all. But as you can see, we're still playing the game. Nothing nothing changed. We're still we're still playing the game. It's not over yet. Basically <laughs> basically uh they have a gunfight. Uh, Daigo, instead of killing him, just shoots the gun out of Kurosawa's hand, and then he gets shot by Kanai, who was in secret working with Kurosawa over Katsuya instead. So, yeah, we still have a game to play through. That's why we didn't call for time or anything, because it's still going. Yeah, I'd say we got to Scooby-Doo levels of plot, but that would be insulting to Scooby-Doo. Mm, probably. <laughs> But this is the shortest chapter in the game, technically. It definitely is gameplay-wise. Yeah. It, it, if you can't tell, it's it's a Haruka chapter. That's that that's it. That's the that's the chapter. And thankfully, we're not walking for nearly as much as uh, as her actual part. But we do uh, need a special yeah. guest to turn up. Mm hmm Unfortunately, it's not Dave. <laughs> Could you imagine if Dave just suddenly can't, stormed the studio, the dance studio, and not only didn't maul everyone to death, but just joined them for the dance? Yes. Could you imagine yes. the numbers on that concert? Oh, man. <laughs> so there's Baba. For some reason. Baba is here. Woohoo. <laughs> And, uh, Everyone this... agrees to her meeting Baba out on a public park. And uh, this is the stupid thing. Baba wants a private conversation with Haruka, so Baba decides to go to the other side of town. Yeah. You could have just gone in the corridor or here. Anywhere. Literally <laughs> anywhere except, you know, the other side of the map. Yeah, I am not. One, <laughs> one final round of Haruka move tech, which Ryu hasn't had to do today. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's also it's also because I, I, as mentioned before, I have a, I did not calibrate my stick correctly to to make this, like it, it's more sensitive than it should be, because yeah. uh, I was working with a different controller at the time that needed it. But um, yeah, it's there's really not much to this chapter. It is just come here, go back and then have a bit of a conversation with other characters. Yeah, you'd wonder whether taxiing in this bit would be faster. It's actually not. Yeah. Really wish we had that uh, taxi anywhere or just, you know, just like just like t have like a like a debug bow just take Haruka and plop her right in front of Baba, you know, that kind of deal, but no. Nothing nothing fancy like that. Nothing to completely break the game. And you'll see in a second that Haruka actually has a substory in Kamarucho. The only characters that you can actually finish their substories for uh, early on in the game uh, is Shinada. You can technically with Saijima if you double back to uh, Sadachi Dojo, because Sadachi Dojo has two. In all substories, we do one the first time around we're in Kamarucho, and then the second time when we get back this time, which obviously Ryu avoided earlier. <laughs> so, weirdly enough, uh, Shinada is the only one you can really do just early. Yeah, and you might have wondered why Baba was like having like a having a moment there saying, what am I doing? Um, yeah, he's he was actually sent there to kill Haruka, but he's not going through with it because he's extremely conflicted. Supposed to be a hitman for, for uh, Kurosawa, but really not able to to go through with any of his uh, with any of his kills you know which kind of you know makes makes this story a little a little tragic 
This is the last time we ever see Haruka, at least for gameplay. That is the last we see of her. And back in back in Kiryu's part that or Kiryu uh, part three, that was actually the last time we would have any fight spawns because of the, the walking bit with Haruka. Daigo's hospitalized, Katsuya's also hospitalized. Watase, I think, was not as severely injured, so he's just like walking around there. Now Akiyama's joining because <laughs> just because. And uh, you notice Kiryu there, his eyes are actually open. <laughs> so he is listening to this entire conversation, but uh, he actually wasn't. Uh, he was actually was sleeping uh, before the cutscene came in. So Akiyama, the usual uh, plot narrator that he is, uh, summarizes the entire thing. And yes, that picture does indeed show Majima. And Saijima rec does recall uh, Majima mentioning Kark a couple of times. A friend. Yes, a friend. <laughs> you know, taking a quick visit to, uh, to Daigo's room and actually having a very interesting conversation with Watase. <laughs> Explaining more of the plan or, you know, the Kurosawa's motivations, sort of. Everyone wants to cancel the concert for some reason. And Kiryu, having heard the entire conversation, says no. It, the show must go on. Uh, noting here that uh, Kiryu is still uh, pretty heavily injured. He got shot in the gut after all. That will actually come up a little bit later. Well, not not like it, not gameplay wise, but plot wise. Now we have uh, Saijima trying to console Kiryu. Cool. You know, just having this heartwarming conversation that mirrors the situation that happened in Yakuza 4. Reminding him of the... Reminding Kiryu of the, the struggles he's had and, you know, back in prison. How Saijima was only, uh, could only move on because he still had family to go back to. And the same was for Kiryu when back, all the way back in Yakuza 1 where um, when everyone was still, uh, well, alive. <laughs> He's been going through a lot, and he doesn't want to, like, lose this family or uh, this, uh, the new family he has with the, the orphanage in Haruka, so it's, you know. Just the exact motivation he needed to, you know, keep going. He knows this is the right thing to do. Now, Date's passed out on the, uh, on the counter there. Hang on. Who's this guy? And... <laughs> the, the blank... The, t the thousand yard stare from, from Akiyama. It, he, like, <laughs> they had to actually think who, who Shinada really was. <laughs> It's just so good. Like, for as convoluted as the plot gets, the character interactions are still just purely great. Yeah. Shinada trying to... Um... Trying to, uh... Get the, you know, trying to, like, plan out, like, how we're going to save the concert and whatnot. Which now leads into... The finale. The actual finale. The 20 first chapter? Question mark? This game is long. <laughs> so now we have, a, you know, preparations to make, sort of. Not really. We're free to explore until tomorrow evening. We are not going to explore. We are going to go straight into the evening. And we just talked to Akiyama here. We are good and ready. Uh, <laughs> nice camera angle there, Kiryu. Now the concert's about to start. Haruka's a little worried. Do. Ho. Yeah. 
Jo uh -huh. Still thinking about, uh, you know, whether she should really go on with the, with this idol thing. So the Millennium Tower has been seized. And who's the hostage? Goro Majima. So he wasn't, he wasn't dead after all. He is in fact alive. And now everyone's trying to save him. That was a neat little... Uh, Scene before it's, everything starts. So they're gonna split up and uh, head to the sewers where they have a shortcut to Japan Dome, apparently. And while uh, Kiryu and Akiyama stay behind and fight these guys. We're actually going to pick Akiyama for this bit because he is a little bit better at moving around. And also because these guys have such little HP, it doesn't really matter who we use here. I'm also going to be uh, moving the camera a little bit to get the guys spawning. We go. And we're it's it's Kanai again, so you know the drill by now. <laughs> I'm gonna use the stamina and X or stamina and spark. That's a uh, oh, whoops. Uh, I, I lost <laughs> I lost track of my uh, my attack pattern a little bit. And that's it. And we're gonna take a smoke because uh, it's done. <laughs> and I, being uh, the coward that he is, is running away from the situation. All right, so this set piece in the sewers is the final instance of uh, Xbox stacking, and hopefully we actually get it this time. Ooh, boy, I'm not looking forward to having to do it, but if I remember correctly, you need three people alive and then run into the invisible barrier. Oops. Yeah, I believe it's full death. Which is a little unpredictable, because remember when we were saying our NPC allies can kind of help sometimes? AI Shinada in this bit is actually competent. Sometimes. <laughs> Oops. Stop in the middle of my combo. Oops. Uh, how many is that? That's four people, three. I think. Yeah, you got four left, so three are dead. So I think it's text watch that time. Uh, all right. Shinada is starting to destroy people. Yeah, I think he'll take care of them. Uh oh wait, there's one there's one guy that followed me. So sh Shinada. <laughs> you can okay, there we go. <laughs> Alright. So this text box stack was pretty important. Um if we did not do this, we would have to we would have to sit through a one minute, like forty second conversation yeah. that you can't interact with at all. And even though we can technically do stuff, we do no damage to the enemies. So yeah, very important that we that we get that text box stack. Uh, also very important, uh, do not fail this QTE. Uh, we just faced with that guy. <laughs> if we fail this QTE, it is instant game over because we need Shinada.
I don't know how the physical club I don't know how the physical club that attack works, but uh, we'll take it. Uh, that guy did not want to get beard for some reason. All right, we can now progress. I think. Yeah. <laughs> The, the marker kind of disappeared for a little bit. All right, so now they're going to split up further. Saejima will go directly to the Millennium Tower and confront Majima. Yep, this is the beginning of the final boss gauntlet. Saijima has to fight Majima again. Just like in Yakuza 4. Now he'll... He has a bit of a different move set. We'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> Instantly take off his, his jacket. For the serious fight. Any minute now. <laughs> he really likes the, the slow panning of the of the shot here. So Majima's claim here is that he didn't fight uh, he didn't fight uh, Saijima two years ago in the batting center in that flashback because Saijima was apparently too weak. Even though just, you know, nine months earlier, he kind of beat, <laughs> he kind of beat Majima's ass in Yakuza 4. So I don't know. I don't know what he's talking on about. And we're going to do it again because, uh, because why not? All right, so Majima fights. Very inconsistent, you could probably imagine, because it's Majima. Okay. That should be enough damage. Fail this QTE. Do this one. Do the damage. Do the exact same thing that we did to him in the previous game. I think he'd blown the first time, but he really didn't. Yeah. Alright, you want to do your thing? Yep, that's the thing. We have to deal with Shadow Clones. Um, there's unfortunately no real way to take care of them consistently. You just kind of have to hope that you're hitting them. Ooh, one of them team. is <laughs> one of them is the real Majima. It's usually the one that doesn't go anywhere near you, unfortunately. That's right. Oh. Uh, <laughs> third. Uh, hello? Alright. He's at 1 HP, so we can just fail. Get up immediately and try to attack him again, please. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Nice tracking, <laughs> Definitely intended for that instant turnaround. And now, all of a sudden, we have to do this fight. Hinata is trying to beat some sense into, into Baba here. And before we forget, I'm gonna do this combo on him. Uh, wait, no, we were supposed to fail it. Or, no. Oh, yep, there's a T pose, Baba. <laughs> nice. T pose, Baba is hilarious, it's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. 
That was a Metza strap from Legend, right? Uh, or I it's think just Metza so. in general. Well, maybe. So the fight's basically over. I'm gonna take out the pipe just for an extra, extra bit of luck. Fail this QTE. It's okay. Shinada can take the beating. And this one too. So as soon as we get up, we can hopefully just smack him. There we go. <laughs> oh my God. And that's how you defeat Baba. So Baba essentially fights everyone except Akiyama? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone gets a almost everyone gets a piece of uh, a piece of Baba. <laughs> now for this one we pick Kiryu because uh, he is a little bit better at uh, handling these mobs which have more HP. Oh, that's a full combo. You want to do this hammer hook. Hello? <laughs> yeah, sometimes the uh <laughs> sometimes the tracking can go a little wonky and make you do a turnaround attack. Uh sure. Yeah, we'll we'll take that. <laughs> Kind of hit, uh, kind of hit them at the same time. Wonder what's going on in the Millennium Tower. Oh, there's Daigo with a gun. Daigo with a gun, the most powerful character in the entire series, uh, except in that little bit with Kamenocha Hills, but we can forgive him this time. He actually did something <laughs> good. Guys have been fighting for basically forever. They're understandably a little bit winded. And of course, it's Kanai for one last time. Someone's phone is ringing. Any time now. <laughs> Thanks, Kiryu. Now, Kiryu has to go to the Tojo clan headquarters. While well, Akiyama has his score to settle with Kanai, even though it's been completely one-sided so far with Blackjacks. <laughs> but you can imagine how this fight will go. This is the fourth time. <laughs> Still nothing on Kuze, though. You fight that guy five times. Oh, that's, that's the map. That's... <laughs> And a good gather for how many enemies there are. Yep. Oops. All right. <laughs> I guess we're clearing the crowd a little bit too, so that we uh, <laughs> don't accidentally heat action him. Although, considering there are so many enemies around, it might it might actually happen. I don't, I don't think I needed to do all that, but it's it's nice to have some extra extra measures. Now we just <laughs> now we just do the rest of these QTEs. Yeah, I think that kick actually itself does like half a bar, so I think I did extra damage. But, you know, never hurts to be uh, safe. Now, if you don't complete this, if you don't do this QT, it becomes a pretty, pretty dark animation. So, and also we get to finish the fight because Kanai is down during the the counter attack. And now, the finale, finale, finale. There's three <laughs> finales in this. Everybody this the needs their own last boss, after all. Yep. Unless you're Haruka. 
Well, uh, her final boss is technically not <laughs> part of the main story. True. In fact, I don't even think you need to do it for all sub-stories. It doesn't count. Nope. No, it doesn't. Bit of a yeah. shame, honestly. But it yeah. would actually have been nasty because we would have had to have armed up like levels on Haruka. Yeah. So, as you can see, it is quite bloody in here. And you'll never guess who is at the front of it all. So, uh, Kurosawa, utterly defeated, will finally spill the beans. Makes a comment on how he had to uh, do some unsavory things in his time as Yakuza. There he is. Different suit and all. So, yep. Aizawa is our final boss. Why? Not even Aizawa knows. Alright, so here we are. Masato Aizawa. This QT actually doesn't really do much. It, no damage to you or Kiryu, or sorry, to you or Aizawa. He just kind of, they just kind of hit each other. And it's the exact same animation. So, we have an infinite. You can imagine we're going to be using it on him. And fortunately for us, it is actually easier to do the combo on Aizawa because... Uh, because his hitbox, or hurtbox, is a lot larger than the other characters that he's had to fight. They're basically doing this until we have heat, and then use the heat action because it does so much damage. And then, you know, wail on him some more. Whew. Punch him a bunch, headbutt him some more. I'm mean, gonna actually do some of. Uh... Right over combos here. Finish this. And use the extreme heat to do enough damage to Aiza. Now, let him get up. And grab him so that he triggers a QT immediately. What a wondrous thing this game is. So all of those QTEs that normally happen during various phases of the fight are all going to happen at once. Because his health is low enough for that. And also as it turns out, it is actually faster to help him up. So we're going to do that as much as possible. <laughs> Because the Kiryu has the same skill as the uh, as Saijima to to pull them back up. So we're gonna go through about four more minutes of of this because uh, yep, there's quite a bit to go through. Onk. back and forth quite a bit here. And then Masato Aizawa here is going to kick him off and then catch up somehow. But, you know, we're better than that, so we're just going to slam him to the ground. Help him up as usual. Looks, looked a little bit jank there, but it's all right. And, uh, yeah, let's just get hit by this, because it's faster that way. It's alright, he can take a beating, even though his wound is very clearly still fresh. Shouts to Kiwami. <laughs> also, shoutouts to these mashing cuts, uh, these mashing prompts. They're actually not as fast as you'd think they need to be. Alright, let me try to grab his foot here, because that can also help. <laughs> I 
Ouch. That worsens the wound. More QTEs. Alright, one thing I haven't mentioned about this boss yet is he's actually supposed to heal some of his health. And it looked like we just defeated him, but then his health bar just comes back. <laughs> Funny that. And we can just negate it with the... Uh, we can just negate it with the uh, down and throw. And we can help him up as usual. Because, uh, yep, <laughs> we like to toy with our food here. So time hopefully comes at the... Hopefully we'll call time uh, with the final input of the game, which is this final QTE here, but yes. Um, all right. Could be in three, two, one, time. Oh. GG. <laughs> GG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, glad that went well. Ooh. That is not easy to keep up. The the timing. Yeah, really glad that all, that all went as planned. Oh. Oh. Huge, <laughs> huge weight off my shoulders there. Uh. Yep, so uh, that's <laughs> that's the end of Yakuza 5. The rest is just the cutscene montage. <sighs> uh, 604.32. Woo! That's the same as my PB. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Very like on point. Spot on? <laughs> Just underestimate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other than the Shinada thing with the monitor, that actually went pretty well. So, yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I guess I really have nothing left to say. Um, shoutouts. <laughs> shoutouts to uh, the fellow two runners here, Tapioca and Fru. They they came before I did. And uh, had the majority of the the base, like the majority of this route planned out. I just optimized it a little bit. Um, shouts to Wisdom Boy for finding a few more optimizations that even I couldn't th think of. Um, feedback guy who made the uh, the load remover and continued iterating iterating on it. Uh, despite the massive massive issues that came initially. Um, Metza for also incorporating some of his strats as well, and also being a, a legend master, legend difficulty master, and um, the whole community in general. Like it's been a been a wonderful place to, uh, to you know to contribute to to do these runs with, um, and um, yeah, that's. <laughs> Oh, uh, one more, one, one more shout out. Uh, uh, this was personally requested of me. Um, this won't, this definitely won't be the last. Hopefully, won't be the last you see of us. We'll, we'll be continuing running. And uh, I hear that uh, a certain someone in the community is doing a full Yakuza Zero 100% play uh, speed run in, uh, in another marathon, a uh, really, really long a thon. Uh, so in about two months' time, you will see that kind of run. So uh, yeah, we've been doing <laughs> a bunch of these runs. It's really nice to just be able to showcase uh, how, like, just how far these games have come, and uh, and just how, <laughs> just like the, the the love we have for this series. And uh, I, I feel like I've been on for a little too long. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's it for me. Thanks, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this was this was Ryu Hosen, and uh, yeah, thanks for having us. 
and thank you so much, all three of you, uh, for showcasing the game and Rebel earlier. Uh, an amazing uh, showcase of some of the Yakuza games. Uh, which, yeah, like, the Yakuza games are amazing, so it's awesome to be able to have, you know, the community uh, come on and show games they're passionate about. So thank you so much. Um, really appreciate y'all giving the showcase. Uh, with that said, uh, we don't have any more show left for you tonight. Uh, we will be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll have a uh, bargain bin followed by Express Lane. So uh, we'll see you all there, and uh, we're going to take a quick break while we look for somebody to raid. If you don't mind just sticking around so we can uh, share somebody else on in some speedruns afterwards, that would be awesome. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. Thanks. Have a good night. <laughs>